the Howard Stern Studios in New York, it's the FMEs. Oh, I love the FMEs. What a celebration. Join us as we revisit many of the highlights and lowlights from the past 25 years of the Howard Stern Show. What any chance you have accidentally uh, fart in the catcher's face? Who the hell are you? Hey, this is an honor. First of all, I'd like to thank God. Could break the world's record. Wrong way to come on, Kip. We're all rooting for you. Featuring all the embarrassing moments. Who's this? It's Barbara. Barbara who? Barbara Booth. <laughs> Asinine arguments. Your makeover really worked. You got a face the size of a balloon. I borrowed a thousand dollars. Yeah. And I gave it back to you in jokes. And you don't remember that? In jokes. Oh, <laughs> joke. <laughs> we all know that. I was wrong. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. And unforgettable musical performances. I said, Robin, <laughs> the FME show is the place where your lovely bongos are the stars. Find out which celebrity or staffer will take home a one-of-a-kind, completely worthless statuette. Hey, you know, you, you could tell Malika she could take her FME and use it on Robin's uh, certain area that Robin likes to have. Uh, wow. See what I'm saying? So the FME can be used for that kind of thing. Oh, you can use it for whatever you want. It's the FME Awards with Howard Stern, Robin Quivers, Gary Delabate, and Fred Norris. Plus, special appearances by John Bon Jovi, Tiny Tim, Conan O'Brien, Mr. T, Alanis Morissette, and more. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here are your co-hosts for the FMEs. Howard Stern and Robin Quivers. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hi, Candy. Candy Bergen. Candy Bergen? How come I can't hear you, Robin? I'm backstage. Oh. I'm talking to you in your ear. <laughs> oh, I see. You're my earpiece. I'm sorry for that, ladies and gentlemen. I appear to be as confused as those two people on Topper. It's uh, because Robin was talking in my head. Hey, Robin, let's hope no one tosses grapes and coconuts in your cleavage again this year. By the way, I want to just uh, draw your attention that uh, Robin is wearing two lovely AIDS ribbons on each hooter, <laughs> which is beautiful. You know, Robin, it's so good to look out on our audience. And, uh, you know, I want to welcome our new market, Miami, of course, who has no idea what went on for the past year here on the radio. And, uh, you know, this is an excellent opportunity for them to hear what went on for the hey, past year. That's right, Robin. Hello. Hello, people of the world. All you people in the very fortunate 18 markets who are hearing my words, welcome to the 34th annual and second to last oh, FME Award. I forgot. You're retiring. I am retiring at the end of my... How many months uh, do I have left on my contract, Jackie Jokeman? 13. Jackie's sitting in the audience yelling out 13. <laughs> you can hear him laughing. <laughs> Very much like a Billy Crystal, you address the people in the audience. Yeah, I address that. Yeah, exactly, Rob. I, I, I borrow that. I like to address various people in the I audience. See. What a year. What a year it's been. The parade of babes and morons has been extra special this year. And what with the book business, movie business, and television business now enveloping my massive radio career, further establishing me as king of all media, and further eroding the country. Robin, so far the monologue has been totally about me. I was just wondering, you know, now that you say that, are you going to have to develop your own award shows for television and movies? Yes. <laughs> and books? Sure. Because none of the real organizations will honor you either? No, I have been yet, I've conquered all these things, but no organization will honor me. <laughs> it's called the All Media Awards. The only people eligible are people who have conquered film, yes. television, books, and radio there simultaneously. You and you're the only person? Yes, yeah, so I win all the awards. <laughs> Isn't it comforting that even as O.J.'s murder trial goes on and we have the Haiti troubles and baseball strikes or the death of Jessica Tandy, notice all of these things can't stand in the way of our fabulous FME Awards show. We have songs, we have awards, beautiful girls, suspense, humor, and best of all, Robin's beautiful chests. Let the fun begin. Well, this is you fit. And this is a great year for our producer of the FMEs, Gary Delabati. Well, he's been called an imbecile 4,000 times, a moron 685 times, and a dope 2,670 times. 
And he's having a baby. And more importantly, he's finally learned to walk upright. Isn't that right, Papa Fooey? That's right, Wolf. Nip, there's Papa Fooey out in the audience. Hey, wait a second. Let's go crazy. Let's, um... Hey, Gary, you dopey moron. All right, let's see. Moron 686 times and dope 2,671 times, Robin. Hey, I got to say, I've been working so hard this year in radio, movies, television, books. I'm so overworked. I feel like one of Robin's vibrators after a long romantic weekend with the candles and bubble bath. Robin, our old friend out there, Adam West. Oh, Batman. Hey, Batman, Adam West. Is he nominated? Oh, wait, I'm sorry. He's working as an usher this year. Look at that. Yes, show these people to their seats. Anyway, I don't want to uh, get in the way of the big production number. Brace yourselves. Brace yourselves like Gary's parents should have braced his oversized choppers. And let us begin. <laughs> Mr. Fooly Foo Foo Foodio. <laughs> If you bring me all of the tapes and carts, I'll begin. And Robin, you can put those delicious clumps out into the air for the song. You'll start off the song, I hope. I think I do, yes. And are your delicious clumps out? <laughs> There's out as they're ever going to be. Well, they're beautiful. They really are. And uh, God bless you and your clumps. And here we go. Hold it. Uh, what? 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 You start. You start. Busy with I know. Um, I don't know what. I have no idea. <laughs> da, what da, 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 da. Oh. Word, you're an absolute. I know that part. All right, part. All right. Just this is it. Who knows? Right after that. All right. Howard, you're an absolute pest. You make fun of my enormous chest. I'm getting ticked. So let's give it a rest. I said, Robin, <laughs> the FME show is the place where your lovely bongos are the stars and the innuendos. Here's entertainment. So what if I have the green teeth that look as stained as an old toilet seat and, and do my job like I'm a half asleep? When All right, look, 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 look. It's because I'm Baba Booey. All right, look. Okay. We might have wanted to. <laughs> this we needed to rehearse. Yeah, we might need to rehearse this song. Oh, All right, you want to uh, start again? Did I you? don't know, but Here I know the bridge. So what if I have big green teeth that look as stained as an old toilet seat? I do my job. Like you never heard that's entertainment? Things get all screwy. It's because I'm Baba Booey. Okay. All right, let me start this again. Everybody pretend like you didn't hear what just went on. <laughs> that was a mess. Yeah. Save it. <laughs> Howard, you're an absolute pest. You make fun of my enormous chest. I'm getting sick, so let's give it a rest. Just for the FM. Yes, Robin, the FME show is the place where... You know, Papa Bowie, now I'm screwed up because of you. What? I didn't do anything. I did it right the first time, and then you messed up, and now I have to go through it again. You pointed. No, I was, so, I was trying to get friends. Stop attention. pointing. What, are you, what is your problem over there? Why are you no getting... problem. He's a hand signal. <laughs> nothing right, to do with you. Well, don't do anything. <laughs> I nailed I my verse. Today. Hi, Rob, don't blame that on me. Uh, I got through my first verse, and then you messed me up. Uh, it's no I thought you can't do it twice. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Howard, you're an absolute pest. You're making fun of my enormous chest. I'm getting ticked. So let's give it a rest. Just for the FME. Robin, the FME show is the place where your lovely bongos are the stars and the innuendos are the entertainment. So what if I have big green teeth that look as stained as an oil toilet seat and do my job like I'm half asleep? <laughs> When things get all screwy, it's cause I'm Baba Booey. I'm John. I'm a blithering fool. I play guitar. And I look really cool. But when I talk, I sputter, dribble, and drool. I stammer and I stutter. And my stuttering is Howard's Entertainment. Uh-oh. I'm Jackie. And I used to do drugs. But now I'm straight. 
All right, I hate this. All right, come on. I, I, I just don't even like it. I don't like it. You missed the line. First of all, Jackie, you're singing it. No one understands the words because you're doing an impression of you, which you do terribly. It's Did you perfect. understand what he was saying? No. I didn't. No, I think he really... No. Now, if I had sung it regularly, you would have screamed me for not doing it. You're awful. Voice. I'm not awful. I'm great. And then Baba Booey can't even sing the song. I don't know the song. Well, why don't you say that before we start? I did. No, you didn't. I did. I... You could have had Fred teach you yesterday, but you're too busy with your stupid computer games. That's right. I have no time for you. Bulls, uh, I'm thinking about an interactive CD. I can do whatever I want, whenever I want. Yeah? You can't do nothing yeah, about well, it. Learn your lines when you're going to have a song. We don't ask you to uh, perform much on this show. Once in a while, prepare. If you don't know a song, learn it. You ruined it. And Jackie over there is a moron. I disagree. You disagree that what? That you're a moron or Jackie's a moron? Both. But mostly right. me. Yeah. Mostly me. <laughs> <laughs> You're inter interactive. Try interacting with a melody. <laughs> One more time. One more time. No, oh, I'm not doing I'm, it. I'm not doing it another time. No, you're not doing it another time. Oh. Fred could do your part. I really would like to know how the song ended. Yeah. Really? And Fred, you should have warned Howard that he had a, a word. A line. And John has a misspelling word. also. That's why he got... He, yeah, got, that's he stumbled. It says MT. You know. MT stuttering. All right, look, I'm going to play it again, but Fred, you do Gary's part. Okay. Unless you want to do it, Gary. All right, no, Gary, I, I, you I do, it. do it. You do it. I can't. All right, you're going to do it. Okay. <laughs> he can do because it. you wouldn't learn your stupid part. You know what it is. So what if I have big green tea? That look, it's that the same thing. thing. That's and and Jackie, See? just sing it. All like right, Jackie. I'll sing it straight. I would love to sing it straight. Good. Everybody sucks. <laughs> I like to say I'm getting better and better. Yeah, you got real strong on the last one. <laughs> Tell us you have Robin's belting out a tune. <laughs> you need three run-throughs. Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. All right, everyone ready? Do it right this time. For God's sakes, you're embarrassing me. Nope. Before you start, Howard, you... Oh, no. <laughs> Howard, you're an absolute pet. You make fun of my enormous chest. I'm getting ticked. <laughs> so let's give it a rest. Just for the FME. Robin, <laughs> the FME show is the place where your lovely bongos are the stars and the innuendos. Are the entertainment full? So what uh, if I have big green teeth that look as stained as an old toilet seat and do my job like I'm half asleep? When things get all screwy, it's cause I'm Baba Booey. I'm John. I'm a blithering fool. I play guitar. Yep, sir. And I look really cool, but when I talk... I sputter, dribble, and drool. I stammer and I stutter, and my stuttering is Howard's entertainment. Journey on khaki, and I used to do drugs, but now I'm straight, and I need endless plugs, so I write jokes about Robin's big jugs. Some contributions. Gary, Boff really likes me, but hey, what the heck? He berates me and gives no respect. My wife loves spending every cent of my check. The woman married to me is Mrs. Baba Booey. Robin, when will that chest be exposed? The same day that you cut off your nose. What about Fred's job? Howard, nobody, nobody knows. knows. Fred watches us work hard while he just sits and eats his bread. <laughs> we got through it. I triggered. Even Jackie in his normal voice, I couldn't understand the words. I know. And you did blow your line the second time. Who? You did. Where? Jackie's verse. Yeah, you have a line that's so line contribution now. is Where? your line. I took it. Oh, that's my line? Yeah. yeah. That's why it says Howard before. <laughs> no, I wasn't looking for that. I thought every, I thought everyone was supposed to get their own verse. We got it. We got Well, you had that one line. I don't want to be in Jackie's verse. Fred gets fancy. I don't want anything like that. And it's then Fred. I blew mine on the last one. I didn't know I came back again. Hey, yeah, you think Fred would underline for people and let them know what's going on? <laughs> I write them. I don't screw ball. Them. All right, very good. <laughs> Stupidest song I ever heard. <laughs> This is where we honor some of the great moments in radio for the past year. Oddly enough, all the great moments in radio happen right here on this show. Of course. Uh, this was the best celebrity ID. All right. Every time we have a guest come in after the show, we ask them to go backstage and cut a ID, something that you'll hear on tape. And uh, most people are good about it. They go back there and they cut these outrageous things. In fact, sometimes I can't even believe what people say on these IDs. Here's our first nominee. Our first nominee is Gilbert Gottfried for Best Celebrity ID. Hello, this is...
This is Rabbi Gilbert Gottfried, and I want to do a Jewish song for you. <laughs> now that I've chased away all of the Midwest and most of the South with my Jewish singing, you are listening to the Howard Stern Show. The rest of you are probably burning crosses on someone's lawn right now. The uh, next nominee is Jason Alexander, Jason Alexander producer. Of course, he played, uh, what's the guy in Seinfeld? Uh, George. George. This is Jason Alexander. All right, just stop bugging me. You, you people know good and well Jerry Seinfeld isn't going to speak to me again the rest of his miserable, incredibly wealthy life. So stop f around asking me about it. It pisses me off. And Jerry, if you're listening, I never got one joke you told in nine goddamn years. So instead of getting all worked up now, let's just listen instead to my new best buddy, a man who could really do something for my career if he just would. Damn it. Howard Stern. Our next nominee is Maury Povich. Hey, I'm Maury Povich, and when I'm not listening to Howard Stern, I'm wearing a big triangle straw hat and eating muji pork with my wife, Connie. Ciao. Norm MacDonald, our next nominee. Hey, this is Norm MacDonald. You know, there's nothing I enjoy more than saying the word prick. I like it. Prick. You know? I refer to people I know as dirty pricks. You know? For instance, Don Oldmeyer is a dirty prick. And uh, anyway, here is a man who has a small prick, but he acts like a total prick. Yeah, Howard. Prick. Prick. Stern. Wow. Joan Rivers is our next nominee who had this to say. Hello, I'm Joan Rivers and I'm horny. Please, please call me at 1-800-44-STERN. I'll meet you anywhere and I'll bring a vat of lube, okay? Rich, old, circumcised Jews only, please. Or is that incredibly redundant? Anyhow, now from the top of the Howard Stern building on the Stolen Vehicle Police Recovery Network, it's a rich, old, circumcised man himself, Howard Stern. Our next nominee is Gene Simmons, the, the real Gene Simmons. Hi, this is Gene Simmons of KISS, the real Gene Simmons, not that load of crap Craig Gass. Not only am I a member of the world's greatest rock band that has given inspiration to such bands as Bon Jovi, the Beatles, and Led Zeppelin, but KISS also invented Scrabble, the Hubble Telescope, and built most of the Great Wall of China. You're listening to a man who is a clone of me, Howard Stern. Our next, this is a, a big category, Best Celebrity ID. Our next nominee, Gary Coleman. Hey, this is Gary Coleman. People are always like, what are you talking about, Willis? Well, you know what? I don't know what Willis was talking about. I don't care what Willis was talking about. And I don't give two smelly pig farts about what the fuck Willis was talking about, okay? Now, leave me alone. That's what I'm talking about, B.I.H. Now, back to a man who does know what he's talking about. Mr. Howard Stern. Our next nominee is David Spade. Hi, my name's David Spade. You know me as a sarcastic, wise-ass dude with the big, poofy, blonde hair. That part's true. I wrote a movie that was great called Lost and Found. Actually, it did better overseas. It lost me money, and I hid in my room in the fetal position drinking whiskey in a hamper the opening weekend. But they all can't be private parts, right, gang? Which did... Marginal, but good. Uh, here's the only man I might be able to bitch slap in a fight and win. Howard Sternum. Our next nominee is Andy Richter. That's the guy who used to co-host the Conan O'Brien show. He left the Conan O'Brien show, Andy Richter. Hi, this is Andy Richter, Conan O'Brien's sidekick, who is leaving Conan's show. Why didn't one of you f smack me across the face and wake me up? Damn it! It is the summer, it's time for booze and broads, and I am out there f***ing job hunting. You know, Joke Man has gotten more show business offers than me. And f LSD, who knew it was that strong? Anyway, here's Howard Stern. Hey, Howard, could you use, like, a, a pudgy intern? Here's the great Puff Daddy. I like his... Hey, yo, check this out, y'all. This is P. Diddy. And check out my clothing line, Sean John. I've been trying to make Howard look good. And believe me, it's no small feat. I mean, come on, man. I'm a clothing designer, not a fucking magician. <laughs> it's tough to make this bag of shit smell like roses. <laughs> I'm thinking of coming out with a line of ski masks for people that look like Howard. That's one ugly motherfucker. Damn. Damn. P. Wow. Diddy. 
blasting away. Our final nominee is Daryl Hammond of Saturday Night Live. He did uh, an ID as Phil Donahue. Well, hey there, hi there, ho there, it's Phil Donahue. And I want to tell you, I think that Howard Stern is one handsome guy. Oh, and not just handsome, but sexy. He makes me hot. I would love to meet him in a train station bathroom and give him a bumpkin. I want to pump his hot men yogurt all over my glasses and all of a sudden, hey, I mean, come on, I'm lonely, Howard. <laughs> give me a break and fuck Sally Jesse. Oh my. Here's Howard Stern. You gotta love that. Now, let's see who the winner is. Open up. I love the FMEs, baby. Oh, I knew it. P. Diddy. Oh. Puff Daddy. Well, he did give a stellar performance. On the phone now to accept for P. Diddy is P. Diddy. Oh. P. Diddy? Hey, hello. Hey, what's happening? Thank you very much. Well, first of all, uh, let me thank you, you for... You know what? He, was, he just started in movies, and he said, you know, he's going to get an Oscar, a Tony, and an Emmy before he's done, and here you are getting your F Emmy right away. No doubt. I just want to take the time to, you know, thank my mother for inspiring me to do great IDs. Right. I want to thank the people in New York, the New York Yankees. I want to thank you, Howard, for not wearing my clothes. Well, inspiring me for that great idea. I'm going to still keep on sending you some. Thank you. I want to thank you, Robin, for being the bitch you are every morning. Absolutely. <laughs> and I want to thank <laughs> I want to thank everybody. I love New York. Thanks a lot. And for the FMEs in the cell, it's a beautiful thing. Now, P. Diddy, uh, this is very exciting. In fact, uh, it's good to see someone from the rap community winning an FME. Yes. That's right. You know, hip-hop, we must represent. Yes, a lot of the uh, award show don't yeah. uh, have the uh, rap stars or on. if they do, they don't give them their awards on the air. That's, that's right. Up, but that's, that's just what y'all guys, y'all keep it the realest. Yes, we are the realest. And, the, uh, realest the realest morning show in the whole wide mother effing world. Absolutely. And P. Diddy, I don't believe that you have won any other awards, any big awards. This is your first big national yes, award. It is. It? It's the first time. It's about time that I've been recognized for my talent. And I just want to thank everybody for recognizing me for doing the best IDs in the world. I was a, a little surprised in your acceptance speech, if I can recap here in a review. Uh -huh. I was surprised you didn't thank God. I don't think you're taking this award seriously. <laughs> That's number one, because all <laughs> rap stars always thank God, first and foremost. Yeah. And also, you didn't mention uh, the uh, name of uh, one of your great partners who died. You know what I'm talking about? Biggie, Biggie Small. Smalls, yeah. You always thank Biggie. Yeah. I was surprised you didn't thank I Biggie. You do. I mean, this, this, this is true. I, was, I, I definitely was going to get to Biggie, but uh, y'all yo were talking to you. I wasn't really finished on my thank yous. But you didn't thank God first. I mean, you got, wait, you thank God last? Right. No, I, I was I was really so excited. <laughs> you and, forgot you know, God. I, sometimes you, you, don't, you don't do everything the right way. I didn't really have this all planned out. I was just trying to do my best, Robin. What did I tell you? Remember I told you, you know, all of a sudden he started bringing a Bible to court. I told you that wasn't yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, court. No, 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 Robert, Robert, come on, don't play around. <laughs> <laughs> when don't play. You, yeah. Well, Jesus is going to be very upset all day. Uh, no, no, no. This, this is something I'm definitely taking serious. I definitely want to thank B.I.G. Yes, that's I definitely better. want to thank God for making all things possible, even this award right here. P. Diddy, you, of course, uh, if I may call you P. Diddy. Yes, you can. Uh, P. Diddy. <laughs> no, P. Diddy. <laughs> By the way, I got to say this. Uh, I love this new video you did. The one where you got P. Diddy, and you spell out P. Diddy? Yeah, yeah, the Diddy. It's a P-I-D-D-Y-P-I-D. -D -D. <laughs> How, how's the tune go? go? You sing it. P. The D, the I, the D, the D. Yeah. D, the Y, the D, the I, the D. It's unbelievable. The D, yeah. the I, the D, the D, the Y, the, the D, D, the I, I the, the D, D, the Diddy. <laughs> Puff Diddy. Yeah. Oh, my God. Fantastic. Thanks a lot, Howard. Fan friggin' tastic. The P, <laughs> the I, the D, the Y, the P, the I, the D, the Puff Diddy. I, I walk around singing this friggin' thing. People in my building don't like that when I sing that. <laughs> 
Uh, kids could learn to uh, spell with that video. Yeah, that's, there you that's go. How I yo, yo, Howard, when you're when I'm going when you're gonna have me back up there, man. Anytime, Anytime. you want, man. Just All bring right. those clothes with you that I wear. Makes me look good. <laughs> uh, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, P. Diddy, of course. Uh, since we last saw you, J. Lo went and got married. Yeah. I know that was a very tough weekend. You didn't weekend. get an invite, did you? I didn't get invited <laughs> to that one, but you know, you know, I wish her the best of luck. You P. Know, Diddy, you I have. I was the, so happy. Yeah. Well, you wanted to pull her hair out. Tell the truth. Nah, I didn't want to do that. <laughs> you, yeah, you know, you know, I, I kept it real with you when I was on the show the last time, and I didn't, I didn't want to do that. You know, I, I felt I was happy for. And besides, you get plenty of poon tang. Uh, and he knows this isn't gonna last. Yeah, you know it's not. Cause she'll be, <laughs> she'll be banging on your door again. Don't worry about it. Uh, as a matter of fact, you're probably in bed now with a beautiful uh, girl. Is that true? Where are you, by the way? <laughs> oh, yeah, see? Are you Where naked? Where are you? Are you yeah, naked right now? But ass naked. It's too early in the morning. Yeah, who are you in bed with today? You don't know her. I don't know her? No, you don't know her. Put her on the phone. <laughs> Let's get to know her. Is nah, she nah, laying there nah. right next to you? Nah, nah. I'm, I'm, to be honest, I'm in the bathroom. No, really, where's your bitches? I'm, I don't, I, Howard, I told you, I don't have bitches like you do, Howard. Come on, come on. I told you I don't get down like that. And the reason your woman can't come on the phone right now is her mouth is probably full, right? Oh! Am I right? God. True, P. Diddy? <laughs> is that true? Oh, Howard, no. Really? It's no. not. It's, you're not in bed with Hillary Clinton right now, are you? Oh, my God. Oh. Imagine P. Diddy was in bed with Hillary Clinton. Oh, oh my God. Well, how, yo, Howard, I, gotta, I thank you for the speech, man. <laughs> thank you for the award, but... Whoa, this is going too far right what now. What are you trying to do to P. Diddy? No, P. Diddy, you know how to rap poon yeah. I mean... Hey, yo, no, no, Howard. You I don't mean... Howard, what... Where's your mind at thinking about P. Diddy and Hillary? What is, what's wrong with you? Now, who are you in bed yeah, with why now? why are you trying to punish the poor which, man? Uh, which model are you in bed with right now? Yeah, I can't tell you all that. I'm P. Diddy, it's Sam Kennison. Listen, this is your chance. Yeah. J-Lo may be listening. This is your chance to go, listen, I just want to say hello to J-Lo, and I want you to know that I'm with someone who finally likes Hey, no! Oh! Oh! <laughs> hey, you know what, P. Diddy? <laughs> you, you, you probably have a beautiful supermodel in bed with you right now. Am I correct? All right, all right. You know, you said which supermodel. He said, I can't tell you. You didn't say it's not a supermodel. Oh, no. This guy this guy bangs <laughs> top-notch women. I'm uh, telling you right now. Uh, probably in they bed all with, have portfolios. Probably got Cindy Crawford. Didn't Shaq have her? Shaq oh, claimed man. that he had a lot of people that he had to say I didn't. Oh. Hey, P. Diddy, you know what I was shocked to see? What's that? I'm watching TV. I don't. Are you getting along with Snoop Dogg? Yeah. All right. I'm watching TV. Snoop Dogg's daughter is a hot piece of ass. Really? I didn't even know Snoop Dogg had a daughter. She's a famous actress. Who? Do you know who I'm talking about? Uh, oh. What are you talking about? Snoop, I, I was watching the uh, uh, Greg Kinnear show. Whatever. Not Greg Kinnear. What's the other guy? L oh, uh, what's his Greg name? Kilborn? Craig uh, Kilborn. His daughter's name is Bianca Lawson. She's a black actress. And how old is she? She's like 20-something, like 25 or something. But Snoop Dogg it says he's 25. <laughs> <laughs> How old is Snoop Dogg, P. Diddy? Snoop Dogg's like 30 years old, man. Is he really? Yeah. I How swear to you. How can you have a 27-year-old daughter? I swear I'm not lying. Snoop Dogg is her dad. What? You believe all those stories about black guys? No. And P. Diddy, I'm serious. You guys start young, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm no younger than you white guys. Yeah, of course. He'd have yeah, had right. to start at five. He would have started at five. If you read Manchild in the Promised Land, black guys start when they're like seven. Oh, my goodness. I got three kids. When was it you <laughs> lost your virginity, P. Diddy? P. Diddy, how old were you when you started? Twelve. See? Well, still, if he had a daughter at 12, she'd only be eight. <laughs> what, what, when Snoop was here, he told me he knocked up his kindergarten teacher. I think this is their love baby. Oh, oh man. I'm telling you. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. A 25-year-old actress? He did. He really? At 12, you started? Yeah, but I was practicing a safe sex. Really? Sure you were. But th th now, seriously, I mean, I mean, that's that's. I'm Who is the girl? Her name is Bianca Lawson. She's Snoop Dogg's daughter. <laughs> no, I'm saying that's not who took P Diddy's virginity. Oh, who took your virginity, P Diddy? Uh, no, I can't tell you that. Was it an older woman? Was it a supermodel? She, 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 she was. No, she was 16. No, I'll tell you who it was. I read about who this. Who is? Diana Ross. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> nah, that's Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody got Michael's virginity. Well, huh? Pete Diddy, I don't know who you're laying there with right now, but I wish I was with her myself. But uh, <laughs> congratulations on your FME. Thanks a lot, man. And uh, it's a giant bronze replica of my nose. And look inside the nostril, because I put a real booger in each one. <laughs> oh, thanks a lot. All right. All right, Pete Diddy, thanks, man. All right, God bless you. All right. Good and to talk to and you. And congratulations on your FME. Thanks a lot, man. Peace. Pete Peace. P. Diddy, the great P. Diddy.
who uh, accepts his FM radio. You're listening to the FM only on Howard 100 and Howard 101. 25 years of the greatest highs and most spectacular lows in Stern Show history. Who else will win an FM today, Robin? Now, here are your co-hosts, Howard Stern and Robin Quivers. All right, let's get to our awards, Robin. Uh, it's been exciting. Beautiful gown you're wearing. Everyone is here. And it's time to give away another award. Now, this this award, this category is... Boom, 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 boom. Oh, here we go. This category is... Best Staff Fight. Ooh. Not including Howard. That's right. Yes, that's the staff fighting among themselves, not with Howard. Now, can I, I need to point something out, Howard. In, yes. In this category, you won't find any fighting... With John and Ralph, that's because they had so many. That's a whole other category. That's a separate category. They have category. their own category. category. All right. <laughs> All right, this is uh, first one up, Gary versus Scott the Engineer. Now, the reason they're fighting is Gary, as you know, when we go on vacation, prepares a show called Best of Howard Stern Show. Scott has to edit those shows and get them in proper form for, the, uh, for airing. Yeah. And every time I go on vacation, Scott is never ready. <laughs> and Gary yells at him. <laughs> Scott, the engineer producer. The what thing I'm pissed off about is I don't get to read Newsday. Right. You and know, Gary I does. Mean, you know, that's Scott, exactly what, what time thing. do you go home? Um, usually between 12 and 1. And what time do I go home? Around uh, 4 every day. I, I'm in here at 4. What time do you get in here? You have been in here at 4 since you were born. <laughs> Bull S. Because I, I was here. I wish it was a time clock. You don't know. I'm here every day at 4. I was here this morning, but uh, like 10 hours. I think since we yelled at you, you've been here before. No, far. absolutely not. No, look, here's the point. I am here every day you do, by 415. You get crazy every That's not year. Four. Okay. That's I work after four. 12, but I work after 12. I don't take a lunch hour. I never All right, do I take a lunch hour. Listen to me. Listen I mean, to I, me. you know, I don't understand. You see, your rationale is you don't get here at four. Hey, you're the one who brought up I don't up take that. a lunch hour, Gary. Yeah, don't read I'm supposed day. to get two hours of overtime. I you're, the one who, you're the one who brought up the Newsday thing. I'm just, I'm just fighting back. All right, that's a good one. <laughs> that is good. That me riveted. Wow. All right, let's get to our next big fight. That's a you know each one you hear it always seems like the winner. I love this category. Me too. This is a particularly good entry. All right, this is uh, Jackie Martling versus Stuttering John. Now, wow. this was a fight over who is more talented. Oh boy. And uh, you know that is a good question. Who is more talented, Stuttering John or Jackie? I'm excited. And uh, let's <laughs> let's see. How could they even get into this argument? Just before this, did you notice that the entire audience missed John's joke? What was it? joke? Wasn't that a joke when you said friends, family, and Joey? Oh, uh, yeah, it was kind of, but it's a non-sequitur type of thing, you know. No, it, it was it, a joke was... that absolutely no one got. Jackie, right? Jackie, Jackie you, you should talk about jokes that, 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 Jackie, that you should talk about jokes that bomb, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's, you know, you. there's somebody that should talk. You know, you know, I don't forget the open sores, all right? You even get one laugh, okay? 30,000 people said, why the hell is this fat guy on stage? <laughs> I remember, believe me. Johnny Mel, don't forget. <laughs> John's turned into a character now. Yeah, Johnny Mel. Well, Mel. I feel it is. How everybody talks Italian there, so you get, like, caught up in it. No, you know? Italian's another language. They talk about You're saying I bombed six years ago. Your album bombed yesterday. <laughs> Jackie, I sold more albums in one album than you sold in 18. I always say that. You put out 18 albums, no one even notices your albums. <laughs> You know, I still won't even put them on the shelves. <laughs> you know, they pay me money to make mine. You pay to make yours. Don't forget that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you fat bastard. I just did your favor, cutting some for your uh, for your wife to sell that stupid album of yours. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to hear more. My goodness. Keep going. <laughs> I forgot about how vicious they became. Wow, that was good radio. Very good. Jackie, you let that little putz do that to you? Yeah, he got he you, Jackie. Help, he didn't get me, but he was on a roll. He really was. <laughs> oh, you think if we played more of the tape, you would have come back? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you played it backwards. There was more, and you didn't, Jackie. <laughs> Sorry. All right, uh, uh, by the way, Stuttering John. <laughs> <laughs> Stuttering John was involved with another fight with Gary Delabate. Stuttering John had played a practical joke on uh, Gary. He uh, got me in the stock market and pretended he lost all my money. Yeah. Right, and called Gary off the air and said that he lost all his money. Gary Delabate, producer. Just before this, did you notice that the entire audience missed John's Oops, joke? That's the wrong one. Uh, listen, I appreciate that John helped me get money, but he doesn't need to give me money to like him. I'd like him anyway. And if he wants the money back, 
I give it back to you. Well, him. you sound way too defensive. Nobody yeah. brought that up. You're well, I know, what John, but, but John always says that. John no, says, I whenever out. I say something to John, he goes, "Hey, man, I can't believe you're mad at me. I made you all that money." Yeah, well, that's not right, John. How, that, okay, you do say that. You do say that. that I said, I said you, that. you said that a bunch of times. Oh, that's that's BS, man. I, you know, I make sure I don't say. You say I how, do no, no. you bring you it up. You say, "How can you be mad at me? I made you all that money." You say, "How can you be mad at me?" Just in general, whenever we get, whenever I get mad at you. That's so like, how can the club no, be mad at OJ? No, 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 he, gave, no. he gave her millions of dollars. Uh, it's not, you know, you know. I really watch myself about that, Howard. But if right. Gary says so, we'll believe it. It's true. You brought uh, it up once or twice. Maybe yeah. once or twice. Well, if you make a guy that much money, maybe once or twice you can give me, please, once or twice. But you know what? I play practical jokes on my roommate. I play practical jokes, on, you know, on on friends. I consider Gary a friend. I didn't know this was going to be work slash friend thing. I, I, you know, I, no, I take away the work thing. It's a friend thing. Yeah, a friend thing. So what's if, the big deal? You, you don't play friend? practical what? jokes on your on your friend. I don't play practical what? jokes on you. <laughs> Oh, I do not play practical jokes on you, Scotty John. End of sentence. Yeah, all right. Well, I play. I mean, I mean, do you play practical jokes on Scotty? No. Well, I really. do. We I do. play them on everybody. So, because you act like a jerk, we should all accept it. Yeah, I just thought it'd be funny for the. Yeah, I of asked about it. I asked when it's not when it's it. not you. It's always funny. I <laughs> love. I don't love on this show. The whole show hates each other. <laughs> I love it. Right. Hey, uh, let's get right to um, stuttering John again versus. Mike Ganji. It seems that Stuttering John hates everyone. Yeah, there's a yeah. thread here. There's a thread. Uh, it seems that Stuttering John played a practical joke on Mike Ganji. Actually, Ganji and John went out to do a practical joke on Jackie, and Ganji blew it. Oh, that's right. And they argued over whose fault it was. Because Ganji was supposed to be there with a hidden camera, right. and Ganji just stood around in the club, and Jackie saw him right away. Right. And knew that they were taping. This was John's fault. Tell him. The claim is 8 o'clock. Oh, John's fault. 10 to 9. It's John's fault. It's Jackie's fault. No, 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 no. You know, what 10, to, 10 to 9, Gandhi, John. 8 o'clock. Gandhi, you didn't need me to do the scam. You did not need me to do the scam. You knew what to do. You did not need me there right. anyway. And but I still, why, the, that's why I, was Gandhi, I still got there. Gandhi, I still got there. I still got there 50 minutes early than Jackie was there. I set the whole thing up. John, you got it's irrelevant. It's early. No, I got the quarter to 9. You walk in. You go to the first table. Gandhi, what's Every table. I said, hey, I told everybody already. Every table. I went to every table. You go to the one table. It's irrelevant. And you go. All right, guys, you, you understand what's going on? Let's say he never yeah. showed right. up. Let's say he never showed up. Right. How come you still couldn't pull it off? That's what he's saying. I was in there. That's what I was doing when but he showed up. But you got caught by Jackie. No, he got caught. Like Howard, Howard, Howard. Jackie. The key point is, Genji didn't get caught set up. The thing was set up. He got caught a half an hour later. Right. Stayed around. It was already set up. It's, it's irrelevant. It, it was all set up. It was all set up. So the even though was he was late, it was all set up. The game was afoot. Yeah. Gage, all you had to do was yeah. hide. It comes down to one word. Yeah. He's lazy. He is. He is so lazy. <laughs> wow. Fantastic argument. I remember that one. Genji really messed that up. Yep. And our final uh, staff fight in this category is our own Fred Norris versus Stuttering John. Stuttering John <laughs> tried to kiss Fred's wife. Oh, boy. Big mistake. Right here in the studio. Oh, oh, no this contest. was a bruiser. You know, uh, Fred's wife is in this play, and she has to kiss a man each time. And then I did the scene with Fred's wife and kissed her. And then when Stuttering John got in the room to kiss Fred's wife, well, the fireworks ensued. Let's there listen in. John, try it out. John, 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 I'll tell you one thing. John ain't touching my wife. Uh, oh, it's a scene. It's a scene. It's acting. 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 Go ahead. Do a scene. Do a scene. Do a scene. my wife. If you touch my wife, you are a dead man. Oh, come on. Let him alive. Dead man. Let him alive. Let him alive. You are not. You are not. A little scene. You are not. You are not. You are not. You are not, John Freddy. You are not bad. I'll take you outside any time. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go now. Go on, get out there. Should you want me to get out there? No, no, you better get out. You better have to you. All right, Fred, sit down, sit down. Sit down, Fred. Come on. John, I had an act with Allison. I had my hand on her chest. After that, Charles Manson over there. You're only ready. You're only a job away from Charles Manson. Let me tell you that right now. I beat up a friend for seven years. You're going to beat me up because Howard because Howard asked me to do a scene. John, God, you got to be John. You're not an actor. All right, well, we'll see. You're not an actor. I'm more of an actor. Oh yeah, I see. I seen you act. No, you have. Yes, I have. I went to your play. You want to get into it, Fred? I'll get into it, oh, all right? Okay. So I'll get into so it anytime you want. Go ahead, pal. Anytime you want, Freddy. Anytime, all right? Go ahead. Okay? Go ahead. <laughs> a lot of bad blood around here. <laughs> Strong category. Jeez. I don't know who I want to win. <laughs> I really I see, don't. I see a theme, though. Yes, yeah. I do. Yeah, it seems that John's always. John versus involved. everyone. All right, let me uh, open up the envelope and see who won. Jesus Christ, that's a tough one. Boy, who's what did the judges do? I can't imagine. They were all such good fights. The judge must be so brilliant. Solomon must be doing it. Yeah, he must be the smartest guy in the world, the judge who picks it. Do both parties win? I, I don't even know that. 
Can we get a smaller envelope? Ah. Oh, here it is. I thought so, though. Stuttering John and Fred Norris. Ah! Stuttering John producing. Well, will you two get up and make fun of Let's bring Stuttering John in. <laughs> and see just what the heck is going on here. John, you are shooing to win. Ah, and I, this is your uh, second win. This is your second win. Yeah, this is my biggest FME. Uh... And it's all for fighting. <laughs> and getting where, people upset. Where did you see Fred act? You never even actually finished that thought. Where did you see him? Oh, I did. I did. I, I, when when he did that little play. Right. Remember Bob, when he was in Mark Coppola's play? Right. I yeah, with with, 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 with with Mark Coppola. Yeah. Was he that bad? No, he wasn't bad, but I was just... I was he, just, was, he was just trying to... You know, because he, he never really saw me either, so it was just kind of like people BSing, but just saying something. You say he was pretty bad. Then, was no, it? he wasn't. He really wasn't, but he was just trying to get me. So well, he was saying, you know... You, was was Fred, doesn't, Fred doesn't think John is much of an actor or much of a musician. No, nah, that's not true. I no, do think John's talented as a musician. I you really don't. Do. Oh, but not as an actor. I didn't say that. <laughs> I just said he's a talented musician. Do you musician. think he's an actor? Be honest. Uh, I haven't seen enough to qualify him as an actor. I know, because he thinks he's an actor. No, he very well may be, but... I haven't. You wouldn't let him act with your wife. We could have seen. No, I don't. I don't know his work well enough to <laughs> trust him in that. <laughs> his work. His well, work. well, right. Well, well, you know, you guys all said I was goofing around with me anyway. Like, right? I don't know what he was doing. I mean, I think that it sounded, I couldn't tell. Sounded very truthful to me. Yeah. So if, 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 if he wasn't truthful, then you're a good actor, Fred. So what happened when you went to see him in the play? You were disappointed in his acting? No, I just don't think that Freddie is in a position to talk about anyone's acting. About anyone's acting because he's not an experienced actor and to be there and saying that I'm not an actor I don't think any of us in this room are really John, a good enough actor to, to, uh, John, to make that judgment at this at, John, at, at this moment in time John right. would you say that doing bits on a radio show in an acting capacity would qualify a person as well, I, an actor well I would also think that a lot of the things that we all do on this show are well, John are I've acting. been doing this since 1982 would yeah, and I qualify went, me more and Freddie I went to college to Acting in college, I had to take acting direction. courses, and I've been seeing an I acting, acting teacher for a while now. John, I don't know. Yeah. You've never, you see, that. Yes, I've is... acted in many student films. In fact, so many students had me in their films because they thought I was a good actor, and so I went you, to. So you should be. And I went to a film school that you should, you should be that, acting that, instead of Babylon. You don't go to the school unless you can do these things. You should be acting so, instead of Babylon. So, so because I majored in film and television, and I was in a lot of films and television, right? I think that it's. Yeah, but hold it. Fred's point right. is that he's actually been paid. Yes. To do these voices and to do actual John, production that's work. John, why I got hired. Yeah. yeah. You got hired. You were hired you to get coffee. No, no. Yeah. Freddie, I was hired. I, th I thought I was hired because make, I thought I did a good job interviewing people. No. No, no that's, that's not, not why you were hired. Nothing about well, your interviewing. Well, I thought you were You're a terrible right. interviewer. So, all right. So that, so it evolves so that, into that, but that's not why you got hired. I got hired. John, see. Yeah, but you got hired. See, you don't what respect resents, anyone else on yeah. this program. No, no what Fred problem. resents is. What did you say? You don't think. You think Fred's like an intern. Yeah. I never said that. No. I think Fred's a talented guy. No, no. But he's, got an, he's got an inflated. I know why he doesn't like you. Seriously. I know why Fred doesn't like you. I do like I know he's going to say he likes you, but you you know why he reacted that way to, yeah. your, your, to his wife? This is yeah. all seriousness. Cause I, I'm actually all writing about. I'm writing about this in my book, but I'm, just screw it. I'll do it here. <laughs> the problem is, yeah. Fred sees himself as a guy who met me back in Hartford in 19 uh -huh. something, yeah. started doing some voices, did you know? Did air work? Was in the profession of, of br professional broadcasting, uh -huh. and he's here with me, and he feels in his mind that you look at him like he was just some intern who was working on the show. I really don't. Like Fred's like twenty steps. He's a pro paid professional. You, on the other hand, he's a little well, in here on a stutter, right? And then you <laughs> yeah. say you're an actor, so he, he gets he he feels you should respect him more, I guess. But you know what, Howard? If I didn't see when I joined the show. I, I viewed it as an opportunity. Like you've never acted professionally, no, except but, for like. But no. Howard, don't forget, I joined the show when I was in college, where I was acting. So I come on the show thinking this is going to be a good way for me to get on television. I told you, a good way to get in the entertainment industry. This was a good stepping stone. So that's why I, I joined the show. So, so, so obviously that's what I was into right from the beginning. So that's why I don't understand why Freddie would th think. Differently. I guess Freddie doesn't feel you paid enough dues to continue. Paid enough dues. I worked for three for four equal. years though. I'm not. But in what capacity, John? Not as an actor. No, but you know, you know, Freddie, it's amazing to me. But like on 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 any of our shows, I I have been in a position that I've been on camera a lot doing doing even if it's doing interviews. But is this acting been, it's, or is this just being John? Well, what's wrong with being paid to be John? <laughs> but is that acting? No. Well, it's obviously it makes Howard happy. Right? Wait a minute! What kind of argument acting. is that? What kind of argument is that? But I'm not. But yeah, but Fred, I'm not acting on the. For, you are. 
John, get your duties on this show. Get get Howard, am I wrong? Get Fred's duties on this show mostly, for the most part, are his writing abilities. Correct. That's true. Okay. 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 So writing. you're not really getting paid to be an actor either, Freddie. On this show. But John, so I that's have, my point. I have done bits. Bits. I mean, a bits are far, have, so are far and few in between. Mostly, you're here John, to be a writer. John, I've right, done, I'm, I'm I'm done impressions okay. on the air. I mean, yeah, but mostly. You know, it's it's to be a writer. And why so, Howard? So, may, go ahead. May I approach the question? Yes. Why was I hired to be on this program? For your voice work. Thank you. Okay, but now I think that you do. Uh, Jack, Gary, you, you, you disagree? I think. Well, I think no, mostly. Fred, but, but I think what Fred what Fred's upset about is you're missing the history of the show. Okay. And there was a point where Fred so, did so many voices. All right. That was so. So that's fine. I mean, I'm not. But Fred he, is semi-retired now. You're gonna understand. <laughs> well, no, I didn't know that. But, <laughs> but, but, right, but, but all I'm saying come, is he's done his best work. He's resting on his laurel. There you go. That's fine. There was a time when. You should have seen Fred ten years ago. There you go. Well, well, Fred no, stopped it. Freddie did well, ten voices a day. Okay, how about now, though? Is it more of his writing or more of his bits? I'm not sure what is going on. Fred was that's really not, that's good. That's not even the point. If what was the point? <laughs> the point is, is that I have done it. Yeah, Freddie was really I good have, ten years ago. I have done it. You have done what? Bits? Yeah. I yeah, and the point is, I have done acted. I have done acting before I was even on the show. John, yeah, not as a paid professional. You're well, college. I was in college. What do you want from me? Yeah, but you, you haven't acted anywhere. That, so anybody what? can do that. If you John, got a buck, you can go well, out. John, you haven't acted, acted anywhere. anywhere. What? You haven't acted anywhere. College is not acting. And plus, hey, listen, if you're going to say that, Fred, I mean, I mean, you, you know, you know, let's just not forget that incredible role I had for our Star Trek parody. <laughs> and of course, that's true. Why well, I know stuff. John was an airhead. John, yeah. you got me. <laughs> no, but yeah, Howard, you know what it is? I, I like, I just, you know, so then I guess you're right, because because even when we had the serious talk, Freddie thinks that I'm not a compatriot, right? Right. So I guess. Right. Just, Whatever. Right. Okay. Congratulations to you, too, <laughs> on your FME. And, uh, Fred, uh, if you want to say something, you want to thank like the people? I'd like to I'd like, I think I deserve this award. I'd like to share this award with John. Yes. Even though he has absolutely no respect for me. I do. Or any other professional. But I want the big program. <laughs> and I'd like to thank my wife, who I have to share with everyone. So. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now our next category for the awards is most incoherent guest. Ah, I love this category. I know you do. You've been waiting for this one for a long time, and our nominees this year are plentiful. All right, our first um, nominee is Slash from Guns N' Roses. Wonderful. Slash producing. Big stars in this category. Yes, most incoherent guest. <laughs> Slash. Yeah. It's Howard. You're on the air. Hey. Hey, what time is it? <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen. Yeah, I'm sorry. I fl I, fl I I didn't flag. What? I didn't flag. I was supposed to be here. I was supposed to be on this thing like like minutes ago. Yeah, but who cares? It's okay. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, we have no real <laughs> we have no real schedule. We're well, on your schedule, we? as a matter. Yeah, as a matter of fact, we're on your schedule. <laughs> so, so and my security guard jumped over the balcony once. <laughs> He walked in. I was like, "What the? F is Whoa! Going wait a on? second, Slash. You can't use that F word. Remember that oh, award sorry, show? Sorry, sorry. <laughs> no, you remember, Slash. Remember that award show? You can't use, you can't that. use those words. Yeah, right. Well, who's the other voice? I thought you're fans of ours. You wouldn't know who the other voice is. That's Robin. Oh, Robin. Okay. Right. <laughs> I don't sound like myself this morning. Listen, you're not no, you, you don't know. I, I, like, I, I, I know this show. I don't want to get into it. What do you mean? I, I only, I, I, never mind. No, tell me, come on. Come on. You can tell us anything. I'm not exactly sure what the f I'm doing. Wait a second. <laughs> Holy God, <laughs> say the F word. <laughs> Wow, that's a great performance. I love that. Yes. We ought to listen to that whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> Fascinating. What a great year it's been. Our second Who nominee. Else is in that category? Our, uh, well, oh, this is a tough category. Uh, this would be Rude. Do you remember Rude? Rude. Rude. Gary, explain to Robin who Rude is. John found Rude on the street one day. We asked him to go out and interview black people, and John brought back Rude, and it turned out he had a little bit of an affliction. Yeah, he had like cerebral palsy or something, and couldn't understand a word. So here we are, most incoherent guest, uh, Slash is our first entry, and now Rude. Rude, don't you think that uh, Rise Up, Wise Up is like a message to the black man to like rise up against the white man? Don't you think? No. Really? No, I think he just he just <laughs> telling everybody to 
to get up and get out of the chair. Yeah, and turn off the TV because the song no, is so hard. No, I mean like go up in the world, make something, make something of yourself. Show. See, that's what I really. Help. Well, no, I don't know. I really, I hate to disagree with you, but I think it's like a message: get the white man. That's no, my personal no. feeling. No, one thing, Chabaret is not racist. Oh, you like Chabaret? You know this guy? He's not yeah. racist. He's you not know Chabaret? Yeah. Frank. He's major. He's a, He's a major player? Yes. He yeah. is? Yes. And Gary said he sells three to four million I, records. I almost got all his tapes. Oh, really? But you got his tapes. You don't even know, you what, don't he's know what he's saying. Nobody knows what he's saying. No. He me. could very well be a racist. You he could know. be. You wouldn't know it. Let's, <laughs> no, let's confess. We call him Chavez Reyes the kind of... He talks too fast. He talks too fast. Well, let me tell you something. And you no, not know that might be not him. That could be his brother. Oh. Mm, well, wow, that's another great uh, performance, uh, Rude. I wasn't sure if his name was Rudy or, or you just saying Rude. Day. Didn't say his own name. Well, um, our next uh, nominee is Hayes, ah, the, Hayes psychic. the Psychic. And uh, oh. here she is, Hayes the Psychic. You're an unusual yes. woman. It's hard to describe what you look like to the audience. Oh, oh, don't, don't even try. Right. And I know, <laughs> right. But you, you have an, you have an unusual look. You do oh, not. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Oh yeah. I've been described many ways. Right. And Could I... you give us some of those ways? <laughs> huh? <laughs> Tell us how you've been described. Well, I've been described as like one unusual. Mm. What? Unusual. Oh, okay. to say the least. Uh -huh. To say the least. Not a beautiful robin. Yeah. <laughs> you know, tell me, you have an unusual speech, but you just say deedle daddle robin. <laughs> I don't know, are you from another country? No, I have a speech defect. A speech defect. Well, what happened? we welcome people with speech defects, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This is the right. home yes. of the speech defect. Yes, as a matter of fact, this is the home of Fred the Elephant Boy. I yes, think you've heard of him. Yeah, but the mentally disabled. Right. Now, um, all right, Hayes, Hayes producing, by the way. And now in the uh, most incoherent guest category is uh, Fred the Elephant Boy is our final nominee. Ah. And uh, here he is, Fred the Elephant Boy producing. This is Fred singing to the girl we set him up with. Love with a color for a girl. All right, Fred the Elephant Boy uh, producing on that one. Okay. Going to hey, Howard. Win. Yeah, I would like to point out that this is almost an unfair category because Slash is really the only guy without a physical impairment. Well, hey, listen, it doesn't matter how you get into the incoherent guest uh, he category. He was incoherent. He was incoherent. <laughs> And I'll tell you something, I think Slash stands a good chances here. I don't know about you. I, I'm My money's on him. All right, we've got Slash, Rude, Hayes, and Fred the Elephant Boy. All of them strong contenders in this category this year. This is one of the toughest categories to win. Jesus, this envelope is... we got to get a new place that has better envelopes. Take forever to open these things. Hold on, I, I'm almost halfway through it. I'm dying of the anticipation. All right, here we go. Oh, I can't believe it. Once again, Fred the Elephant Boy took it last year. He took it again this year for his stellar performance, New Jersey Girl. In this Ladies and gentlemen, accepting now for Fred the Elephant Boy, Fred the Elephant Boy. All right. Fred, is that you? Yes. Thanks again, Howard. I, I am so shocked. Right. Well, let me tell you. Did you, you think you were going to win again this year? No, I, th I didn't think so. It, it, this was a very tough year. It, yeah, I thought uh, Slash was going to get it. Yeah, I didn't mean, I mean, fucking for, for him. <laughs> what did you just say? I I, 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 I for, this for You would have voted for Slash. Yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, you took it again. I believe yeah. this is your third year in a row, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That's that's rock and it's just. It just get pie up of a book as my 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 awards. <laughs> no, obviously you're excited. I don't know one yeah. thing you just Something said. about a bookcase and awards. Yeah. yeah, he's gonna he's gonna put on his bookcase, I think. But this, pro you know, I'm trying to think. His Elvin Boy won more FMEs than anybody else. Yes, um, I was going through the record book, and according to my statistics, he is one ahead of Ed Asner. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you think the um. 
<laughs> FME will get you laid. Hey, what's going on with that girl you sang New Jersey go to? Is she still going out with you? Uh, yeah, I, uh, uh, yeah, I have some plans in the future. I, won't, I don't get to talk about it. It's, it's profit. <laughs> oh, mm. slamming up on us. Well, go ahead and make your speech. If there's people you want to thank. Okay, I, I, I make it fast. I would like to thank my good friend, Shana Bob, Pat, Carrie, Chester, the, my friends at Cinema 150, uh, Seth and Marty Seuss of Pips. I don't want a N a T J T T K the door please. I'm a good friend Doc <laughs> at the programs director of Buffalo Rochester a different because I met there and most of all the person I want this award for Lori. All right. And, and, and most of all, my my my, my I would like to thank. Give thanks to my guy, Howard. Well, hey, listen, that uh, perf that little speech just got you your nomination for next year. I was going to say, yeah. are you and, uh, <laughs> doing and a also, I, I for next year's FM? And also, I, I, I forgot, I, thanks to the guys at Larry Shop Master Factory, and my friend Dennis at the Larry Shop School, and at the Animax Shop, I, 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 I'm on school up, forget it. All right, very good. Fred the Elephant Boy, congratulations yes. to you. Okay, thank you, Howard. All right, and um, let's see I'm what... I'm shocked that he actually had a thank you. <laughs> oh, he prepares, this guy. He Listen, he knows he's a shoo-in. <laughs> <laughs> when has he ever lost? All right, Fred, thank you. Okay. Okay, thank you, Howard. All right, Fred the Elephant Boy tanking it again. I guess not many people surprised. He is a shoe in In fact, he has a shoe in his mouth while he made that speech. <laughs> All right, we're going to take a break. We'll be back with more FMEs right after these words. Let's get to our, our musical performance here. Um, this is a, a beautiful tribute to ODB, who just died, because our... Uh, because at the uh, FMEs, we love musical tributes. And, and ODB would have been here. That's right. Has gone the dog is not the one to be <laughs> straight up. We are gonna miss those words he say. Nigga, please. <laughs> it's so sad he had to leave us. Don't f with us. That goes for FBI, CIA, all y'all motherfuckers. Dirt McGirt and Big Baby Jesus. I come with the streets for Dirt Love. My name is Dirt Dog. We won't forget. The things he did. I'll probably whip a nigga ass. Smoking crack and having 13 kids. We do a lot of um, donations for children. Oh, right there. Back to ODB. Thank you. What a beautiful tribute. Uh, you know what? And I was surprised they didn't mention him at the AMAs on Sunday. One person did. Really? One person did mention him at the AMAs. Uh, I believe uh, Big Boy of Outcast. Really? Because I had missed that then. Because I heard them mention Rick James, but they didn't mention ODB. A uh, special treat as long as we're talking. Yes, Artie? No, I, say, I love ODB, but it seems like he's getting as much press as Rodney Dangerfield. <laughs> I was surprised how little press Rodney got. Me, me yeah, too. Rodney was a surprise. I thought he'd be a much bigger deal. I thought he'd get front page. Really? Bob Hope type press he should have got. That's what I thought, but what do I know? Uh, by the way, uh, here's a special treat. ODB uh, was working on stuff in the studio when he died, you know yeah, that. And a reality show, right. Yeah. And uh, while he was recording, uh, a lot of people were wondering what would ODB's uh, final song have been. This is a tape of what ODB was working on uh -huh. when he died tragically. This is an exclusive, I would imagine. Yes. Who's the white cheating prick who murdered that chubby pregnant chick? Scott. You're damn right. Who is the ape that is going to get prison raised? Scott. Scott Peterson. Scott. What he gave to Amber Fry, he'll be getting from some guy. Scott. Face down. His cellmate says Scott is a sexy mother. Open your mouth. Make room for me, Scott. He'll probably take it. He's a psychopathic scum, and he'll have a big black man up his bum. Scott Peterson. 
Time to present the uh, FME. Here comes our next presenters. Colin Quinn, the great comedian uh, from Comedy Central. He's presented a word before us. So yes. Here he is again. Colin Quinn and Wendy the Retard to what? present. This is Colin Quinn. This is Wendy the Retard. Wow, something smells a little foul up here. I think I may have farted. I think you did more than that, Wendy. There's a racing stripe in the back of your dress. Yeah, I know this always happens with that spicy food. I'll loan you a diaper when we get backstage. And now here to announce the nominees is Howard Stern. <laughs> Thank you, you two. You're great. What? Thank you, Colin. You talk like in that holding way. Well, she's reading off cue cards. You know that. <laughs> I love how Colin has a diaper to loan her. Oh, yeah, he has diapers. Yeah. <laughs> Why See, is he carrying Wendy that? thought she farted, but there was a big racing strap in the back of her dress. Yeah. It might have been something more. i got to say, that's some of the best award show banter I've heard. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you can get a name, but not here. No, that's good. Okay, so let's get down to it. Um, our next category is Best Singing by a Non-Professional. Our first nominee is China Doll from the WWE. <laughs> China Doll producing. One of the great songs from this year. Where are you on the 4th of July? Think of you when the fireworks go off in the sky. And think about you on the Christmas holiday, but you should be with your family. Anyway, so I'm sorry if I sound so angry, but I'm really not. Cause it's just a holiday. She's the best. And I'll be okay. Yeah, be you shouldn't even nominate anyone. Yeah. Family. With you today, but I'm here with Howard, and it's my big chance, and finally. I might be on the radio, and I might be on TV. It is so great when that deep voice just sort of pops in. Why is she with her family? Why, 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 why? China Dolls, beautiful song. Our next nominee is Gary Delabate, Fly Like an Eagle. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> Time keeps on slipping, slipping, slipping into the future. Time keeps on slipping, slipping, slipping into the future. <laughs> I want to fly like an eagle to the sea. Like an eagle, let my spirit carry me. I want to fly like an eagle till I'm free. Oh, Lord, through the revolution. Nice. Feed the big. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Enough of it. Yeah. Our third nominee is uh, Howard Stern, Stairway to Heaven. Howard Stern produced it. <laughs> There's a lady who's sure all that glitter. I'm taking myself out of the running. And she's buying her stairway to heaven. And as we wind down the road. Voice Robin Quivers is our fourth oh, nominee. If no, it makes you happy.
And finally, Hi. our fifth nominee in this very exciting singing by a non-professional, Wendy the Retard. All right, that's enough. Can it's the retarded Keith you? Moon. That somebody <laughs> gave her drums. <laughs> <laughs> a poor mother. It's John retarded bottle. Oh, All right, it's time to find Shut out. Up, you retarded. <laughs> you mad you live next door to this guy? I'm I, trying to eat my retarded breakfast. I think she's in an apartment. Oh, no. <laughs> you think her mother got out of those drums? Shut that retard up! <laughs> <laughs> if I hear one more retarded symbol, it sounded like someone falling down the stairs. <laughs> it's Ringo the retard. <laughs> it's the retarded Ringo. I'm trying to get ready for work, you retard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's find out who wins. Wow, a lot of great nominees, huh? Give them all a big round of applause, please. That's it. Oh, standing over there. Thank you. <laughs> the winner, oh, of course, China Doll. Yeah! We tried to um, we tried to contact China Doll to give her an award, but uh, unfortunately, she's nowhere to be found. But here to accept her award is John Bon Jovi. <laughs> Now, John, how are you? I'm very well, and on behalf of all the nominees, China would like to accept this award. She's right here in my room with me, as a matter of fact. I knew it. There's nothing like a He-Man. You know, you never know. you got to try different things. It's, it's, the variety is the spice of life, my friend. By the way, I saw Bon Jovi win a Lifetime Achievement Award at Beautiful, the yes. American Music Awards, but there was something wrong with the microphone when you were accepted. I know. My uh, the earphone monitors were... That, that's what I didn't realize they were right at the level of the microphone. I thought people were hissing you. I went, what did he do wrong? No, yeah, there was a strange I, noise. I was like, who's making that noise? Yeah, that was, that was self-imposed, self-inflicted wounds. Why are you whispering? Is someone in the room with you? No, China. Just me and China. <laughs> All right, so you've accepted for China, doll. Yep. You've uh, won the American Music Award. I was happy for you getting that award. Yeah, it was great. It's a nice milestone. I mean, it's not a it's not a career achievement thing to me. It's just a milestone. It's hit. Look, here we are, 100 million records. 20 years later, they give you this award, and then you go back to work and you do morning radio and try to get your records played. No, right. are you? you know, uh, but I was thinking about. It, I said, can you? Um, did you ever imagine? You know, when you're playing for us at Club Bene. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that. That was a milestone for you. <laughs> That's right. That was a highlight. It was funny when they were showing that retrospective. I thought my hairdos were bad. Oh, yeah. You know, well, my baby pictures are public, you know. Yeah. yeah. All right. Listen, John. Go back to your F Emmys. Thank you. And thank you for accepting for China. Uh, she loves connection. you all. She loves you all. Thank you. I didn't know you were that close to it. <laughs> Very close. All right, John. See you guys. Later. Bye-bye. But, uh, John Bon Jovi accepting for China, though. Very nice. Uh, that guy, uh, that guy sold up. A hundred million. hundred million records. I know. That is really astonishing. Yeah, and I went to lunch with him one day, and uh, I picked up the tab. <laughs> Somehow you always get stuck. I go, no, no, these no. extremely rich people. And I go, John, go ahead, leave. I'll take care of it. And he goes, okay. And he left. <laughs> right. Didn't fight you at all. He goes, oh, a hundred million records. <laughs> Couldn't pick up the tab. Robin, it's time for our next category, Most Hostile Interviewee with Stuttering John. Okay. In this category, we have three nominations. Our first nomination is Ted Williams, Stuttering John Producing. Do <laughs> you know all the words to the national anthem? No, I wish I did. Yeah, well, I don't sing. Uh, by any chance, did you ever accidentally uh, fart in the catcher's face? Pardon? Uh, by any chance, did you ever accidentally... Uh, <laughs> Fart in the catcher's face. Who the hell are you? For John's sake, that kind of damn question. See you later. All right. Yes, Ted Williams. I'd like to see him accept. Oh, boy. And, you know, uh, our second nominee is Morton Downey Jr., the talk show host. And now actor. Morton Downey Jr., uh, second nominee in the most hostile interview done by Stuttering John. Stuttering John producing uh, Morton Downey, uh, the nominee. How did you get in here? You look like a slob. Really? Well, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't have fake, you know, jacket. I don't have anything fake, especially my brain, punk. Blow your ass out of here. Listen, let me ask you. Did you hear me say blow your ass out of here? I don't, I don't know. What do you that. think? I'm some punk that you can come I'm up to and talk to? I'm just asking you questions. Well, you can't ask me because I think Howard Stern sucks. I think he's got the brains of an amoeba. And I think you're a complete... Oh, Howard, so suck my earlobe, punk. 
Get out of here. Get out of here. Don't hit me, man. Get out of here. here. I'll sue you, Martin. You'll sue me? Yeah, but, but I, I can't. Stand in line. I can't sue you for f***ing face. Me. Don't spit on me, Martin. Hey, that's not really nice. Get out of here, punk. But seriously. Let me just ask you a question, Martin. Uh, would your wife go and dance topless in clubs for the money if you really needed it? Would my wife dance topless in clubs for money? Yeah. She yeah, never yeah. did dance topless. I know, but if, if you know, if you really need the money, since I know that you I are bankrupt. You see, I wouldn't ask my wife to do that. I wouldn't ask my wife. I wouldn't ask my lady to do that at all. I got too much class. <laughs> Holy f Look at this. What are you saying? You just yeah. you just shut up. I'll kick your ass out. You kick no one's yes, ass. Go, go and get away from no me. No one's ass. Look at this. Look at this. What, what is it? You want to smoke? Kick your ass. Don't smoke. Don't smoke. You don't throw nothing for my wife. Look at this. I'll see you in court. See me in court. I will. You homophobic piece of shit. Just shut up, you old man. Oh, he's yeah. old enough to jump your ass. Yeah. You just hit me, Mark. You're lucky I don't beat the s*** out of you, Mark. No, oh, you're not going to talk about the good s*** they're going to beat out of you. <laughs> yeah, that's a great one. Uh, that's our second nominee, Morton Downey Jr. You know, John does that for free. That's the amazing part. <laughs> don't even get paid for it. And our third, our third nominee in this category is Justine Bateman. That's a tough performance to uh, beat. Yeah, really. Stuttering John producing and um, Justine Bateman the nominee. This guy Valentine ever slipped Michael J. Fox the tongue? You think so? Uh, no, but I'm sure he'd slip it to you if you. If you uh, these questions are very odd. Did you ever hear of. Um, well, let me ask you a few more and I'll explain. Was Michael J. Fox fooling around with Tracy Pauling during the show? No, these are really. I'm not going to answer any more of these questions. Well, well, did you hear of? Uh, well, this is this is going to be you know you know on the air. I mean, this is for the cause. Uh, for what? Well, this for Earth Day and for the and for. Uh, I know, uh, but they, these questions have nothing to do with with any Earth Day or. Uh, I don't understand these questions. I'm sorry. All right, can I just ask you? Uh, you know, uh, was Michael? Oh, I asked you that. Did Arthur Miller write this play you're in while humping? Marilyn Monroe. This question's really f***ed up, and I'm not going to talk to you anymore. All right, there it is. This is a three startling interview. Yes. Yeah. But now it's time to choose one as the uh, recipient of the FME. Robin, I'm opening the envelope. All right, here we go. We're going to find out now who the winner could be in this category. I knew it. Morton Downey Jr. Yes. For his performance with Stuttering John, Morton Downey on our phone to accept. You're kidding. I was going to say that it was just a shame that anybody else was hostile in the same year as Mort. Yeah, you know, you're so right. Robin puts it right, Mort. When, um, oh, excuse me. <laughs> Wrong one. Mort? Hello? Hello. Mort, let's say that Robin hit it right on the nose. She said... It is impossible that anybody else could have taken the FME away from you this year. Anybody nominated this year knew they had to go up against you. Uh, this is an emotional moment for me. Yeah. Um, I'd, uh, would you like uh, to thank some people? I, I would. I'd like to thank, first of all, I'd like to thank Stuttering John for the cleft palate that he suffers from. Right. <laughs> Made it possible for me to be able to insult him so gloriously. By the way, John... Uh, I'd like to thank Howard Stern. Howard, thank you. Howard's worked really hard to, to make it possible for me to take these lessons to, lear to learn one of these classes and to uh, and Howard uh, what do you uh, want a car phone yes I am where did you get a car phone I, I, I stole you... it from this vehicle in front of me <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to be able to get on the line to you guys I didn't know that uh, there, I... there's a guy here celebrating I'm in Westwood near UCLA right now right he's celebrating he's urinating on a parking meter but but in all seriousness I'm surprised that uh, you had the money for the uh... You know, for the portable phone. Well, no, I didn't have. Are the things money. getting I borrowed, better? I borrowed from this homeless guy here. Are things getting better, Mort? A little by little, but it's a slow climb. They say you meet every on the way down that you met on the way up. That's a lie. I haven't seen a one of them. Let me ask you: so Are you a limo driver now? Is that how you get to use the car? <laughs> no, actually, it's just right. <laughs> now, oh, a stuttering. Wait a His car phone is breaking up. Oh. Morton? That's yes, a, that's I'm right back. Stuttering John is here. He says he can still kick your ass. Uh, I like to box you, Mort. The only way Stuttering John could kick my ass... You're an old man! we were about ten feet higher. <laughs> hey, let me ask you this. Why did you get so angry with John that night? You know, I never gave that a thought. I think I think because of David Sittenfeld. Is that right? I think because of David Sittenfeld. Well, let me ask you this. Yeah. Hey, hey, did you just work on a movie with Jessica Hahn? 
Oh, yes, I work for Jessica. How what is happened? How is Jessica in the sack? She's a very lovely lady. And when they put the sack <laughs> over her head, she would look a lot better. Now, what happened? Did you get in a fight with her on the set? No, no. She was 27 hours late in a total of 24. Right. So you, you know, got so, mad? You know, so I, I got a little upset with her. So what happened? You guys had an argument? No, I just reduced her to a bowl of ashes on the floor. And then, of course, Lori picked her up and brought her upstairs and straightened <laughs> her out again. You mean you started yelling at Jessica on the set? Yeah. And I, she was, was she crying? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> I felt bad for her, but she had six lines in the movie and forgot seven of them. <laughs> <laughs> Is that true? She forgot her lines? Oh, uh, just, you know, I understand. Is she a good actress? <laughs> <laughs> Who are you asking? Is more a good actor? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> he got a piece of liver caught in his throat. What, does he have a piece of liver in his throat? Yeah, that, John, uh, John, uh, like, if you see Stuttering John again, will you be mad at him? Nah, uh, you know, I, I understand Stuttering John now. After going through the same kind of treatment that Stuttering John has, <laughs> on my 16th shock treatment, I understood that... What are you doing I, now, anyway? Seriously, what are you doing? What are you, how, 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 come how are you we, making a living? How are you making money? Um, you know something? Finally, start, things are starting to turn around, you guys. Really? I'm having to act all the time. No television shows. Don't allow me on television anymore. You're just acting. Can't get a radio job. Won't allow me on radio Really? Anymore. Really? You know, I'm, I'm doing advertisements to drive in theaters. Well, listen, uh, I know. between that limo job and the acting... <laughs> well, the limo you should job, be able to make ends meet. And the drive-in theaters isn't bad. Uh, no right now, I'm cruising the back streets of UCLA. All right. Keep keep it up, and I'm. Very, and by the way, congratulations. Did you, by the way, get your money for that movie? Yeah, because Jessica claims she didn't get paid for the movie. I got paid for the movie. Jessica got paid in advance. She says that she was owed more money, and she didn't get it. No, no, she was owed more money for her overdubs, and when they tried to overdub her, you know, she just couldn't remember the lines. <laughs> Oh, dear. Is that really true? Yeah, no, it really is, Howard. So, in other words, you She's got... She's a the... very nice lady. Don't get me wrong. She's a very nice lady. God bless uh, Jimmy, whatever the hell his name was. Jimmy time. Swaggered? Yeah, oh, whatever. Her, no, whatever. Jimmy whatever. Baker. Whatever, whoever it was she was caught in the car with. <laughs> <laughs> so, in other words, you received all your money on the movie. I received all my money except for $600. Right. And the, what is this movie about? It's about this mean, rotten, nasty guy who uh, runs, uh, runs a nightclub. And he later becomes a transvestite and then turns into a nice guy. And uh -huh. Jessica, it plays what? Uh, Jessica plays uh, some creature from outer space who tries to grant him his wish. This has got to be a smash hit, huh, Robin? I'm telling you, I can't wait for it to come Mo out. Moist career is really on track now. <laughs> I think it's opening in three drive-ins in South America. I don't think it'll ever show on here. And you received all your money but $600. I received all my money short of $600. So you got 200 so far. I got 140 $140 so far. $140 so far. Yeah, you didn't account for taxes, huh? I, no, I'm not. They have to pay my taxes. And you're still with that beautiful girlfriend? You betcha. She's hanging on to you, huh? You betcha. Well, he can't let her go yet. Howard. Let her go. Uh, get back on his feet. I'm surprised she's still with him. She's very, she's gorgeous. I know. How do you hold on to her? You got to keep her. Uh, you know. You know. You got to keep her busy. Ask Stuttering John. He knows. You're getting too old to keep uh, track of a young thing. I like say, that. Stuttering look, John knows my secret. Robin, you know. Hey, it Morton. Too, so hey, Morton. Start. What is your secret? Robin knows. Wait, I was going to say, look for the handcuff marks. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, the sledgehammer on the head marks. <laughs> hey, uh, Stuttering John wants to talk to you for a second. Oh, good. Hey, Morton. Good morning, John. Hey, good morning. Yo, I thought you were going to come on a TV show and box me, man. Oh, come on. I didn't want to give you the shot at it at that time. John, you weren't in training. Get in training. I'm, get I'm all some, set. Get some muscle around something besides your mouth, and we'll go for it. All right, Mort. Listen, I want you to be careful. Watch out. Don't drive into oh, the trees. Don't what is it? Okay, they're doing the like that. All even in an accident, his mouth is still going. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Who would you rather be, Mort or Magic Johnson? I mean, you know, when I die, the way they're going to Mort, I never thought I'd say that. You know, Mort, we just realized we'd rather be you than Magic Johnson. <laughs> oh, that poor guy. Yeah, I mean, we'd actually, this is the first time I have yeah. to say I'd rather be this you. This is the first time anybody's ever made us want to be you. And three months ago, someone said, Who would you rather be, Magic Johnson or Mort? I no, no, no problem. Question. I mean, I would say, why is that? That's a silly question. I'm, driving all, of, I'm driving all over Westwood looking for where I'm supposed to park today. I can't find <laughs> anything. What the hell is going on here? All right, Mort, listen. All right, guys. Congratulations on your FM. I'm really honored, humiliated, humbled, and, 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 and grateful for this and, honor. And let's hope that uh, you appear again on the show and you get nominated for next year's FM. <laughs> all right, Mort. Take care, Mort. Bye. All right, Bye-bye. Bye. There you go, John, your arch nemesis. Morton Downey Jr. Robin, we have to take a break from the yes. FMEs. Well, I'm shocked that Morton was there to accept his award. Yeah, I got to tell you.
Yeah, you don't even have your song over No, I don't. Oh. I have no idea what I'm singing, what I'm singing to. But you're going to rehearse a little bit there. I tell you, these writers of mine, boy, they're a real problem, I tell you. Yeah, I got to tell you. Jackie's trying to point out something to me with headphones on. I have no idea what he's saying. <laughs> Jack, didn't they have two hours to give you this? <laughs> he's trying to point it out while she's on the air. What did you want to point out? Just where the, the line breaks up. No, that should be no problem. <laughs> well, give me your best shot, Robin. I guess I'll have to, won't I? you to be surprised at what song you're playing. I don't know what this is. What song is this? <laughs> Mrs. Brown, you've got a lovely daughter. Ah, okay. To, uh, I have got such big, round, lovely hooters. And <laughs> <laughs> hey, by the way, I certainly do love your dress tonight, Rob. It's surely very beautiful. Well, thank you. Yeah, I gotta tell you. You know, when I see your big, lovely hooters, I get really excited, I gotta tell you. Well, it just so happens I'm gonna be singing about them. Yeah, that's great. Whoa, look at them. Wow. Holy mackerel. Yeah, I got to tell you, those are the biggest things you are. Even when I was in the Army, the Armed Forces, the Angelian. Yeah, I shouldn't make any Angelian jokes, though, about her breast. She lost no. it. Yeah, I got to tell you, though, uh, I'm looking forward to hearing your song. We got a great band, don't we? Yes, we do. Wonderful orchestra. Yeah, I got to tell you, it's so wonderful to have a great band. All right, here we go. I've got such big, round, lovely hooters here on the FMEs. I have got such big, round, lovely hooters. Lovely hooters. It would be a shame if they got trimmed. If they got trimmed. I'm just tired Ooh. of lugging them around. Oh. I could breastfeed Ethiopia if I didn't do the news. My huge lug lumps do not make it easy. Make it easy. I need bras made out of parachutes. Out of parachutes. I can't sleep on my stomach cause it hurts. Oh. I can't see my kneecaps cause my jaw's flopping away. Oh my god. I want them child Just to have some comfort I get insane Cause they keep bouncing In my beef stew <laughs> But cup <laughs> We're going in Shut up first Wait a minute, where are we? Hold on here we go. Yeah. I would like to be an A or B cup. A or B cup. Even a C minus would be just fine. Would be just fine. My monstrous rib balloons oh. are too tough to buckle down. Oh. When I try to jog, they bounce and blacken both my eyes. I want them slice. I'll still be a woman. Gorgeous and light. And quick enough to handcuff my boyfriend. I get tired from walking all hunched over. All hunched over. And ironing board chest would surely suit me fine. Suit me fine. Memory. Oh. They're tough to buckle down. Oh. I get exhausted just from taking a deep breath. Oh. I have got such big, round, lovely hooters. Lovely hooters. I have got such big, round, lovely hooters. Lovely hooters. Wow, <laughs> what a number. Wow. Hey, I gotta tell you, a lot of guys are really turned on during that. I gotta tell you that. Oh yeah. I didn't realize you like to sing about your hooters that much. God, the way you got into that, I couldn't believe it. Hey, honey, you're asking for it. I gotta tell you, baby, I'm gonna spank you after the show. Yeah, I gotta tell you. You know, but it's time. To, holy mackerel! I gotta play that back tomorrow. Maybe even the next day. Oh my goodness. I gotta tell you though, you do have lovely hooters. I tell you, you're so lucky.
And now it's time to open up the envelopes and find yes. out who the winners are. What is the next category? How the hell should I know? <laughs> I'm so busy staring at those brush of yours, I can't even concentrate. Well, now, you keep your mind on your job. And I got to tell you, you're one snippy little minx. <laughs> Thank you. Here's Anna Nicole Smith to introduce our next nominations. Um, I think um, it's right. That's crap. <laughs> Honey, oh. pull it together. Uh, I'm a little bit too thin, I think. <laughs> Take her off. Who let her out there in that state? Let's get somebody coherent. Uh, here's... Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, High Pitch Eric and Kelly Clarkson to introduce our nominees. Kelly, you're looking a little heavier than usual these days. Have you been not working out? I sure have, Eric. I'm glad you noticed. Maybe we could go out for a bite to eat after the show. That would be great! But you make sure you keep your hands off my plate, lard ass. Who are you calling little lard ass? Rubens started looks like Brad Pitt compared to your King Kong-sized body. <laughs> you bitch! But seriously, let's get on to the next category. All right, thank you, Kelly. You the nominees. Oh. It's Howard Stern! All right, thank you, High Pitch and Kelly Clarkson. Nice delivery. I can tell the difference. Our next uh, category is my favorite. Best musical performance in studio. During this fine year of radio performances, our first nominee, Alanis Morissette. And isn't it ironic, don't you think, a little too ironic, yeah, really do think, it's like rain, you're it's a free ride, and you've already paid, it's the good You just didn't take And who would have thought It figures I love that I love that Wow, yeah. that was so good Audience is silent Oh, there they go <laughs> They were stunned Stunned our next nominee, the Counting Crows, and Mr. Jones. Musicians. Boy, this is going to be a tough one. The only thing that evokes emotion in this stone cold body of mine. <laughs> Robin. Yes. Daddy. Wow, I heard a song. Wow. Wow, I heard the counting crows. Wow. Wow, I'm our melting. Next, I'm melting. Our next, I'm opening my heart. <laughs> wow. All right, our next uh, nominee is Hoobastank, The Reason. I never meant to do those things to you. And so I have to say before I go that I just want you to know I'm Performance too, huh? This is How a tough category. Choose? Our next nominee, Stained, sitting here in our studio doing so far away. Somebody shake me, cause I, I must be sleeping.
won twice already. Spain, yeah. Haven't they? Yeah, I think so. And finally, uh, Pat Monahan of Train. Uh, I feel bad, too, because he called me last week to go to dinner with him, and I didn't call him back. Huh. So spaced out. Are you? I know, I'm bad. I'm, I'm going to call him today and apologize. And say, uh, I just got your call? Pat uh, Monahan of Train calling all angels. And football teams are kissing queens and losing sight of having dreams. In a world that what we want is only what we want until it's ours. the truth i didn't call him back because it was a thursday night uh-huh. and i didn't want to go to dinner with him and beth i didn't want her around him oh he's so goddamn good looking and could sing you yes. couldn't just go on your own and leave beth home well i had plans with her so it would have meant bringing her and then she would have been around pat and she would have dumped me and oh. taken him on he's not a guy to bring a broad around yeah you don't bring broads to see pat monahan yeah you didn't tell me that i Thank didn't you. know you couldn't just go out to dinner with him but you got no i'm i'm coming clean on that one <laughs> after that performance I I think everyone called. yeah I, I don't need that <laughs> <laughs> calling all your yeah, angels. Yeah, you would have been like the fifth wheel yeah. at that dinner. Next thing you know, he's singing to her. <laughs> hey, guys, what are you talking about? It's me, Howard. Hey, you mind if I get a word in? Hey. God damn it. <laughs> all right, so I'm insecure. Let's see who wins this very fine category. All these people, super talented, but only one can win the F Emmy. Yeah. Which is a giant I, Beatles I hate head. to even choose. It was yeah. such a wonderful year of music here. The FME is a giant Beetlejuice head. <laughs> the winner is, and deservedly so, Alanis Morissette. Yes. Now to accept her FME is Alanis Morissette herself. Alanis, Hi. how are you? Wow, I'm really touched. Congratulations. Congratulations. You guys are killing me. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Just being really sweet, this whole FME thing. Well, the FME is important. It is the most coveted award amongst musicians. I've known, I've heard them speak about it. Yeah, how many musicians have an FME? Not very many. I think there's maybe ten FMEs ever given to musicians. So is there is... actual a physical structure that you that you give to people, or is it more of a sort of an emotional thing? Well, it's a physical structure. It's a big giant Beetlejuice head, but unfortunately, wow. I just can't take it home. Yeah, we don't have the budget to send you one personally. Just <laughs> know so it sits here. It's a very prestigious award. The last two winners are you and Corey Feldman's band. I think. Oh, wow. <laughs> this is a big moment for me. Thank you. Hey, by the way, I'm doing uh, Letterman with you tomorrow night. I know. Yeah, we have to mix it up. We could do a little jig. I'm going on. I'm really do. I'm doing like a serious business, man. I'm going on there, and yeah. uh, I'm. Ex- You're gonna lay it down. <laughs> I'm laying it down because I need a forum to talk to my audience. I'm very stifled now as to what I can talk about in terms of my future plans. Right. You can't do it on air. No. No. Can someone else do it on your behalf on air? No. Well, no, because. Mm. You know, then it's viewed as a commercial. Or... Well, these are the people's airwaves. They're not free. That's right. We're just warning you, tomorrow night you might get bumped, Alanis. Yeah, I might have to bump you. If <laughs> you I know, knowing, knowing that you'll be spreading the good word, I, I'd actually be willing to be bumped. Yeah, I mean, this is impo- you know, your music's important, but what I have to say is much more important. <laughs> I but, uh, can't agree more. Yeah, so uh, but you know what we ought to do, though, when we're backstage? Mm-hmm. Quite, quite a bit. No, we should, like, like, drop into each other's dressing rooms like we're close friends. Yeah, hang out like we've, you know, we've done all that. That'll make me look good, <laughs> which is what I'm... Now, I'm, who are you looking good to now? Who's going to be there to look good? No, 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 Robin will be back. So, you know what, I should, I'm going to walk up and start making out with you. <laughs> oh, God. The word will spread very quickly. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll walk in, just lay you down on the couch and start to make love to you. <laughs> you know, we were trying to get Howard out here, but he and Alanis are having sex. How funny would that be? And Dave would go back with the camera and be on the couch <laughs> in full coitus. Right, and your, your show will be, you know, really, really kind of represented in that moment. That's right. <laughs> I can see the page six headline, Morissette makes out with Satan. Yeah. Makes out. Makes out. I'm talking about full on yeah. oh. intercourse. Oh, I'm sorry. What's the with you? It's impregnated by Satan. How dare I? Has baby with Howard Stern. <laughs> Satan's child. No, I'll use a condom. It'll be cool. <laughs> oh, my God. So appropriate. That's awesome. Could you ever see yourself making love to me, or is it repulsive to you? <laughs> Honestly, be honest. Um, I feel with you, it's uh, I'm repulsive to you. You're very... um courageous and that's a very exciting characteristic <laughs> oh that's good when you ask that chick how you look she goes, very, very measured answer really would it be so horrible to make I, I mean okay maybe you see me as misogynistic or you know or, or gross but 
<laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, just physically, am I that repulsive? You're not repulsive at all. Really? You know who else was called? Cor- you know who else was called courageous? The Elephant Man. Oh, uh. <laughs> 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 he's so <laughs> courageous. <laughs> Is that what Anne Bancroft said? Yeah, yeah. Look at yes. hey, you, courageous. You know why I love you? You're courageous. <laughs> Hot chicks call hideous guys courageous. <laughs> That's not true at all. It's yeah. so true. It is so not true. Well, oh. so in other words, it would be hard for you, I mean, physically, to make love to me. <laughs> you are you are an attractive man, but I don't know if you are aware of it. Right. I think I, you are. I might not be your type, is what I'm saying. You're saying it. Right. I understand. You're very you're very kind. Well, listen, the microphone is yours. You've won an FME. You can give your speech, please. Well, I just want to thank my grandparents. <laughs> Why them? Because they're just so great, and they they escaped during the revolution in Hungary in 1956. And nice. without them having been that courageous, speaking of courage, I wouldn't be here. That's right, and uh, that is very courageous. And very hot, incidentally. Uh, your grandparents must not have been good looking if they're courageous. Too. <laughs> no, those those people are very hot people. <laughs> All right, so you thank your grandparents, and who else? My parents. Yes. Because had they not met when they were 12, I wouldn't be here either. Wow. They met when they were 12. Yeah, and my dad said in the schoolyard to my mom that he'd marry her back then. Wow. Interesting. Yeah, a little prophetic moment. In I can't the believe I can't believe they're not divorced. Are right they up. still together? They're, they're still together. Wow, that's incredible. And they're uh, they're really hot together. They're going for it and really romantic and adorable. Have you ever seen them? Have you ever overheard them making love? No, but I did walk in on uh, on a family member at one point. I won't mention any names. And it was just horrifying. Really? You just don't want to walk in on a family member, do you? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that sample. Did you see everything? Uh, no. Oh, I wonder what they were doing, exactly what they were doing. <laughs> no, I, it was pretty obvious what they were doing. How old were you? Um, God, I was about 10 years old. Mm. Right. So that wasn't that traumatic. If it, at 10, it's not as traumatic, I'm sure. Will you ever write a song called, Isn't That Traumatic? About that incident. <laughs> no, I'd be too stunned to write it. This wasn't a family member pleasuring themselves, or were they with another person? They were with their partner, yeah. All right, okay, that's good. I get, get it was healthy. It All set right. a good precedent for my future. Well, you I'm going to see tomorrow. Yep. What are you going to wear on Letterman? Are you going to... Was she finished her speech? You keep... Oh, I'm sorry. So I have, another part of my speech is more of a question. Were all those performances that were in this category performed at really early hours in the morning? Yeah. Yes. Can you believe how incredible those voices are that early in the morning? I have a whole new level of respect, not that I didn't have a high amount to begin with, but wow. I am absolutely amazed by the talent that walks through this door. Mm-hmm. Wow, and that early, too, and sounding so good, I'm, I'm yeah. blown away. Yeah, it's a, it's a great category, actually. It's the only category that actually means anything. <laughs> <laughs> of it is just ridiculous. Yeah, the rest of this stuff is completely... What, what other categories are we talking about? Uh, let's see. Uh, sexiest moment. Sexiest moment. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't even remember. Half I think it's fight. Uh, yeah. And who, who decides on the uh, on the winner of the category? It's usually decided by who will call in, to be quite honest. <laughs> nice work. Most embarrassing moment. Oh. Stink- grossest moment. Stinkiest right. fart. Stinkiest fart was a big one. <laughs> Gayest moment. All kinds of different things. Perfect. All right, Alan- well, Alanis, what are you going to wear on Letterman? tomorrow are you gonna go for the sexy rock star look or are you gonna try to uh, play it down and, and sort of be like a hippie kind of chick well i think i'm gonna do a little combo of masculine feminine you know a little kind of tomboys that meets a little kind of you know no bra not, not avoiding the, the feminine part too will yeah. you wear a bra or not on letterman of course you will wear it's, a bra fr- it's cold on that set yo yes it truly is <laughs> all right Alanis, congratulations on your fme thank you You're very sweet and have a great day you guys and i'll yes. see you tomorrow howard you too. right Bye. Can't wait. It's Alanis Morissette. Thank you. Winning the FME. Obviously excited about Taking it. Taking the FME, yes. Good for her. <laughs> this category, Robin. Yes. <laughs> Best berating of an employee by Howard. Now, um, our first nominee is Ralph. This is me yelling at Ralph for not being on top of things. Okay? All right. You ready? Who will win the FME? I get a call from Ralph. Got to talk to me. Something very important. I say, yeah, Ralph. What is it, Ralph? You know, uh, that picture. I don't know. That one you're using on the cover. I don't know if that's the right picture. Uh. I said, I said, what are you, a broken record? I said, where were you for two weeks? Is this a recording? Where? I said, then I got mad. I said, Ralph, I'm not interested in your opinion anymore. You had two weeks to dig out this picture. Where were you? So then, he, you know what he says? Well, Gary... Uh, he didn't take the, you know, he, he said it was too late. 
See, wait a second. So Did I tell you not to include Gary in this decision? Did I tell you to bring me the picture? Uh, Did I tell you to? If you got a picture, bring it to me and let me see it. Meanwhile, you didn't bring it to Gary for two weeks. Pop, pop, didn't bring pop, it to pop. me for two weeks. Didn't bring it. Gary. And this is this guy's modus operandi. You know how I'll prove it to you? I had Ratso call everyone from the show for a quote. I uh -huh. needed a quote from everyone. I said, would you interview everyone for me and get a quote from them? Calls Ralph. I will sit down and come up with a quote. Okay? Some, something about me. Ask him a question about me. Two weeks went by. I said, Ratso, where's Ralph's quote? Oh, he never called it in. He's still working on it. Okay. I said, well, too late. Okay. Choosing my words now, this is, choosing his words carefully. So the quote is, doesn't exist. That's this right. is his modus operandi. And this isn't called the troublemaker. This yeah. is somebody who gives you grief. I should get the FME. Why should Ralph get it? Well, I thought maybe you were nominated in this category, but you seem to be get the award seems to be going to the person you're promoting. Yeah. I'm going to take the awards. Screw everyone else. This is me yelling at Stutter and John for screening calls wrong. Doesn't know how to do it right, even though I've trained him 900 times. You're a total jinx and a moron. You know what? That wacky That's guy who stupid. said you don't know why he came on? He's searching around for an implant for his brain. Yeah. Uh, that'll help. But why did guys. you slip me a note so because, I know? Because I, I was writing it out, but when you picked it up for him. God. Douchebag, that guy's been on hold for at least five minutes. I've been watching you do the phone. Yeah, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm, you know what? The guy on the phone, the last call was right. I can't have someone screen the calls because no. I've got a moron screening the call. The last call I thought was good because because he. It had, was good, but what do I know? You got to give me a note. I'm writing them down. You're not man. you're not you're not bright enough. You had that guy on hold for five minutes. I stalled for five minutes during the Ponce de la phone phone calls, waiting for you to slip me a note. You didn't. I, I you're was, a total no, I was adult. Screening, you know what? You're a loser. You're, you're a, a loser. You're a loser. Your girlfriend's you're pregnant, and you're a you're loser. You're a loser. Yeah? You're a loser. Goodbye. Fine. Leave the Fine. show, then, if I'm a loser. Go work for some winner. Right. Yeah, jackass. Wow. He said you're a loser? He called me a loser? When he's a loser? <laughs> and this is me yelling at Ralph for showing pictures from my book around. My book, my book, Miss America, was coming out, and he took my pictures and showed them to people at a bar trying to get laid. Oh, I trusted him with them. What are you running around with my pictures for? Give me, give me that. Give me that. Give me it. It's no longer yours. What's the matter with you? What are you running around with it? You want, you want the guy from Marvel's name is. You what are you walking around with my? How did you get a hold of this? How did you get this? What do you mean? How did, how did you get my pictures from my book? I'm. I, I made the pictures. No, I'm you didn't. No, no, you didn't make the mean? pictures. I made the pictures. Don't walk around with pictures from my I'm book. Not showing anybody. You just came in here and showed everybody. I didn't. Who did I show? You're a jackass. Who did I show? What are you yelling at get me out, for? Get out of here. What, get what? out. Get out. I didn't show anybody. What's your problem? Why are you I'm freaking out? Book. I'm waiting until the book comes out so people can have a reaction to things. Get out of here. I'm, why are you freaking out? Get out of here. Get out. What's the matter with get, you? get out. That's what's the matter with me. I'm doing a radio program. You're getting all nutty, man. That's right. Write down the guy's name and keep it in your purse. Hmm. Am I a hard guy to work for? I just demand excellence, Robin. I demand common sense. You know, Ralph hasn't been around in months, and no one's missed him. Oh, I miss him when I see him, <laughs> but only when I see him. All right. I don't miss him when he's not here. Well, the winner is Ralph. Wait a minute. There had to be another nomination in no, that that's category. No, that's it. He won. Wait a minute. The berating he got. Yeah. When he... Ordered condoms for you. Oh. Why wasn't that in there? Gary, why is the condom thing not in there? I, I listened to that, mm -hmm. but you didn't yell as much, and Ralph didn't even respond. You couldn't even fight back. I mean, he was like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it was a joke. That was the but, worst. But you, didn't, you didn't yell as bad as you yelled in his last place. Really? All right, make your acceptance speech, you know. <laughs> I'd like to thank you for being totally irrational. Right. I, I don't know. Uh, as always, I'd like to thank God and, and my mom. All right. And, priest, priest. and the priest who raped you. And, and the priest who tried to rape me. Yeah, well, that's debatable. <laughs> All right. Thank you. What a nitwit. Thanks for just joining us. We're here for the uh, FMEs. It's exciting. Joan Rivers just came by on the FMEs, which was really nice. Yes, you're sitting right out in the audience, came out and talked to us. Yeah, other big stars will be joining us during the FMEs, but let's face it, what really is the star of this show, Robin, is the celebrities and what awards they win and their That's acceptance right. speeches. What is our next category? What was that, Robin? What is our next category? Yes, let's get to the category. Robin, your gown is beautiful, by oh, the way. Thank you. I can't believe you really wear a gown to this. Well, 
It's a big award show. I like to dress up. What's our next category, Fa Fa Fo Hi? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And he's sorry once again. And I'm sorry again. We have a microphone problem. I can't get that one on. You're going to have to try that. Uh, a personal favorite of mine. Best reason to keep Gary. Best reason to keep... Why are we doing that? Oh, we can, We just got... I'm not doing that one. You're well, doing the wrong category. Well, we, we, yeah, I need Well, there he goes. Screwing up as you said he would. All right. This is an exciting category. This is best trashing by a celebrity. Of another celebrity. Yes. Oh, this okay. is when... Scott, stay out of the room until the commercial. Come out of here. He's, he's walking back and forth. He sees the microphone problem. He's going to fix it while I'm on the air. Come in during the commercials and fix it. Shh. Let's see. Um, now, this is when celebrities have been on our show and they have trashed other celebrities. Yes. That's right. And, by the way, our first nominee is Robert Wool trashing Jay Leno. Okay. Jay Leno wouldn't allow uh, Robert Wool on the show. Robert Wool called him at his house and called Jay at his house. And Robert was very, very upset when Jay um, gave him the brush off. Well, Jay's people then called back and gave him a brush. Yep. Robert Wool, uh, Robert Wool producer. Look, my point is, and I really do mean this, the idea that you called the guy at home, it was handled improperly and everything, but the guy, you don't have to call. If people turn you down on the design show, you just don't go on, that's all. Don't start making a federal case. I'm going to call Jay. There must be a no, misunderstanding. No, 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 he didn't no, want you on. That wasn't the point. Jay knew you called. No. He didn't want you on the show. No, the point was, I called him, I said, Jay, if there's a problem, what I said is, if there's a problem. There was a I problem. I like to He would, didn't want to tell you. Well, then he's a snake. He's got no No, balls. he's not. He didn't want to sit and tell you that your career is not important enough to be on The Tonight Show. Oh, that's, that's okay. I, I can take that. You can take that? Sure. You want Jay to sit and tell you. Who is Jay to tell you your career is not important enough to that's be on The Tonight fine. Show? That's fine. Anybody can take it. I got more. I got, at least I have a backbone. Somebody can tell me that. All right, Robert Wool. <laughs> very, very worked up. Our next celebrity in this category is David Lee Roth as he trashes Van Halen, uh, Sammy Hagar and Van Halen. His former band. Yeah, David Lee Roth was in the band Van Halen. He uh, broke up with those guys, and now he was here to trash them. Well, the reason that I left Van Halen wasn't based on money at all. It was a completely artistic thing. It was not. Well, no, I'll say it for the first time here ever right. on a radio anywhere. And I've tried to be a gentleman, you know, and do right. it with dignity and so forth. But the reason that I left Van Halen is because Edward and Alex Van Halen were completely f***ed. Up on drugs. Well, wait a second. Oh. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. Now, wait a second. I had to, don't wait say that without minute. using well, the F word. You can't use that word. Well, particular. you know, I want it to be sound just as serious as it actually was. Now, no, you got, said the reason you left Van Halen was why? Without using the F word. It was because they were completely stoned all the time. Right. How do you make music with somebody who has a hangover or is copying a buzz on a regular basis? And then you've got, like, Sammy Hagar, who at best is a mediocre talent. Oh. You know? okay. And Sammy would sell the property rights to his butt to get fame, to right. get noise, because he was a complete failure until he got with the Van Halen bus. True. And he does all the talking. Right. And you've got somebody who's enfeebled himself with dope and alcohol who's right. going to go along with the situation. Yes. But you know what, Howard? There is a God. <laughs> all right. Well, that wow. was a bitter performance. But uh, our third nominee, you know, you think, wow, that's, these are great so far. Our third nominee is the uh, wonderful Mr. T as he screams about Richard Belzer, the comedian. Okay. As you know, Richard Belzer took Mr. T to uh, court. Because Mr. T dropped Belzer on his head. Actually, Mr. T didn't even drop Belzer no, on his head. he was just there. He was just there. So Mr. T was very, very upset with Richard Belzer, and here's what happened. Like, Have so you, you been sued by white guys? Oh, yeah, you know your buddy. Who? Richard Belzer. He sued you? <laughs> you know, he's going to your show and oh, talk about right. you. You know, that's right. 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 I'm telling you people, Logan. I brought it up because I knew that was, I knew that was tickling in, in, in Howard Mine. No, I you forgot know. about it. See, here's what happened. 1985, <laughs> 1985, we was getting ready for WrestleMania. So we get on his show, his clown show. He didn't have other audience about 15 people. <laughs> so we come to do his show. First, he lied to me. I said, we did seven shows. We did Good Morning America, all the major shows. You know what I mean? Right, right. Yeah, you and Hulk Hogan. Yeah, so they begged us to get on the show. I said, oh, I'm tired, man. I did seven shows. I, got, I said, I got to get the training, get ready for Roddy Piper and Ornar for WrestleMania Mass Square Garden. Right. So they said, one more show, Mr. T. So they know I like kids. So they lied to me and told me there were 25 children in a wheelchair there. Right. They lied. That pissed me off. Right. Never lied to me about kids in wheelchair. Right. So I come to the show. There was not one kid in the wheelchair. He had his yuppie, scuppy friends there. Then he get on the show, try to make fun of wrestling. Then Hulk Hogan come on. He said, Hulk Hogan, put me in a, a wrestling hole. I said, Hulk Hogan, don't put the chump in nothing. Right. Don't touch him. 
Right. So he said, now shut up, Mr. T. Come on, Hulk Hogan. Put me in the wrestling hole. Hulk Hogan put the chump in the wrestling hole. A front front facial lock. The clown hit the floor. <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, then so he, they sued, sued me, Hulk Hogan, and WWF. You know, I didn't touch the guy. If I didn't touch him, like I said, dead men don't tell. You know, so if I put my hands on somebody, right. he'd be in a coma now. <laughs> All right. Mr. T clocking in with a great performance there. Who's going to win, Robin? We don't know. Let me open up the envelope. Boy, is it tough. Robin, you open the envelope. All right. I'll read the result. You you know how the celebrities trade. Right, I'll open it and you read. Okay. Come on, Robin, do it already. It's a envelope. What are you doing? I can't rip it open. Give me that, damn it. <laughs> Oh, there, here, that's how you do it. Oh, I'm sorry. The winner I is... Make it neat. Oh, I knew it. Mr. T oh, taking it this year. Robbing David Lee Roth. I thought, thought for sure David Lee Roth was going to win. Mr. T, producer, let's get right to our phone. Mr. T, is that you? Hey, 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 hey. Oh, oh, it's Mr. T to all my friends and relatives. Wow, man. You won the award. You won the uh, coveted FME this year. Best uh, trash it. Hey, man, wow, what can I say? I'm, I tell you, it's, it's meant to be 93. I'm finally free. Right. This is my second coming. You know, 10 years ago, it was the AP rocking all that stuff or whatnot. Now all the lawsuits is out the way, you know. Right. The most, the most scrapes with the trees, no more problems. With the neighbors, you know, the <laughs> alimony paid, the child support is in the mail, you know. And right. hey, man, this is it. We just pushing Mr. T to T for us. I'm just sitting here reading the third issue right now. I'm going to send you one, brother. You know, you'll get one too, Rob. The, the Mr. T know. comic book? Uh, yeah, of course, man. The hottest in the land. Now, the school starts back here in Chicago. We're going to take it in the public school. Tell, tell kids to stay in school and don't be a fool. Right. Read, read. Hey, Mr. T, Mr. Yes, T, uh, go ahead. Thank whoever you want to thank. This is after all. All, all award, award show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First of all, you know, you know, you know. For, I just want to thank God. You right. Know, there you go. And I thank God that covers everybody else. You right. Know what right. Mean? You know, and, and, I, and I don't want to make fun of nobody. I'm just having the time of my life. Do you, you want to thank so your wrong. agent? Huh? Do you want to thank your agent? No, no, no. I thank Who God that it's done, man. Who booked and you? I want to thank my dog. Suicide, pesticide, genocide, and danger, and homicide. They doing a good job protecting my mama. You know, we still ain't found her yet. Well. She, well she Went looking for some coffee. I think she was in the wine cellar in that big old house. You know what I mean? I, I know what you mean. I know what you're saying. So, listen, congratulations on the yeah, win. Thank you, man. And my mother, thank you. You know, she's down there so well. And my kids, all my children, you know. You know, uh, I, 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 see, I just want to thank, I want to thank Hollywood. Thank the 18. Thank Rocky Balboa. Right. Thank Hulk Hogan because he helped me beat the guys. Right. I want to thank Brother Belzer, you know. And Belzer got you the award after yeah, all. Yeah, yeah, he did, you know. And, uh, Would you like to thank Michael Jackson? Oh, oh, yeah, we got the brothers got the secret, Michael. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I don't know what anybody else say. I want you to put me on coat like you take me and say, Michael Jackson, I'm with Michael Jackson. Until the brother is a, until the brother is accused or whatnot. Even they gave the crooked cops cool. You know, they did some a white guy named Cool, Sergeant Cool. They gave him a trial to handle. We seen him beating Rodney King. You know what I mean? So what you saying? Trial. Even when he gave these here, these these here, these color guys. You know, they on trial. I don't know why they caught me. Yeah, brother Howard, you know. So you say you see it as a racial... Oh, this is very important, Howard. You need to quote me this here, you know. This here, you know, you're going to use it later. If me as a black man, if I can see videotape and see Rodney King being beat, you know, and say the cops is wrong, I should also see the videotape or see the brothers, you know, I just say not brothers, the color guys beating Denny and say it's wrong. You know what I mean? Where's the black leaders? Where's the people hollering for that? You see what I mean? So you're saying give Michael a trial even though he's guilty? You know, I ain't saying Michael's guilty. Don't say that, brother Howard, you know? <laughs> All right. You know, if, if, if we're not gonna, if we're not gonna castrate these here priests that were molesting the children, you know what I mean? I understand. Don't do no stuff about Michael. You're just so you up. see it as a racial you know, thing. What do you say? You see it as a racial thing that the white man is trying to bring the black man oh, down. Oh, 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 well, no, you know how I don't get in the ditch, you know. No. But I know it's pretty rough, you know how. You know, don't go to vacation in Florida. Right. You know, they might mistake you for a tourist. <laughs> I don't you know think so. Mean? I don't think I'm gonna be going there. But no, how? Here's a tip for all the people you know. Cause know something I'm gonna see. See, I've been telling people for years. There's a problem boiling in the black community. See, when the problem boils over in the black community, then it spreads out to the next community. Right. And that's what happens when they don't take care of the problem. You know, and that's what I'm saying. I'm mean, sure I'm sad to see anybody murder a black guy get murdered. Yeah, I was just come from L.A., Brother Howard. It was a lady, she, two guys followed her home and shot her. 
I think they jump out with extra police for a nation. It's a hell of an police. acceptance you speech, Robin. You know, really? it's my how did he get in political? You know how sometimes police, people get political in the acceptance speeches? It's like it's Marlon Brando, Brando yeah. when the uh, yeah. Indian woman came out. Like we see it. He's taking this as a forum. Well, let me you tell you know? something. You, many, over the years we've been doing this FME show, uh, m some people do choose to make this a political speech. Yeah, you know, you know, Mr. T, all I got to make my statement. Remember, remember, remember when, 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 when my, man, my brother, my brother, the Godfather, the Godfather. What was the uh, Indian woman? When he received the Sashi word, Littlefeather. He Sashi Littlefeather. I mean, I'm sorry, I mispronounced the name. Or That's what Mr. T's was. talking about now. Sasheen Littlefeather. You know, when you got a platform, you got to use it. Sasheen. You lose it. You well, know, and you know, I never met a microphone I didn't like. Well, let me you tell know, you something. I know I compete with Don King and David E. Wrong, and I won, man. You won. Man, Con that's something, man. Congratulations. Congratulations to you. I should not train. I'm going to be running next year. Will I be up again next year? Yes, you will. You're going to be up for uh, world's longest acceptance speech. <laughs> All right, good, good. All right. <laughs> Very good, Mr. T. Thank you, Howard. Thank you. Thank you, Robin. You're hey, Robin, you have been rumors about me and you. I just tell people, keep talking. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. I love you, Robin. I love you, uh, Mr. T, go. And Howard, happy. New Year. Is it, is it that time? Not for me, no. <laughs> no, I, I stick to January. No, no, January 1st is my New Year. <laughs> I don't. I get confused by too many. Half and half? Yeah, half and half. Oh, man, man, wow, that's tough. Hey, Mr. T, go, go chop down a few trees and annoy your neighbors. <laughs> no, no, I need it. I'm going to come in your neighborhood, man. <laughs> no, no, you're not. I'm going to bring some brothers with me. Uh, Mr. T, uh, thank hey, you. Howard, thank you for the time. Bro. Thank I you so much, it. Mr. T. Hey, say hi to my mama. Hey, hello, Mama. All right, thank you. All right, bye-bye. All right, bye-bye. That's Mr. Robin. T. God bless you, Mr. All right, thanks, yeah. everybody, over there. Ooh, ooh. You know what's great about award show, Robin? People really do get excited when they win. And there he is, Mr. T, coming out politically for the Michael Jackson uh, trial, saying that, hey, let's, let's, let's say... Let's give Michael a trial let's, before we do this. Before we hang him. All right. <laughs> Very good. Oh, well, that was exciting, Robin. Wow. Boy, oh, boy, we got a lot he more. on fire? I've never seen anybody so excited to get an FM. I don't think you've ever won before, Robin, so you don't know the excitement I of winning an FM. Yeah. I've won about seven so far, so I know so how he you feels. Know. Yeah. yeah. I got political one year. <laughs> I started screaming. <laughs> Get to a category because that's what it's really all about. Yeah, not everybody people. wants to know who the next winner is going to be. Most bizarre moment of the friggin' year. First of all, our first nominee, underdog lady, returns to the show on the phone but refuses to talk. You get me two hundred fifty thousand dollars, I do it right. Hmm. What was that? I don't know. It's not queued up right. <laughs> Folks, a technical problem. You know how these things go when you're doing things live. Any second now. No, it's not going to happen. No, it's not? Yeah, we're, we're, oh, we're no. stuck. All right, let's see if I can make it happen. Underdog lady returns to the show on the phone but won't talk. Your dog, can you tap once if you were there? All right, she is there. Okay. She, oh, she's doing her appearances and people are still, like, screaming at her. She's doing a comedy act and people don't realize that. Oh, what? Well, oh. Wait a second. Underdog, one tap for yes if it's a comedy act, two taps for no. It's, See, not. it's not. People are saying to her that oh. it's a comedy act. That's what it was. Oh, Suzanne, could you help me here? Because I'm getting this all screwed up, Suzanne. I don't think that people are harassing about Stern and they are still doing it. Oh, what, what do they say about Stern? Ever since. I was on Howard Stern's TV program and was victimized him. The public has never stopped bothering me about him by mentioning his name. But why is that bad? Now, they've been doing that for 10 years. I'm sick and tired of it. Mentioning Howard Stern's name is a constant thorn in my side because you victimized me 10 years ago. You can't blame me for being... Hello? Oh, oh, hello? Is she still there? I think oh. that wasn't a tap. That was a hang-up. <laughs> Our second nominee is Scott the Engineer when he says he'll take anal for $250,000. You get me $250,000, I do it right here on the floor. Really? Oh! That's right. Oh! Right. And you can turn this you know guy what? down. For $250,000, you'd go two minutes. That's right. You You'll will have anal sex minutes. with a man here in this studio. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I will get it. I want to see that. Make you gay. Howard, he's got to yeah. do it in the ring like a boxing match. <laughs> You're gay. I got to get in shape first. Not, do you believe him? I, I, I don't. I'm shocked. That? I got to practice. I mean, I know Scott really well, and Scott does not have a gay bone in his body. You know, we've just Who knows? The Sunni no, will. No, no, he's <laughs> Mind blowing. Our third nominee is Artie Lang. Artie freaks out during his queer eye makeover in most bizarre moment of the friggin' year. Speaking of gay guys, let's f Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Woo! Which one of you gay guys wants to f <laughs> Which one doesn't? I got enough liquor in me to f a gay guy. <laughs> None of these gay guys have the balls to f me. How about queer eye f a straight guy. Yeah, they don't have the balls for that, Bravo, do they? I'm an ugly straight guy, but they won't f me. They'll f some, me too, sir. They'll t no, they'll f no. some Ben Affleck looking f Okay. Who wants to f a real guy? You guys have fun. Play f right here. We're taking oh. numbers. Who's next? Well, Who's next? I'll make a list. Hey, you need some more Jack or something over there? <laughs> Get me some more Jack and I'll put this on. You can pretend I married you, you f***. <laughs> we'll have a little, little House in the Prairie wedding. It'll be yeah. fantastic. This is for me. Cut out a hole for my ass and f*** me. Wow. How acidic. Okay. Well, uh, that's Artie. Our uh, three nominees, Underdog Lady, Scott the Engineer, and Artie freaking out during his Queer Eye makeover. Let's see who wins. What do they say on the panel this year? All right, the FME goes to, and I have to agree, as bizarre as Underdog Lady is and Artie. It's got to be Scott. Yeah, I mean, right? I mean, for $250,000, he's going to have anal sex for that two minutes. That was amazing. It's Scott the Engineer accepting the FME. The most bizarre moment, Scott the Engineer. Hi, Scott. Hey, this is an honor. First of all, I'd like to thank God. You thank God you didn't do it. I saved you. Yes, exactly. <laughs> thank God somebody came to their senses. Well, you were all set to do the $250,000 channel challenge. You were going to yeah. have anal sex from... Uh, we were going to try and get one of the biggest porn stars out there. I know. Lexington Steel. Lexington Steel, who is uh, 13 inches. And he was going to deliver the anal to you. Yeah, well, I couldn't do it. But see, the conversation in the office, Howard, has been not that Scott didn't want to do it, but that people told him it wouldn't be a good idea. But Scott himself would he still... He would have gone... He's still up yeah. for it. Oh, he, he would do now? it. I guess if I was single and didn't have any responsibilities right. and things <laughs> well, like that. Well, you have a wife and a son who right. were embarrassed right. by it. Yeah. And but they originally endorsed you doing yeah, it. Yeah, what happened? We originally got the go-ahead. Well, the money was enticing, you know? So, right. But, which I still can use some money, but I'll have to find other ways to get it. Would you take anal to get your son a record deal <laughs> with a legitimate record company? No. No? No. No? No, no I, want him, no, I want him to get a deal on his talent, not just because I'm doing something stupid. Well, you know as well as I do that uh, sometimes it's who you know, not not uh, what you know. Yeah. I, well, obviously, but I think he's got the talent, and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll get there. All right, so you, so the two hundred fifty thousand dollar anal situation was killed. We were going to do it on pay per view, right? Uh, it was well, killed. that wasn't the original deal. That's that's also another thing that. Well, you that, seem to agree to that, it. That, no, no, because no, that's that, the only way I could raise the two hundred fifty thousand. Had to get the money. Something. You were all no, sad. That was the thing that blew out of proportion. You know, it was, <laughs> it was it was here in a room, and then all of a sudden it's on pay per view. Well, how do you different. expect me to make the money? Yeah. Oh, the pay per view turned him off. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, it didn't. <laughs> he was down with it the whole way. <laughs> this. There's been all sorts of speculation. Like, do you like you couldn't do this, right? And would you agree to do something you've never done before? Like, in other words, like you don't even know if you could handle it, right? So why or, would you agree to it? I like that Scott would want a more intimate environment yes. for his anal, like something more private yeah, and cozy, I don't romantic. Want to do it in front of yeah. the world. It just yeah. does. Had to be romantic. Our negotiation broke down over the merchandising. Scott wanted all the anal fun <laughs> merchandising we were going to sell. What do you want to do me? What is it, Casey? I gotta ask Scott, for one hundred thousand, wow. would you do oral? Oh no! <laughs> oh no! No. What? Now you say that because your wife won't let you. No. What if I upped your two hundred fifty thousand no. no, dollars to happening. half a million dollars? It's not happening. Half a million dollars. It's not happening. For you to take anal on pay per view. It's not happening. Are you Scott. sure? 
It's I'm making this offer it's, now. No, it's not happening. College Half paid for. a million dollars. <laughs> it's not happening. Half a million, five hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> not happening. You know you want it. <laughs> I want the money. Yeah, I don't want the uh, anal. How about ten thousand to use your hand on Benji? No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, look, look at him acting all disgusted because right. you can't now, do it. He was here. All right. Ready to lay down. Finish your speech, uh, Mr. Macho. Oh yeah, I mean you know. Is that it? You're done. That's my speech. Okay. Yeah. All right. Congratulations, <laughs> Scott, the engineer. In true thank boring you. fashion, you get the worst speech. I'd like to thank the Academy. All right, there you go. Scott, the engineer, who agreed to take anal for two hundred fifty thousand dollars and then backed out, so to speak, after his wife and son decided it might be embarrassing. Wow. Man. Okay. There's a man who um, is ready to accept his FME. Uh, first, I want to play the tribute. Yes. This is a man who's distinguished himself all year long in terms of comedy on our this show. This is a Lifetime Achievement Award, I think, isn't it? Yeah. What did I call it? You were just saying for this year. This is for a body of work yes. over a number of years on this show. This man competes with no other. Uh, we'll give you a little example of his work. This man's name is Wood Yee. <laughs> Wood Yee. And we uh, are about to bestow upon him the Lifetime Achievement Award. Listen to some of his accomplishments. The Howard Stern Show honors Wood Yee, FME nominee. Wood Yee, a musical talent the likes of which the world has seldom seen. Let the dogs out. Who, 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 I love this song. <laughs> I do. I really love it. Who My let the you. dogs out? Who, 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 who? Who let the dogs out? Who, 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 who? Would ye? Extraordinary family man. Wow, you brought your whole damn family. Hi, Howard. I see that the uh, son you had with Mia Farrow is here, too. I hardly know him. So would you explain something to me? Your, your, your son is a genius, and he's already gone to college, even though he's just 11 years old. Yes, he is quite bright for a half-Jew. Now, I believe you named your son Satchel, but Mia changed his name to Shamus. How are you, Shamus? I might be a genius, but I can't figure it out. Pop, is Sun Yi my mother or my sister? Son, our family tree is shaped like a donut. I guess Sun Yi, your wife, is Shamus' stepmom and also Shamus' sister. What's the difference? She's a fine, tight, hot little piece of ass. Sun Yi, fetch me a Kleenex and make me need it. Don't talk like that about my mother or whatever the hell she is to me. Would you? I'm asking you to watch your language around your son, okay? I'm going to nail that piece of tail tonight. In front of your son? Of course. At this point, what am I going to do to screw him up? Who would ever think that a man as tender as Wood Yee would be able to belt out a sensationally gritty version of this Ricky Martin classic? You're a very chatty broad. She's into new sensations, new kicks and candlelight. She's got a new addiction for every day and night. She'll make you take your clothes off, go dancing in the rain. She'll make you live a crazy life to take away your pain Like a bullet in your brain Come on Upside, inside, out Living la vita loca She'll push and pull you down Living la vita loca Her lips are devil red Her skin's the color of mocha She'll wear you out Living la vita loca Living Loca. She's living Loca. But Wood Yee's sensitive side comes out when he talks to a lovely woman. Your skirt is short. Do I say duck sauce? <laughs> Do you mind doing my laundry after I bukkake you? <laughs> Wood Yee, hopeless romantic. I want to cut off your arms and legs and stuff you in a bento box. <laughs> You hear that? That is the sound of my penis banging against my zipper. All right, easy with that one. You use that one already, already. Boy, you. Yeah, you have a pickup line. <laughs> You're impossible. Would ye, a man who knows who he is and is proud of it. My name is... My name is... My name is... Would ye... My name is... My name is... My name is... Would ye... Would ye, a proud nominee for a Howard Stern Show FME because... My foot smell like cabbage. Well, here he is to accept 
receiving the honorary FME. Well, he's receiving a standing ovation as well he should. He steps up to the microphone and uh, go ahead, Woody, make your speech. Winning the FME Lifetime Achievement Award is the second biggest dream come true in my life. The first biggest dream come true was banging my beautiful Sun Yi. I'd also like to thank the beautiful ladies of the House of Oriental Massage in Newark, New Jersey, right. especially my Hoon Flower, who taught me a happy ending doesn't have to be in the movies. Right. I know a lot of people are scared about what's going on with the terrorist attacks in all, but I want all my fans to know that I'm okay. Being here this morning and going on with my life makes me a hero. Right. right. This is a great award. Yes. I can't wait to invade Sun Yi's bad place with this award. Okay. I would like to be serious about this. Thank you. In all seriousness, Sun Yi is the love of my life. Right. God created her to carry my DNA in her mouth. Oh. Right. <laughs> oh, that would be. Is it? Thank you, Woody. There you go. He's leaving. You know, I mean, the audience was so willing to accept him, and, and that speech just made them all sing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello? Yeah. Hey, I'm on the air. I want to introduce my beautiful co-hostess, Robin Quivers, to all of you. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> good, evening. Well, good morning. Good morning. What, what time do we hold this contest? Good morning, Robin. As a matter of fact, you look beautiful uh, in your gown. Well, I'm dressed for you. Who is that, Versace? <laughs> what is that? You see a bunch of pens with Versace. Wow, fantastic outfit. You know, everybody, it's time for my big song, and I, uh, every year I do a little song here at the FMEs. Hello, everyone. Hi. Uh, just saying hi to some of the famous people oh, in our audience. Yes, you, you're hobnobbing. I'll be introducing. The in the audience. I'll be introducing them a little bit later on. But uh, I do want to do my song, Robin. If you will, uh, I, I would like you on stage with me while I sing. I will sing to you're you. Singing to me. Well, why not? I have nothing better to do. Ooh, I like it. I'm not as nervous when I sing to you, my dear. <laughs> All right. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's my. It's not a duet. <laughs> The FMEs are on the air. That moron Ralph screwed up my hair. My stupid staff, I wish were dead. I hate them all, especially Fred. <laughs> Baba Booey is hapless and dull. He stares at me like a friggin' wall. Jackie Martling's one pain in my butt. I can't wait until my contract is up. Tom, my boss, is one dumb cluck. An empty head boy, does he suck? I wish he'd get hit by a garbage truck. But I never have the luck. Ho, 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 Robin, she has two big lumps. I'd kill to see those fleshy bumps before my career is laid to rest. Robin, please show me that chest. The FCC, they give me crap when I discuss what's in my lap. I can't say penis, I can't say cash. Or will it cost one million in cash? Let's get on with this real big show. I wish I just could go friggin' home. I can't take the nonsense anymore. Someone get me a whore. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know what happened at the end there. Oh, come on. Yeah, I love singing. Boy, that was great singing, huh? Can you actually hear the beat when the music's playing? <laughs> oh, come on. That wasn't easy. It was a first run. I didn't even have any rehearsal time. I was busy writing a book. <laughs> This is uh, an award that I'm uh, interested in because I love sexuality. This was the best celebrity confession on how they lost their virginity. So many celebrities come on here and talk in an open and honest way because the show brings that out in them. 
Other celebrities come on here and they're guarded, but uh, we try to bring out the best. Our first nominee is Willie Nelson, who was quite blunt and told us exactly how he lost his virginity. Willie Nelson, producer. How old were you when you first got laid? Fifteen? You know, I went six years without any at all. Six years old you got it? No. From the time, yeah. I went six years without any. That was from the time I was born. Like six years old. Are you serious? You lost your virginity at six? Yeah. Are you kidding me? I'll be honest. Is that true? I think so. I'm not counting farm animals. I'm counting oh, right. the We're first woman. Cultivators. Yeah. Cultivators. <laughs> Cultivators. I'm talking about the first time you got laid was six years old. What a blessed life. And it wasn't like your grandmother or something, right? I don't think so. Oh. No. No. <laughs> You mean it was another another little girl, little girl? like a little yeah, girl? It was someone of the opposite sex. How did you know how to do it at six? Well, I ask her, are you are the opposite sex, or am I? <laughs> <laughs> You're telling me you knew what to do at six. I don't think you have to go to school oh, for that. Oh, I did. Oh, in Isn't China, really? they you didn't know what problem. to do. Oh, I, I at six years old, I'd have no I, no clue what to do. A lot of times, it happens without you knowing what you're doing. Really? Now try and remember back, because this is a while ago. She didn't go like. <laughs> <laughs> All right, very good, very honest. Six years old, he claims. Six, I still don't believe Neither do I. Our next uh, celebrity nominee is Larry Matthews. Do you remember who Larry Matthews is? Is he the kid from, he's a kid from a TV show. Which one? Which one? Take a guess. Dick Van Dyke. That is correct. Larry Matthews is of Dick Van Dyke. He played little Rusty. Richie. Richie. <laughs> you know. You know. Rusty was on the Danny Thomas show. Uh, Larry Matthews, um, producer. I was uh, 14, 13 years old. The Indians who all were natives there who worked at the park and they were all like, you know, alcoholics and stuff. Well, of course. <laughs> you don't have to tell us that. We know that. And they said they were, well, I went to a still. They took me out to the still, for God's sakes. I'm 13 years old. Go, they were all excited on, that it was you, right? Still. Yeah, it's, it's Richie. Let's take You still look like little Richie from the... Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. And uh, and they grabbed this 18-year-old, you know, who was with them. And we all went to the, to the still and we got in the back of the car. We were all pretty drunk. And they go, hey, Richie. You ever, you know, been with a woman? And I said, no. I said, well, here, take this 18-year-old. She'll take care of you right there. And An 18-year-old Indian? There we went. Was she hot? Yeah. Wow. Wow. And you were 13? 13. Uh, still, yeah. huh? Ooh. I still, to them, was like progress. That was like the greatest invention on the Indian reservation. <laughs> Science. Science. <laughs> and then they gave you an 18-year-old to have sex with. That's there you go. Good for you, because they were all fans of the Dick Van Dyke show. They were like, hey, we got to get Richie laid. Oh, yeah, we drink to that show. <laughs> Let's get Richie laid. Wow. Larry Matthews, Robin, losing Getting his virginity. Getting a little more believable, 13. Yep. <laughs> Hard to believe Indians were that impressed with us still. <laughs> and my final nominee is Lisa Loring in this category. Lisa Loring, of course, was on uh, The Addams Family. Yes, she played Little Wednesday. Played Little Wednesday, also went on to soap operas. So Lisa Loring losing her virginity. Lisa Loring produced. So how old were you when you lost your virginity? You really want to know? Yeah. <laughs> 13. 13. Yeah. I knew it. Are you Am I right? kidding me? 13? I really? had my first baby before I was 16. Really? Who got you at 13? Jackie Marlowe. <laughs> oh. Now, who got you at 13? My like another... childhood sweetheart. My first daughter's uh, father. Oh, really? And what was he, like 14 or something? No, he was three years old. Tonight. He was 17. So was that a big scandal? Well, I was. he was 18 when we were married, and I just, uh, I was like 15 and a half. Wow. What you... did he do? <laughs> <laughs> what was it? What was well, his job? It was a normal kind of life. Yeah. Wasn't that... Oh, come on. How weird is that? How weird is to that? To be 13 and be getting a, on with a 17-year-old guy. Well, yeah, I didn't guy. like, you know, I didn't like school anymore. Right. You know, but I you were wild. away from 13. From home. You are. Yeah. Wild. He actually took me away from a really br bad crowd of girls who like had me around just because I was pretty and they were older and I was really headed the wrong way. Cause right. He, well, my mom, my mom was an alcoholic. She died when I was about sixteen. Oh, wow. so you were on your own? So, uh, yeah, I just sort of you know did what I wanted. To Who do. was raising you, Grandma? Wolves. <laughs> Wolves. Wolves is right. Well. Oh my goodness. Amazing girl. He took her from a bad crowd of girls and <laughs> slept with her. Slept over there and <laughs> knocked her up. <laughs> I can't believe it. Who wins? I would have thought Lisa Loring won, but it's Larry Matthews for getting getting laid on a drunken Indian reservation. Larry Matthews accepting. A little rich. Larry couldn't be with us in person, so he is, of course, over satellite uh, accepting his okay. FME. Howard? Wow. Tough, Good comp morning. tough competition this year. Willie Nelson got laid at uh, six years old. 
<laughs> you I got, tell you, I, I'm, I'm stunned that I lost to Lisa, that I won over Lisa Loring. I'm sorry, but that's okay. I feel I'm proud. What can I tell you? I'm hey, so proud. The Academy votes in strange ways. You, you had a good story. Don't get me wrong, but uh, Lisa Loring really went through the mill. <laughs> yeah, out of a crowd of bad girls. I like that. You're not kidding. So um, now, um, now, when you were at the Indian Reservation, did the Indians give you uh, alcohol to bring back to Dick Van Dyke? <laughs> Wasn't he a drunk uh, at some point? Nah, you know, the, I don't think they were thinking about that too much. You've got to remember, they couldn't think very far beyond a couple days there or one day. Or <laughs> well, let me uh, let you, go ahead and make your acceptance speech. Go ahead. Well, let, let me just let me say thank you very much. Uh, I, at first, I would I would like to uh, say that I'm honored and pleased to receive such a prestigious award as the FME. Right. It's, uh, hard to, it's hard to listen to you with this voice. We're so used to the little kid, but go ahead. <laughs> let, let me let me try it a little bit, but I said, thank you, thank you, thank you, Daddy. But anyway, right. um, uh, anyway, this is a moment that I'll treasure all my life, I, I must tell you. I, I'd first like to thank the moonshine makers of America right. and the state of North Carolina. Right. Because if it wasn't for the great product that they produced, obviously, then this would not have been possible. Well, hey, congratulations on your FME, I must tell you. Rather unorthodox speech. Oh, maybe it's still going on. Hang on. I, yeah, I, I, so I'd sorry. Like oh, thank thank you. oh, I'm sorry. I, I'd like to thank the Cherokee Indians and the great Cherokee Nation. Yes, and Princess uh, Spread Your Legs, who will get... The 18-year-old princess. Right. Uh, of course, without their inebriation tendencies, this wouldn't have been possible. Right. Um, I'd also like to thank the FM uh, Emmy Academy because right. uh, I, am, I can't tell you how proud I am for honoring me with this award. Between you and me, I'm the FM Academy. And finally, you, Howard, for creating such a great award. Very good. <laughs> and uh, which I so proudly accept today. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, the great Larry Matthews, formerly known as Richie, on the Dick Van Dyke Show, checking in with his first FME. Congratulations. Again, Larry. Thank you, Howard. Thank you all. And uh, again, it's a pleasure, and I'm honored. I appreciate Thank you. this. The great Larry Matthews. Thank Bye -bye. you. Again. That's right. Well, there you have it. What an exciting day. Wow. Well, those are some stories. I read the sheet of paper wrong, though. What? It was a tie. Lisa You're... Loring did tie with Larry Matthews. You're kidding. She's not here to accept? We have someone to accept for her. Oh, really? Who? Gary, quickly. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> what happened? Who? I had no idea. I, I just looked down on the piece of paper. It says Larry Matthews and Lisa Loring. I hear the footsteps. Who is here to accept for Lisa Loring? Uh, hold on a second. Hold on. Uh, <laughs> Someone is coming up from the audience. There's a confusion. Oh, 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 Gary doesn't know who, what the person's name is. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> Accepting for Lisa Loring is Ray Walston, formerly of my favorite Martian. <laughs> Mr. Walston. I have 30 seconds to tell you that I've been waiting 60 years to get up on this stage. Good man. This guy appreciates the FME. And look at the audience. They're going crazy. Look at that. Tom Ciasano's crying. <laughs> Half of this Emmy goes to Fivey Spiegel. How can he do that? <laughs> and we both join in, in thanking FME? the Academy very much. Oh. <laughs> and to all of you in the auditorium, <laughs> and to all of the viewers, <laughs> may I say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> all right. <laughs> well, that was a rousing speech. Hey, very good. It's exciting here. Robin's chests are heaving. Are you crying, Robin? Well, that was very touching. Yes, it was. Well, we want to thank Ray Walston for accepting for Lisa Loring and Five is Thank you. What is it, Baba Blue? That's funny. Do we have time to give away another award? Yes, right of now? course. Oh. Of course we do. Okay. These two are getting on my nerves. Yeah. <laughs> this award is called Best Interaction with the Jackie Puppet. All right. Oh. Best Interaction with the Jackie Puppet. Now, the Jackie Puppet has become quite famous on this show for irritating some of the guests. All right. Now, let's just see. Best Interaction with a Jackie Puppet. Are you ready? Where's the drum roll? Who are the nominees? I'm going to give you the nominees. I'm going to tell you everything. <laughs> she loves this. Robin, her favorite show is the FM. I love the FMEs. It reminds me of all the wonderful incidents on this show where people didn't get along. All right. If you remember, I don't know if you remember, Julie from Playboy Magazine was in here. Beautiful woman. Playmate of the year. Playmate of the year. And the Jackie puppet came on pretty strong okay. with her. Uh, Julie producing. What was Julie's last name? Do we Cellini. know? Julie Cellini. That's correct. 
take it off. Take yeah. it off, please. No. Oh, I'm not asking. Take it off. I demand. He's telling you. He's got a gun. You bitch. Take it off. <laughs> you, you know that's so special. All right, now listen. Boy, Julie, you really are a party girl. Hey. Wait till Sylvester Stallone gets on. Oh, he'll be that Angie Everhart. Yeah. Okay. I never met him. Yeah, you will. If I wore a cotton jacket, you could I have a tampon? Well, please, Jackie Puppet. I'm sorry. He's yelling about tampon. I'm sorry. Have you, do you hang out at the Playboy Mansion and do guys... Uh, oh, I still? worship you. Her lap is an altar. <laughs> wow. She took it pretty rough. She was good. Uh, this is uh, Jackie Puppet harasses Patty Davis Reagan. Oh. Oh, yeah, I remember this one. Remember, she likes to be called Patty Davis. Well, first she, you know, she ran into Jackie outside and right. got harassed, and then she comes in here and the Jackie puppet goes. Uh, Patty Davis Reagan, producer. He said, I can't believe what's going on in there. And they said, what did, do you think was, he said, I'm a born-again Christian. Oh, and really? This is, this is <laughs> revolting to me. And they said, what did you think you were here for? And he said, a hair infomercial. A hair infomercial? <laughs> no. Really? Yeah. Wow. He's going, what is I'm a born-again Christian. And this is so, I'm leaving. You don't even have to pay me. Really? And he left. What is it, Jackie Puppet? Cubic hair infomercial. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he did shave down pretty good for the When you get back, your ass cheeks get flushed, too. Yes. Anyway, Patty. Oh, yes. Oh. So now, oh, Jackie Puppet's <laughs> cracking himself yeah. up. So now that you're... I got a headache. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a one-man show. <laughs> He's I passing. You. What? You love her, right? I got pine cone in my pants. <laughs> <laughs> you wish. All right. Um, very nice. He blindsides them all. If you remember, Richard Lewis was on our show, and he, he defied the Jackie Puppet. He said, actually, he, said he, he actually said to the Jackie Puppet, go ahead and make fun of me. Right. He taunted the Jackie Puppet. The Jackie Puppet was being mild. And the Jackie Puppet was pretty rough. Richard Lewis producing. Can you do Jackie Puppet for me? Put me down. Dude, kill me. Destroy me. I'm a, I'm a really, destroy me. Go ahead, Jackie Puppet. What's the talk to a puppet? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's funny. He's only good when he talks through leather. Let him talk to the puppet. Say hi, Jackie Puppet. Is that it? Nice. Hi, husband. Sorry, I don't hold talk on to with people. That bull crap Secondary left. anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hold on. You can't talk to house. Secondary like anxiety with delusions of persecution. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted the puppet. Here's the puppet. He's going to point that. He's going to point out everything about you. Let me ask you a question. How many days out of a week are he have bad days like this? Like once every two out of seven? He's, he's a brilliant guy. He's very brilliant. Right, I've but, seen your new show. All right, I don't have one yet. Anything but a career. <laughs> oh, God, you're killing me. I'm out of here. <laughs> you, you, you're getting taunted by a puppet. You're going to let him get away with that? <laughs> Go pick some movie scripts. Out <laughs> 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 oh, of oh, material since 1979. He don't suck. You're watching. It's funny. Come on. Put me down. Right as Richard... Uh, <laughs> He's literally fighting with a puppet. <laughs> that was funny. What's funny about that is too, like it's like the guy who fought Mike Tyson, like you know, taunting Mike Tyson. Yeah. Come on, punch me, punch me. <laughs> All right, I'll punch you. And then, he, and then Richard Lewis ran out. <laughs> Everyone thinks they could take on the Jackie Puppet. You know, the Jackie Puppet was very rough on Conan O'Brien, which I resented. I mean, really. I couldn't... Uh, you know what? I knew this had to be nominated. Conan came in, and the Jackie Puppet really wailed yeah. on him. It, Conan O'Brien producing. So, so I've never had, actually. Bargaining That's very producing. silly, yeah. you got to wait a while. Once you get it in... The I'm show a young punk, yeah. Right, and once the know. show gets more established, then you'll sock it to him for more money. <laughs> yeah. All right. Then I'll bring you in, and you'll negotiate. you still got time to get out before they crack down on welfare. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> He gets a good one and he gets carried away. He always goes. Listen, he'll laugh at himself now for an hour. Listen to him over there. Oh. Hey, you know how you get big ratings down south? Yeah, how's that? You lynch a Negro. Why did he do that? That's You know, you had the crowd. You know, you were doing well. Why didn't you just. He always he always self destructs. Do you think the girlfriend will stay with you if you do lose the TV show? Uh, or does she go so with the show? To say. Yeah, of course she would. Yeah. She, you think she'd stay? Yeah. <laughs> I'll still have a lot of money. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's call her. Yeah. yeah. How long right. has this been going on? Uh, I don't know. Two years? 
Oh, no, no. About nine months or something. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, he dumped the L.A. girl, remember? Oh, you did? Oh, that's right. No, I, I can't keep her. track of her. A womanizer. Hey, Colin, when you go down in the ratings, does your girlfriend get drier? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, tasteless. 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 <laughs> well, that's a tough category, isn't it? Well, let's open up the envelope and see who won. Well, I know who sounded most devastated to me. <laughs> you did stop hearing from Conan after a while, didn't you? <laughs> uh, just as everybody expected, this year's winner is Conan O'Brien. Ah! Accepting this award is Conan O'Brien. You're kidding. No? Oh, my. Conan, is that you? That's right, Howard. How are you? Very good to speak <laughs> good to you. Morning. Hey, Robin, this is very exciting for me. Thank you very much. Before you make your acceptance speech, I just want to say that, uh, first of all, I uh, I applaud you for coming on the air with us. I thought after what the Jackie puppet had said to you, he said some <laughs> insulting things, that you would have, uh, you know... Yeah, I thought we'd never talk to you again. Right, and I'm glad Howard, that... this is the only award I've had in a long time, and I, I feel I owe the Jackie puppet a great deal. Now, you have won an Emmy, haven't you, when you wrote for The Simpsons? That's right, yeah. I, 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 you know, I actually won it for Saturday Night that live, but this is better. Right. Because this, this is for you. a lot more to me. Yeah, this is not a group of guys all getting up there and accepting an award. It's just you. <laughs> so, Conan, it, let me... This uh, is just me. That's right. Uh, by the way, uh, it's just to prove that the Jackie Puppet was wrong, you still have your show, don't you? Yeah. That's right. We're into our uh, third season. You must be very proud of me, Howard. Well, I am. I mean, that's I'm very happy. They're calling Conan a winner now. They're calling you a winner, and I'm very happy for your success. Oh, when are you going to come on, Howard? Never. Oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> you can come on with the Jackie Puppet. Oh, well, that's different. <laughs> now, there's an offer you can't review. you got to take that one. Up. Well, I'll probably have to make the circuit when I promote this new book I'm coming out with, so uh, perhaps then we will meet on your show. Oh, that'd be very nice. All right. And, and Conan, listen, I feel funny. You should. Uh, this is your time. You make your acceptance speech. Go ahead. I just want to thank everyone. I want to thank Howard. I want to thank Robin. I I want to thank everyone at Howard Stern who made this possible, but, but more than anyone else, I'd like to thank the Jackie Puppet. <laughs> I feel without the Jackie Puppet, this would not have been possible. You know, I don't know how many people remember it, but Jackie Puppet was wearing a party hat and throwing Conan a farewell party. Yes, that's right. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it was particularly bad. That's okay. right. Things were, you know, that was a rough period for me and the Jackie Puppet, but we're both still around. I'm well, it happy. proves you have a sense of humor, you uh, enjoyed it, and you're here to accept, and I thank you for accepting this uh, award. I thank you for it. Thank you, Conan. And remember, you were talking to a puppet. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Conan. All right, you guys. Take no, it easy. Bye-bye. It's Conan O'Brien, everyone accepting. Everyone loves the FMEs. Everyone, everyone loves the Jackie Puppet. Yeah, everyone uh, forget. You know what's funny? We sit and write all that stuff for the Jackie Puppet. We could say anything to anybody <laughs> through the puppet. Nobody's mad. Oh, when I say it, everyone gets pissed off. Oh, yeah, people would never come up and show again. The Jackie <laughs> Puppet can get away with anything. He said, okay, Billy, look, you're working the stupid puppet. I'm not going to say to Conan, you know, hey, dude, you've got ten minutes left. And even when... You, here's the best direction you give Billy. Yeah. Even when the guy is on the ropes, you yeah. have to keep going. Yeah, I say to Billy, listen, there's going to be a point where even I tell you to stop because i got to seem like I'm on Conan's side yeah. that you're being brutal. That's right. Just keep going. <laughs> you tell him cut. Yeah, I said, the word cut means go. All right, enough, Billy. Enough. <laughs> enough, Jackie Puppet. <laughs> means go for it. Right. Because sometimes in the old days, I used to tell Billy, stop. And he would. And he'd stop. Yeah. He thought I was for real. Yeah. In fact, there was a discussion like that not too long ago. Billy was doing some other character. Yes. And he started to get wild. And both you and I said, oh, now that's ridiculous. And and he stopped. I know. And out in the hall, it was like, geez, did I go too far? No, he you didn't go far enough, you schmuck. Billy, we've got to say stop. <laughs> yeah, at some point. Or else it doesn't sound good. All right, anyway, congratulations to Conan O'Brien, who was a very good sport that day. We'll be back. With more FME, so much going on uh, right after these words. Hey, unbelievable, Robin. I love it here at the FMEs. We are ready for our next category. This is for, uh, everyone's excited about this. This is for best phony phone call. Oh, ah, I love phony phone calls. Yeah, what a night it is, huh? What a night. I wonder who's in this category this year because the. The competition has expanded. At one time, it was only Captain Jenks, and then it was Captain Jenks and King of All Messengers. Oh, now, yeah. Now, there are so many. Who do you choose from? I what don't do know. What do the judges decide this year? It's going to be a tough category this Who year. Who are the nominees? Okay. Uh, first, it's uh, the king of prank phone calls, Captain Jenks, who called the Today Show. Uh, Ed McMahon was the guest, Captain Jenks' producer. All right. 
And his nose doing okay. Yeah. You know. Somebody else who's doing okay, Ed, is on the phone with us right now. As a matter of fact, we were talking about him a second ago. He called in. I believe he was a star search loser. Is my caller here? Does yeah, hi. How you doing? Losers. Jim. Hi, Ed. How, how are you? you? How are you doing, Matt? Whoa. I'm fine, Just, Jim. How are you? Do you believe this guy? What's happening to him? You actually lost on Star Search? I what? lost. Well, you don't lose. He, he was he was in competition, and someone else exceeded his performance. How's that? That's right. Yeah, okay. <laughs> what did you do on the show, Jim? Uh, well, I did a comedy routine. Hey, Ed? Yes? Howard Stern says you're a fat pig. Is that true? No, no, no. That's what he thinks about himself. <laughs> well, you're a fat pig. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Appar Go. Apparently, that's not Jim Carrey, and we apologize for that. <laughs> All right. I, I knew that, that was going to happen. It's okay. That's that is uh, apparently an imposter, and you know, every once in a while that happens again. Listen, we listen, apologize you know, the for that. thing about that that's great, they know they're an imposter. They know how dumb that was. I can't and understand. They carry that to their grave. They love that. <laughs> oh, that is I a guess, classic. Uh, Ed knows about dumb acts and how they follow you. <laughs> Robin, should we bother playing any more phony <laughs> phone calls? <laughs> Isn't that, that a killer? That's really incredible, but there must be yes, other Yes, there nominees. are. That was uh, the great Captain Jenks' call to uh, Ed McMahon on the Today Show, uh, posing as. As Jim Carrey, yes. Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. <laughs> wow. Wow. Really pulled it off. I mean, that was great. I like when Ed goes, you know, you know what's great about that call? And, and of course, there's nothing great about the call. He goes, um, what's great about the f call is that he just called Ed a fat pig right, on national television. On TV. He goes, that guy has to go to his grave. With that dumb act. With that <laughs> big smile. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anyway, um, that makes Jackie feel good. He lost that star search, too. Uh, okay. All right. Here is uh, a phony phone call to Prince Charles. Who made this call? Some British guy. That's right. This is uh, some British guy producing. <laughs> when the sovereign dies, and if you... Now, mind you, Prince Charles... He's a guest on the show. He hasn't been a guest on any talk show ever. He's mm -hmm. taking live phone calls from the people of England. Thank you. Are alive and healthy. Will you become king? <laughs> I would certainly imagine so. I mean, it's not going to be because I'm going to say I'm not going to do it. Um, I, as far as I'm concerned, in the ordinary course of events, that is what would happen. And... Uh, I mean, I, I, all my life, I've been uh, brought up, you know, to, as I say, to do my utmost and to try and carry out my uh, duty. Can he barely this talk? Effing ponderous. I know. Can he? I mean, is he so tired that he can't talk? Well, I. And what's with that queen mother keeping him from being the king for so long? Isn't that great? She won't retire. She won't retire. She's 150 years old. He's like 90. <laughs> He'll never get to be king. You won't be king until I die. Uh, uh, I, uh, well, uh, uh, That's what usually uh, happens. Wait, we didn't get to the phony phone call part yet. <laughs> to the country and to everybody else as, as, uh, as well as possible. I'm going to stop you there. I'm so sorry because I can just squeeze in one more caller um, in London. Oops. Hello. Hello. Um, my name is Mr. Abui, uh, Bob Abui. Uh, am I through Prince Charles? Yes. Ah, God bless you, Your Royal Highness. I'm indeed most honoured to be speaking to you on the telephone, and uh, a very good afternoon to you as well, Jonathan. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, and welcome to any answers. Thank you, <laughs> Baba Bowie. <laughs> Excuse me, I've got a hair stuck down my throat. I spent all, all night with Princess Diana. <laughs> Uh, what do you mean? Sorry, sorry, it's a very bad line. Uh, the actual <laughs> question I want to put to His Royal Highness is, uh, Baba Bui, do you think, uh, Baba Bui, you'll ever get to be King of England? Yes, absolutely. Ah, right. Well, I believe very strongly that the House of Windsor and your throne will be challenged by an under-endowed American gentleman very, very soon. That's my theory. When you say very soon, uh, what do you mean? Uh, well, I say very soon, and I speak with some authority. I am an earl and an OBE. That makes me an earlobe. And uh, speaking of the British ambassador to Howard Stern, I can announce that Mr. Stern will not only be governor of New York, he'll become the king of England next. <laughs> what makes you say that? I mean, if you, if you look, well, for well, instance... Well, uh, Baba Bui makes me say it. Baba Bui, Baba Bui, Baba Bui. Princess Diana screws the elephant man with the Queen Mother watching, and they do it with... <laughs> Now, come on. That's pretty incredible. That's incredible. Pretty this incredible. is the toughest category of the year. <laughs> toughest category. I, I thought that last call was an absolute disgrace. And do things, do calls like that upset you? No, I, I, that sort of question you know, is very much, you can't, you can't avoid it with something of this unfortunate nature. People like that are a nuisance. My question is, why don't you stick your head up a dead bear's 
<laughs> you big head kid. He <laughs> might have a... Um, <laughs> let's go to Liverpool and Rita Bowen next. I forgot that happened. That one caught me by surprise. Wow. Now, Captain Jenks' call was great. That one's great. Do we need to look at Is another there one? there a third? Well, well, now, who else could qualify in this category? Well, you know what? I'm not even going to announce who the third category is. I'm just going to play it, and now you're going to have a really tough decision to decide because here is maybe the most infamous phony phone call of the year. Let's take a listen. Good afternoon, to be quiet for a moment. We have on the phone with us as well Robert Higgins, who lives in the neighborhood and is on the ground and can see inside the van. Mr. Higgins. Uh, yes, uh, how are you? <laughs> uh, just about as tense as you are, sir. Oh, my lord, this is quite tense. What can you see? Oh, what I'm looking at right now is I'm looking at the van and I see OJ kind of slouching down, looking very, very upset. Now, look at here, he looks very upset. <laughs> I don't know what he's gonna be doing. <laughs> can you can you can you see him doing anything specific? Is he merely sitting there? He is just uh, sitting around, you know, just uh, <laughs> looking like he'd be very nervous. Can you hear anything, Mr. Higgins? It's just too much commotion. I'd be in the back of a news van, so I can't really hear that good, but I can see it all. And I see OJ. I see OJ, man, and he looks scared. And I would be scared because there's cops all deep in this. Thank you, Mr. Higgins. And Baba Booey to y'all. <laughs> The driveway of O.J. Simpson's home in Redwood. Clearly an effort being made to have him come out of the vehicle. In the doorway of the house, his friend, Al Cowling. Peter, by the way, just so for the record, this is Al Michaels. <laughs> that was a totally farcical call. Thanks, Al. Lest anybody think that that was somebody who was truly across the street. That was not. Uh, he, he said something in code at the end. Code. Indicative of uh, the mentioning of the name of um, a certain radio talk show host. Okay, thanks, Al. So he was not there. All right, we have them on every coast. Thank you very much. Won't be the first not time. Not the first time, nor the last, the last. time will have been had. But... <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Peter Jennings should get the award. Oh. Peter Jennings, of course, uh, producing. Uh, and, of course, Maury, who made the phone call. Yes. Who oh, is wow. Be the I, how could you declare a winner in this category? Robin, it's time to open up the envelope. The All of these. Man phone call, the Prince Charles phone call, and the Peter Jennings phone call. All of these men deserve an award in their own right. All of them great artists. Yes, I hate to declare a winner. But unlike the Academy Awards or the Emmys or the Grammys, there is never a tie on the oh. F Emmys. Time now. Who won? I just don't even want to hear it. Up. Forgive me, one moment. <laughs> we got to do something about the envelopes. I can't have Manila envelopes, Baba Booey, and I can't have them taped, scotch taped. Oh, sorry, boy. God, it's the OJ knife. Oh, wrong envelope, Rob. Uh, Let me open this one. Hold it. Oh, this is an easy one. All right. Here it is. Maury oh! for his call to ABC News. Peter Jennings, the OJ Simpson phone call. Accepting the award is Maury himself, who made the phone call. Secretly, I really wanted him to win. But yes, well, we all I did. Couldn't say anything. You know, Maury, I don't know if it was the funniest phone call, but it certainly was the most infamous, it was wasn't the it? Most tensest. It was quite the tensest phone call. <laughs> By the way, Maury will be accepting in his O.J. Simpson voice. Oh. You know, his, his the voice the from voice that night. I've got him door. standing right by. Yes. Um, Maury, uh, how do you feel? You beat out some really stiff competition. Captain Jenks, no slouch, who has won it every year. Yeah. Uh, the British guy from England with the uh, Prince Charles thing. They're unbelievable. It was tough competition, but, you know, you got to come through it somehow. When you made the phone call, did you think you were going to win? Did you think you'd win the FME? Did you have that in mind? I... After I hung up, I had a feeling I was definitely getting something for that. Yeah. Either arrested or an award. <laughs> yeah, well, you've done it. You really, uh, you, you, you beat out all the competition. Let him go ahead and make his speech. You're absolutely right, Robert. It's not time for interviewing. It's time for celebration. Yes. Okay. Go ahead. Now, first of all, I, Robert Higgins, would like to primarily thank three people. 
Howard Stern, and Bopo Robin Quivers Blessed. <laughs> I would like to thank OJ, first of all, for going ahead, slouching down in his vehicle, and giving me my big break into show business. I would especially like to thank Mr. Peter Jennings for being so damn stupid. <laughs> now, look at here. That boy is so damn stupid, he done bought a roll of toilet paper to a crap game. Well, now, look at here. Now you can't shut him up. <laughs> hey, congratulations, Maury thank and Robert you Higgins, your, your alter ego. Yes. I'm honest. There he goes. Thank you for All the right. greatest phony phone call of the year, thank and this right. is an exciting day. Ooh. Here goes Maury. All right, now our next category for the awards, best farter. We have so many people who come in here now who can fart at will, and this has taken me by surprise. You know, what? I've been in this game a long time, baby, and I, I got to tell you something. You're surprised. I'm more surprised that people have this talent than O.J. killed his wife. Oh. All right, three people are nominated this year for best farter of the year. Oh, First okay. is I love these tapes. I can listen to them all day. So if you hear me giggling in the background. I just never get tired of this. This is Kip Who the Farter. Who is nominated? Kip? Kip the Farter breaks the farting record. Uh, Kip producer. It's three minutes and 37 seconds in, and we got to 159. I don't know that a record's going to be made here. Let's, oh, oh, here it goes. Oh, yes. Wow. Wow. What are we up to? We are up to 170 farts. Oh, he's got a long With way still back. over a minute left. He could break the world's record. Long way to Come on, Kip. Oh, wow. We're all rooting for you. You're not going to let an 11-year-old beat you. <laughs> there you go. Now, he's, oh, my God, he's racking up huge points. He, this, if he goes at this pace, 189, 190, 191, 192. Robin, we're four minutes and 13 seconds in. Under now 45 seconds left. He's up to 190, 196, 197, 198, 99, 200. Hurry, hurry! Two, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh my God, ladies and gentlemen, 30 seconds left. He's moments away from breaking a world record. 212, 13, 14, 15, 16. One more in the record. Record. 18. There it is. Keep going. 19, 20, 21, 22. He has broken the record by 11-year-old Matt. Keep going. You have 15 seconds left. This will secure the record for all of history. Wow. That was a great moment. I remember it. I remember the look on Kip's face. Yeah? Yeah. It's quite disturbing. I believe that this is a great talent. I know that we are not rewarded in our society for this, but how many people do you know that can do this? Uh, our second nominee is Travis the Farter. Travis farted in Zeta the sex slave's face because she wanted to get implants, and part of her sex slavery was that she had to accept gas right in her face. And if you remember seeing this on TV, uh, Travis uh, had his ass right in her face, right on our couch. Yes, I remember this. And she had to tell us how much she loved it. Travis producer. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> there you go. That's more like it. Oh, mm, yeah. That's hot, steamy ones are the best. Uh, oh! My name is Stinkface. More gas, please. She's begging you for gas, man. Please. Give her some more gas. I love smelling farts more than seeing a great movie. <laughs> oh, that did it. Oh, that was a long one. Face in there. Howard, are you turned on? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely almost there. Um, that's getting me so excited. Oh, I'm in heaven. <laughs> Fart heaven. Wow. Wow. Is he the king or what? Travis makes. He is the king. Travis. Oh, still going. All right, I'm sorry. Keep going. I'm sorry. All right. All right, Travis. Good job. Good job. Wow, that's a great moment. We got to do more of that. I love when the women get farted on. I love it. Well, you know, you got to have people who are willing to do it. Here's Dan the Farter farting to Robin's theme and then makes all over the floor. Dan the Farter producer. I remember he was looking at you while he performed this. He was sitting on a bowl, staring at you. The bowl had no bottom, so he went right on the floor. 
There he goes. Dan DeFarta. <laughs> He's good. Look at his face. Look at Casey's face while he does it. <laughs> Casey's <laughs> <laughs> wow. Thank you, Dan DeFarter. No website yet. No, but what I'd like to do is come back and do that jacuzzi thing. Yeah, he's going to fart into a hot tub of water. <laughs> Notice he never tells us, by the way, that he's right, made on the he floor. He that he hasn't done it. Yeah, he's talking. Did you do it again? Oh, you went to the bed? Oh, he's trying to be quiet. I don't want that. Did you go to the bathroom again? No, I didn't do that. Oh. Did he? Yes, he did. It's right did. there. It's all shiny. Oh. And now, Robin, who will win? Kip? And, and he lies a bit. Yeah, he lies. I didn't do that. I never did that. Yeah. It's not every day we find duty on the floor. <laughs> like, uh, who else did it? Yeah. Kip, Travis, or Dan? Let's see who won. <laughs> all strong performances. All of these guys should be proud. We should just give a special mention to Dan the Farter who thought up this category. Yes, it is his category. Unfortunately, though, the first winner is Travis the Farter. Oh, really? Travis for his performance farting into Zeta the sex slave's face. <laughs> um, well, I'm sorry Dan didn't win his category. Travis, hi. Uh, are you there, Travis? Yeah, this is Travis. I hey, know. congratulations. Hey, thanks a lot. <laughs> How exciting for you. Yeah, I'm, uh, brought back some memories here, and that morning I haven't heard it for a while. I lost the audio tape of it. And, well, uh, well I, just, I got a few people I'd like to thank this morning for making it possible. And uh, I got to tell I, you, your other end has more personality. <laughs> Why don't you make your speech by using your buttocks? Oh, I, actually, I'm, I was going to talk to you with my other end, too, this morning a little bit, if you didn't mind. All right, go ahead. I shouldn't interrupt. All right, well, first I got to thank you and for having me out and flying me out there to blast in Zeta's face. Thank you. And uh, I got to thank Zeta and the, Devin the Porn Star and Don King for receiving it. And uh, Yeah, you've done many friend, great moments. <laughs> uh, my good friend Troy Nelson, who's in Seattle right now, who helped me take the art of farting to another level. Yes, Troy. you're quite good at it. You're very funny. I didn't realize all these people were involved. Yeah, you know, a guy just doesn't do it on his own. <laughs> well, I learned how to do it by myself, but uh, without him, I wouldn't probably, would probably never have been on the show. Right. Uh, thanks to my family who willingly stood behind me while I passed gas yeah, on your show. Right. <laughs> um, and all the people who are able to see the humor in this, too. Uh, without those people, I would never... You'd be nothing. Did it in the first Actually, place. you are nothing. There would be no... <laughs> not to me, you're not, though. I think you're a great artist. Hey, hey treat us to a little bit. Come on. All right, hold Give on. Give us a song. Give us something. I got to get down on the floor, you know. Go ahead. Travis the Farter making his acceptance speech. Shh. Everybody. Shh. There you go. He's starting. Wow. Wow. See something? Such a show off too. So confident. You can see why he won the FME. Absolutely. Hey, uh, Travis. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. I guess who's a spoiled sport? Dan the Farter's on the Is phone. He oh, he's, he's on the he phone. He's yeah. upset, huh? Hey, uh, Dan. Howard. Well, what's your problem? Well, I must say I'm a little disappointed. Why? Well, Travis is good. However, I think uh, I take the talent. I think they were the category. Well, let's have a little. Kind of fart off. Why don't we have a fart off right now? Dan can do Got his it. thing in his own house. Let me, I, I, Dan. Let me hear you do your thing right now. Such resonance. Uh, Travis, go ahead. All right, hold on here. I stood up for a second. <laughs> Do it. There goes Dan. Beat that. He's still going, Dan. <laughs> the two of them are so
so competitive. Look at that. You have to appreciate the artistry. Two great artists. Probably I'll never stand up there. I got to get all these guys together. I am a stranger. <laughs> Two great artists jamming. This is like reminds me when Louis Armstrong played with the great BB King back in 1962. Louis Armstrong and BB King. That's right. This reminds me of the great Mel Torme and uh, Ella Fitzgerald <laughs> doing scat. You don't know what you're talking about. Them. So competitive. <laughs> ah. Ah. Such a release. <laughs> you know, these guys would go all day. If you just <laughs> They'll be here until we stop. I know. Hey, what? guys, you, you know what? I got to tell you something. Yeah. It's hard. Oh, Dan's still going. Dan, <laughs> Dan, stop for one second. Sure. I, I got to say to the both of you, you are both great artists. You're the Simon and Garfunkel of Florida. <laughs> But this particular time, Travis won. You know, the next time we do something like this, we've got to get you two kids in the studio to perform together so we can capture that. Do it. Yeah, I would love to. Oh, look who's on the phone all upset. Who? Jeremy the Farter. He's mad he wasn't even nominated oh. and that Dan was. You know, Farters are bad losers. <laughs> I know. Hey, let me get. Let him join in on the mix. Guys, you still there? All right. Yes. Yeah. All right. Jeremy? Howard. Hi. What's wrong? Uh, I guess I'm I'm a little upset that I wasn't nominated, but I'm more upset that Dan was. Why? This, uh, Why? He's a pig. I called last time he was in the studio. My main question is, who cleans up after this guy? We do. I do. That's disgusting. Dan, you're giving all of us farters a bad name. Jeremy, let me hear a little of your work. All right, hold on. Refresh the audience's memory. I got to tell you, I'm standing up, and that's not my normal style, but I'll right. give you a shot anyway. Okay, go ahead. Remember him, Robin? Oh, yes. He can talk. Yeah, he can talk. Yeah, he actually flaps his cheeks and does duck impressions. He's right. Why wasn't he nominated? So, so many people, Robin. <laughs> we can narrow it down. Wow. Remember his nickname, Daffy Butt? <laughs> Guys, uh, congratulations to you all. How's that? And especially to uh, Travis for his win. Wow. Look at Jeremy go. Jeremy's obviously furious. You know, like the great Beethoven, as he lost his hearing, he became angrier and angrier and wrote some of his best music. Jeremy's anger has brought out a new sound, a more resilient sound. Howard, you know, I just want to clear something up. I'm not, I'm not complaining. I'm honored to be just to be nominated. Thank you. Yeah, but I've never seen. You know, it's like everybody ran up on stage and tried to get Travis's award. <laughs> and poor Travis is accepting, and, and now everyone's on the phone. Hey, is Travis He's still there? My award. Yeah, Travis is there. Yeah, I'm, I'm still here. Travis, I got to ask you, what do you think about this Dan guy that comes in and crafts his pants every time? Oh, I don't, I don't really understand. Uh, I guess he sits down when he does it. Yes. Yeah. I, I think he should maybe look for another technique. I think he should it's, be just. I mean, I don't, it's an act of uh, farting, not. I say, what's the difference? How you get there? Well, exactly. I agree with that. How well, you get there? These are but... farters, Howard. You shouldn't be in the argument. I know, but I, I as an appre as an appreciative fan and someone who promotes this kind of stuff, I got to tell you something. Uh, when I watch Dan do his work. I'm amazed, and I don't mind that he craps on the floor. Well, oh, yeah. It's a small like, price to pay. No pay, like no the game. You're from the yeah. National League who doesn't like the designated hitter in right. the American League. To me, I don't care how you get there as long as you get there. <laughs> guys, congratulations These to you all. guys are purists. Thank you. Right. Thanks, Howard. Uh, and remember, there's always an FME's next year. Uh, right. Right. Bye-bye. Thanks. Well, there's some great artists, Robin, right here on the FME's. I tend to side with the guys who say it's a farting competition. <laughs> What does that mean? And Dan goes over the line. I disagree. I think With in the future. Technique. I think like in hockey when you see fights. Yeah. I think in the future that'll make it that'll even more exciting. There's a performer that really makes it <laughs> worthwhile. You gotta love the. Um, you gotta love the FME. Our next big celebrity uh, category is best celebrity impersonation. There are ten nominees. Uh, 
Our first nominee is the Bob Hope impersonation done by... Who's it done by? <laughs> is it... I thought we were just... I, I actually thought we were all right, we'll just pick. All right, we won't name the names. We'll just pick the... Uh, <laughs> we'll just pick the person. All right, Bob Hope. Hello? All right. Hey, Mr. Hope? Yeah, this is Bob. I'm so old, I used to have a dinosaur as a pet hope. It is him. How is that you? That's his material. Yes, it's, <laughs> it's Bob Hope. And Bob, let me uh, ask you how you're feeling. <laughs> Bob? Hey, this is Bob. Somebody pull the plug hope here. Calling in from the bed. I can't stand up straight, but God damn it, them Negroes hop right to it if I pee in my bed. <laughs> wow, Mr. Hope. I got to tell you, it's been an honor. Yeah. I'll tell you something else. What? My Jewish friend. I was around when Hitler was doing his important and brilliant work. <laughs> what? <laughs> Open up your ears, Jew boy. Hitler was on the ball, boy. He was on the ball. All right, our next uh, nominee is Billy Crystal. Billy Crystal, producer. Best celebrity impersonation. Billy Crystal wants to say something. Go ahead, Billy. You know, Howard, I'm sure as an artist, it, you, you can you can uh, empathize with me. You, know, you work so hard at your craft to, to be creative. Right. And to be original. Yes. And, and and then someone comes along and accuses you of doing something that you never did. Right. And and your your whole your whole name is at stake. And you know what? It's not fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's not funny. <laughs> right. Robin, are you laughing? No, no, Billy. Would I well, laugh? Perhaps you... you don't understand. It is neither fun. No funny. It's not fun or funny. Uh, no, 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 not at all. When people accuse you of something, uh, what do you tell them to do with it? They can take their accusations. Right. And they can bring it back to you. Right. And you can goof on it. <laughs> and they can stick it up their false ass. Right. <laughs> Al Pacino's Baby is nominated next. Al Pacino's Baby producer. Believe that one of the Al Pacino twins is on the line. Hello, are you there? Howard Stern, how are you? Hey, how you doing, buddy? Now, what's been new since we last spoke? You didn't speak with me, Howard. That was my brother. Your brother? Right. All right well, now, now, clear this up for me, because I thought you were fraternal twins. Yeah, yeah, we are, we are. So you're the girl? That's, that's right. You're real quick, you know that? If you look and sound like your brother, how do people tell you two apart? How do they tell us apart? What are you, a moron? It's it's pretty obvious if you think about it. Well, what's obvious? I have a vagina, Howard. You do? Yes, I do. It's pretty sweet. I love it. All right, now, how's your brother doing? You know, we just spoke with him last week. He plays with his poop. Dog poop? No. No. His poop. I love it. What is your brother's name? I... How am I supposed to? I'm five weeks old, Howard. I call him Turd Face. Turd Face? That's right. I call him Turd Face. Because all he does, he rubs cock a duty poopy <laughs> all over his face. And you know that. Right. You know he does that. Right. And you know, it's, you try to talk to him. But you can't. He's, he can't hear you. All right, and uh, next nominee, there's so many in this category, Gene Simmons. Gene Simmons for Gene, take a, take a bow here and tell us some of the other things Kiss has invented. Well, I, what I don't understand is people who don't acknowledge the influence of Kiss. Look at Sting. You influenced Sting? Obviously influenced Sting. Did you know that we had such a huge influence? I was a school teacher. Uh -huh. Not many people oh. know that I was actually a school teacher. Sting <laughs> was a school teacher. Right. I became a rock star. Sting decided he wanted to become a rock star. We had hits. Sting had hits. <laughs> Sting went bald. I have a little black triple on my head. <laughs> Who All did right. it first? That's now, talk about some of the great things that oh, the Kiss has done that people aren't aware of or are working on. Do you know every year that 300,000 teenagers come down with venereal diseases? That's yeah, a fact. Yeah. Right. Guess who started it all? It was me and Paul. <laughs> <laughs> on one tour, we went out, we banged every Kansas farm girl we could find. And, and guess whose little soldier from the Kiss Army was dripping like a good humor ice cream bar on the 4th of July? That's right. It was yours truly. Well, there you go. I do have to mention, while the subject is up, that we actually discovered anal kiss. <laughs> oh, I bet you, you know did. That actually before? <laughs> yeah, I bet you did. Before, before all right. came along, there, there was actually no... Anal. Rectum. Right. <laughs> you invented the rectum. <laughs> All right. Next nominee, Gilbert Gottfried, is Groucho. Groucho Gottfried. 
<laughs> years ago, we would meet an actress and don't stop a joke. Now, back then... They, they would court them. back then and date the they, actresses? They, 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 well, that's what you would do. You would uh, take them on a date. And that's what they would do back then. Did you then. have sex with any of them, Groucho? We, we would have sex, because back then... <laughs> you know, back, back then? Back then, you would see a girl, and she would be attractive, and men would react uh, sexually. Did they have anal would sex you have, then? Yeah, would you have anal back then? No, we would have anal sex. You know, they hadn't these, discovered that. With these, back then... <laughs> back then, they had back, anal back sex. Back then, anal sex was described as anal sex. <laughs> And, we and our next nominee is Gilbert Gottfried as Dracula Gottfried. Dracula Gottfried producer. Dracula, you pro-abortion? Uh, I like death. <laughs> Any kind of death. Any kind of death. A baby's death. An adult's death. Any death. I like killing little infants. <laughs> I like killing the fetus. You do. And drinking the blood of the fetus. Of the fetus. <laughs> Is that the best Making blood? it into a milkshake. You love it. <laughs> I thought you only drank the blood of uh, virgins. Is that true? I drink the blood of virgins and babies. Right. Unborn children. There's nothing better for the sort. <laughs> All right, there you go. <laughs> Our next nominee, this is a tough category, uh, Wood Ye, Wood Ye Allen, Wood Ye producer. Wood Ye doesn't believe Would it. Would you like to suck my spicy tuna roll? Oh, you see. That you're coming out a little strong, Wood Ye. Are you free tonight or do I have to pay? Oh, oh that's ridiculous. That's an outrage. <laughs> Are you a rape waiting to happen? Oh, my God. You're coming up very strong. Yeah, this is a good line. Yeah. Are you attracted to Woody at all? Uh, is he your type? Do you like a funny man? Do you like a funny I man? I like a funny man. You do? Yes. He's a great definitely. film director, isn't he? Mm. Yes, he is. My nickname is Pogo. Want to jump on my stick? Wow. <laughs> done material like this in years. You're on fire, would ye? A snake just bit my sack. Would you please suck out the venom? All right. Before you run out of here screaming, I want you to know I'm not a freak. <laughs> That's the greatest. All right, our next, uh, there's three more in this category, believe it or not, Robin. Who's your favorite so far? I can't choose between uh, uh, Gaucho Gottfried and Dracula Gottfried. It's tough. <laughs> Jerry Lewis is our next celebrity impersonation. Oh, dear. Jerry Lewis, producer. Why are you calling my show? I mean, Listen. Yeah. I got to tell you, I hate you. <laughs> you hate me. You sicken me. Why? Why do I sicken Listen, you? Listen, I don't like your show. Right. I'm not a fan of your shenanigans and hijinks. Right. And uh, I will not so, be hoodwinked so you, into this Takata shit cola. So you've never listened to you've never listened to the show. You've I've never, heard, never. It's Michelle. So then why would you be upset about the show if you've well, never if heard? If I listened to your show, I'd get the spookies. Right. <laughs> listen and shut up, Aunt Jemima. Oh, oh yeah, right, right. wow! Look, wow. listen, learn. The true colors of Jerry. Yeah, Lewis. Jerry. Hey, did I? I happen to say that ladies ain't funny? Right, you did say ladies ain't I did over. say that, so go make me some pancakes, Mrs. Butterworth. <laughs> All right, so, Jerry. Listen. Yeah. I'm not a fan of the show. You must I, listen to Imus. Listen, Torch Monkey. Uh, oh, 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 you are racist. <laughs> Look, yes, I'm just giving you what colors. you want. Jerry, listen. <laughs> listen, you got, you know, stuttering people stammering. Jerry, you're making me laugh walk. for the first time. Yeah, <laughs> finally, you're funny. <laughs> Nigga, please. Oh. Oh. Uh, our next nominee, uh, no stranger to the show, Sam Kinison. Sam Kinison producer. Or Craig Gass producer. Look, Sam, I don't even know how to tell you this. I know you've been dead for a long time, but my wife and I got separated. But you know what, Sam? I don't even want to talk about it. Look, look I understand your pain. I mean, I don't, I don't think that, uh, I don't think women understand how much of an impact they have on our lives. I know, Sam, but you know, I've already talked about it enough. You just, you know, you've been dead, so. I don't think you that women it. realize the mess that they leave behind. <laughs> what mess? You know, <laughs> Sam, I want to ask you something. Ed, but do they stop, huh? 
<laughs> do they back off? Do they say, Howard, maybe I should give you some space? No. <laughs> do they say, I know that Robin is in the anal. Maybe you can relieve yourself there. No. <laughs> they don't give you any kind of slack at all. They don't say, Howard, you need to concentrate more on your career. No. <laughs> But Jesus, I mean, look at Donald Trump, that dickhead. What about Donald Trump? Well, come on, I know that right now people call him the Donald. But, you know, if he didn't have any cash, he'd be Donnie, the guy with the weird eyebrows who can't get any bush. <laughs> wow. And our final nominee is Daryl Hammond of Saturday Night Live doing Jay Leno. I had Jay Leno at the Tonight Show, and you know how, you know, I was listening to your show, and I heard David Letterman badmouth me, you know, see, see, I don't think that's very nice. You know, I mean, he's doing his thing. I don't know why, but still, you never hear Jay Leno sink to that level. Oh, ooh, Jay Leno, ooh. I mean, I can always reveal the facts, and I know for a fact that David has a very small penis. Oh, after all, oh no, 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 I'm not making this up. Come on, it's a Tonight Show. That means it's a small d What are you talking about? <laughs> but he's done. No, he's doing his thing. Here's Howard Stern. Well, the the winner is. Oh my, who won? Let's open the envelope. Of the best celebrity impersonation. <laughs> Gilbert Gottfried as Groucho Marx. Oh, Gilbert. Oh, good, oh, oh. Sam is upset. Oh, that can't be right. That can't be right. Who's the dickhead who voted? <laughs> Let's go to Gilbert. Gilbert. This is the most exciting moment of my life. It literally is. Have you ever, Have you ever won an award? Yeah, I don't believe you've ever won any award in no, show business. No, no, and I'm, I'm not even allowed back on the Emmys <laughs> ever since the Pee Wee Herman masturbation routine. Oh, boy. Yeah, Gilbert had his big shot on, like, national he TV. He was getting some national recognition. Yeah, and he did uh, Pee Wee Herman masturbating material, and it didn't go over real well. The, I remember the critics really bashed you for that. Yeah. It did well there, but uh, the critics passed it because it was too dirty for the Fox Network. Well, Gilbert, I see that you're moved by winning an FME. Yeah, because like a lot of people thought, being in two categories, I was going to get screwed. Right. Well, because you would separate the vote. <laughs> oh, yeah, I didn't think of that. Yeah, like you'd split the vote. Well, let me tell you, I know that the FME statue will go on your mantle along what? with your empty Chinese food container. <laughs> Does he actually have a mantle? He has a, a, a shelf that he put up. <laughs> but it's mostly like just garden furniture right. and empty food containers. But, Gilbert, congratulations to you. Oh, thank you. And thank you for the many great moments on the show. You certainly deserve the award. Yes, yeah, this, is, this is better than sex, I think. Well, your career is going so well. You, after all, you've yeah, played, uh, did you play the voice of a toilet paper roll recently? <laughs> I was hoping to, but I got screwed out of it. Oh, somebody yeah. beat you for yeah. that part. Yeah. I was wondering yes. why Jerry Seinfeld didn't call him for the Carnegie Hall thing. Well, because Jerry... Uh, I, I don't like that Godfrey. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't like you, right? <laughs> he doesn't think you're funny. He won't. He, he doesn't sound anything like me. <laughs> I don't talk that way. <laughs> he really doesn't think that uh, that's a good impression, yeah. but it's dead on. <laughs> All right, Gilbert, we'll be seeing you on the show soon, and congratulations. And uh, I know you have to get back to your uh, charity work that you're doing for uh, all the victims of the World Trade Center. Uh, yes, I'm going there and getting food for my apartment. Yeah, he goes down to the... He, he goes down. Food. He volunteers I, and takes food. I throw dirt all over myself and say, I just climbed out of the rubble. Can I have something to eat? He's that low. He's yes. that low. All right, Gilbert, thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, let me uh, turn your attention to uh, stage left. Yes. We have Gary in his Zigfield teeth <laughs> performing goodbye yellow brick teeth. Here he comes out onto the stage. Papa Fui. Papa Funky. I need more time to think. When am I gonna get smart? Am I too stupid to learn to keep my big stinky mouth closed around Howard Stern? Didn't think I'd be with Paul forever, even though he treats me like duty. But I got a friggin' mansion in Connecticut, not bad for a moron called Fafafoo. 
My breath smells like your bowels. <laughs> Get me a new set of choppers. Because <laughs> I'm an executive now. I could quit Howard and get a new job. But that's too much like work for me. When else could I get paid to loaf around? Me and my yellow brick tea. <laughs> Are we adults? <laughs> Why do you think I do this when all Howard does is complain? I'll eat a couple of pounds of milk chocolate. It gets me feeling good again. <laughs> If Howard ever tried to replace me, there's no one like me to be found. A big dope who takes all the insults while Robin laughs like a cow on the ground. Fuck the blow, fuck, fuck. My breath smells like your bowels. <laughs> Get me a new set of choppers. Because I'm an executive now. I could quit Howard and get a new job. But that's too much like work for me. I can't do it. I'm too stupid. <laughs> when else could I get paid to loaf around? Me and my yellow brick I can't believe it, but Gary, you further embarrassed yourself. Your kid is climbing into Mary's throat. You know what was interesting to me? What? Something about that song made his yellow brick teeth all the more prominent. Yes, they certainly did. Well, the word teeth does open your mouth wide. It certainly does. He can't even say teeth. <laughs> teeth. Oh, they're all dried out. Are your teeth all dried out? No, they're fine. I'm Are they? Say teeth again like that. Teeth. No. Teeth. I want to get to our big category right what now. What is the category we're dealing with right now? Most angry staff member. Here's our nominees. All right. Boom. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Boom, Fred. Boom it. He refuses to boom. I don't. What is he doing over there? You can see. <laughs> Come on, tell me. He's sitting there looking at a cart. All right. Boom. On now, our most angry staff member, first nominee... Mark Coppola. Mark, Mark Coppola, Coppola disc jockey. Mark Coppola producing. Cope is so mad that he has a 19-year radio career. And all we talk about is his famous family, but everyone does that. But that's why I say this is fair. No, not everyone does that. You How encourage you that. that. Everywhere you, you go, you tell no, everyone your no, Francis Ford no, Coppola's no, nephew. No, I don't. I yes, never, you do. No, I don't. Yes. No, I don't. Yes. I never did it before. You're the first person to bring that up on the air. Nobody knew I was related until you started it. You started it, Howard. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I so don't tell don't don't tell me that. Get that other guy back. God. <laughs> Gee. Oh, you're having a problem. You wanted to get me mad, fine. But don't tell me I go around telling people I'm related. Uh, I don't. Oh, you want to see who fights better, me or Meg? Is that what it is? <laughs> oh, All right. boy. What do we bring out in people, I wonder? I don't know, but you sure bring it out. Because <laughs> I want to kill you right now. <laughs> I'm serious. Oh, wonderful. Wow. Everybody loves it. Well, that's going to be a tough performance to beat. Yeah, who's next? Our second nominee is... Our second nominee is Gary Delabate. Gary Delabate producing for Most Angry Staff Member. 
Why do you know the promotion person from Epic Records? Because I have to deal with them for the show. How do you... Oh, for the show. What's right. the name of this show? The Howard Stern Show. Right. The Hitler Show. No, this is not... <laughs> hey, you just shut your face. the house. And what about uh, this guy from the uh, Warner Home Video? No, okay. Suddenly you're on his no, 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 no. There's no suddenly involved. You suddenly made no, no, no. him feel that There's you... No suddenly... I told you, you I want, want the story? Or you want to hear your BS? No, no, no. Listen, listen to me. You, you work for me. Want... The history... Hold it. I don't want BS. The here. world according to Howard no, no, no. or the truth? You said you asked there me a question. There is no want... truth other than no, the fact no, that I have had this discussion with you a hundred times. You asked me a question. You want I the told truth you or you want to direct it the way comes, you want? Every video that comes into this station you is the mine. Truth or you, want, you asked me a question. Now give me There's an opportunity no to answer. I am not asking you a question. <laughs> give me an opportunity <laughs> to answer. I am giving you a rule. He giving... cultivated a contact nah. on his own house. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The guy, the nah. guy, yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow. Not a bad Ooh. performance. Not a bad performance, but there are three nominees. And our third most angry staff member... Our third nominee, Meg Griffin. Meg of Griffin course, produced. Meg had to be nominated for Absolutely. this category. A lot of people can't believe uh, Fred Norris was aced out of this category. <laughs> and here we go. Uh, I'm not even going to get into it with you. You're not worth it. Who cares? Oh, dear. Here we go Who now. cares? It's already deteriorating. <laughs> Who cares what you're saying? It's deteriorating every morning at 6 o'clock. I couldn't care. of the idiots that listen to this program. <laughs> I couldn't care. Who thinks I should shut up? It's just another reflection of what America's like these days in the men's club that everybody joins into. <laughs> and the reason that these hearings are such a joke. Yeah. And you jumping on the bandwagon makes me wonder why. <laughs> oh, you think that's a conspiracy? <laughs> oh, great. Not a conspiracy, but it might be good for the women's side of the readings numbers. Oh, I'm trying to get my women's oh, ratings right. I never hear you show any respect to women in any oh, other way, as you haven't to me this oh, morning, yeah. Howard. Is that right? That's right. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. you're a pig. Yeah, and you know what? You're equally a pig. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, I go around degrading people all day long on my radio. Who knows so. what you do all day long? Who knows who you degrade? Plenty of people know what I do all day long. It's got nothing to do with what you do. I have no problem with what I do. You worry you about no what problem, you do. You've got a fat paycheck and you get to say what you want. And you carry it around as if hey, it's all for the fight of freedom of speech when it's for the fight of a foul mouth. All right. Oh, wow. Goodness. Wow, that's going to be Too many tough. good performances. You What's know, going to happen? Who knows? It could be a tie. But all right, Robin, it's time for me to open the all envelope. All right, go ahead. I can't wait. Who's it going to be? Hurry! Look at this envelope. What do they make this out of? Oh, we're going to die of anticipation. Oh, my God. Who is it? Meg Griffin of taking course. it again. Wow, Meg Griffin. And now to on our phone to accept her award is a very beautiful and talented Meg Griffin. Meg, is that you? Meg, are you there? Good morning, Howard. Wow, Meg Griffin. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations to you on your FME. Thank you, darling. For most angry performance. And, sure. you know, I'm going to tell you something. Cope looked like he might take it. Gary's sitting here. He looks very disappointed. Gary, are you all right? No, I think that all the everybody did a great job, and just being nominated was enough. Right. Meg, go ahead. Make your acceptance. Hey, listen. All I was going to say is I think Gary's one up on me for calling this the Hitler show because all I've ever called it is Dante's Inferno. You know? Right. I it to him. Yeah, you see, that's where I thought Gary might move yeah, ahead. Yeah, he, he sort of inched to his way up. I thought that Cope, however, ask, saying that he wanted to kill you. Ne Meg hasn't even gone that far. I know. Well, Meg does want to kill me. She just hasn't acted <laughs> better. Never at times, yes, but I must, times. at times, yes. But I'll tell you this. Uh, Gary is not upset. Gary's too stupid to get really angry about uh, at this whole award thing. Well, the thing about Cope, all I was going to say about Cope is you really just got to stop picking on him, Howard. Yeah, well, it's true. I think he's pushed over the edge pretty much. <laughs> but you know, all I meant was is that uh, it's very difficult coming from the Coppola family where Francis Ford Coppola is his uncle. And, uh, of course, uh, the, what is it? That Nicholas Cage. Is his brother, and Talia Shire is his aunt. And there's Cope just spinning records. You understand how difficult that is. You see, in your family, you're the big star. In Cope's family, he's nothing. Actually, he's not just spinning records, though. As a matter of fact, I'm going to see him in a play tonight, so he's doing a lot more than that. You don't give him credit. Well, that's true. He is in a play tonight. How many people were there when you saw it, Fred? Ooh. Howard, cut it out. <laughs> I'm just kidding, of course. Well, actually, now, um, you know what? I got to get on train, but I can't thank you guys enough for, you know, the advancement of my career that has occurred when you let me into the inferno every now and then. Well, let me so, tell you uh, something. So, you will be coming in this morning. I will be coming in this morning. Meg, uh, what is going on now? You will not be... I am... Is I, there some kind of statue for this, anyway? Yes, you do get a statue. Oh, good. And wait till you see where it's been. Yeah, right. Dante's Inferno. Uh, but, uh, actually, Meg, I got the news on... What was it, Friday? Yeah, it was Friday. That uh, you would be moving to Knights. 
Yeah, I'm going to be doing 6 to 10 at night again. Now, I am still fighting this decision. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I want Meg on after us. Because well, yeah. how will we get any more stellar performances? I know. Exactly. I, mean, yeah. I, was, I was hoping this would be the position you would take. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm out of my mind over it. I don't know how you feel about it, but I'm out of my mind over it. No, I'm, I'm going through withdrawal already, Howard. That's it. That's right. All well, right. You're going to miss us if you go. No, but she'll I, be back. I'm i, I got to get my train, but I'll see you guys later. All right, Meg, congratulations on your FME. Thank you so very much. All right, very good. There she is. She's not angry today because she won an FME. Yeah, whenever you give someone an award, they sort of like you. Robin, let's be honest. It is the most coveted award in radio. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Time to, get, time to give away uh, an award. And I love it. What? May I say something? No. As the producer of the FMEs, I have to say this is hands down my favorite category. This is the strongest category. Well, wait a second. You're not here to introduce the category. It's Ozzy and David Lee Roth. Yeah. This is Diamond David Lee Roth at the 2004 FME Awards, baby. Wow! Oh, yeah! Jesus Christ, you always have to squeal like a, a goddamn pig. I'm sorry, this little jumbly crazy train. What the f is an FME, you know? And even more so, who the f are you? You know who I am? I'm the lead singer of the David Lee Roth Band. Yeah, have you heard my hit single, Just a Gigolo? No wonder why I didn't know who you are. That song was 20 years ago. Hey, and now here's Howard Stern to announce the FME nominations, baby. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you, David Lee Roth and Ozzy Osbourne. Baba Bowie's right. This is a lot of people's favorite category. This is Best Blooper. That's right. We played many, many bloopers throughout the year, but only one can win. Let's see what's nominated. All right. The nominees are Tom Brokaw uh, mispronounces the name of a play foreign country or it something. It was a Russian town. Yeah. Something happened. And this report out of Moscow tonight, two Russian planes carrying a total of more than 100 people crashed almost simultaneously today. The first crash happened in Bukaki, uh, about 110 miles south of Moscow. <laughs> Bukaki. Hey, oh. Thanks. Stay with us, would you, for a minute? I want to bring in. All right, our next nominee is Britt Hume. Okay. Somehow he just popped on the scene here. <laughs> Jim, thanks. Stay with us, would you, for a minute? I want to bring in our Pentagon correspondent, Brett Baer. He's in Colorado Springs, Colorado, <coughs> Excuse me, where Defense Secretary Rumsfeld is at a NATO meeting. Rumsfeld, it seems, was left out of the loop. Excuse me. Left out of the loop as the White House changed its oversight of the reconstruction there. The White House said Rumsfeld was in the loop. What about it? <laughs> Love that. All right, our next nominee, Diane Keaton, freaks out. At a press conference. And I'm so tired that I just think I'm going to go insane. <laughs> this is the way she uh, is. You think she's funny in the next minute? Look at this. You want to go home, sweetie? Yeah. This is hard. You know, you guys, it's hard. You know, it's, I've, 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 I've never been with a bunch of people like this. It's Good. weird. You know, you ask weird questions, and I don't know how to answer them, and it's just <laughs> weird, you know? <laughs> thing is there's so many of you you know and there's so few of us i feel like we're not represented wow I, oh dear, i'm going nuts you're going nuts. Yeah. thank you so charming yeah. thank you jack nicholson's the best he's in the background going, so charming you want to go home honey <laughs> you go home yeah. he's heard it all nicholson that's why all the chicks love him crying broads everything what do you want to do honey our next nominee is the great fox news anchor paige hopkins she chokes while delivering the news oh. It's not a body. Hello, everybody. I'm Paige Hopkins. An object investigators thought could be the body of Lacey Peterson. It turns out to be an anchor. Divers pulled it out of the Berkeley <coughs> Marina today. The 27-year-old <laughs> pregnant woman. <laughs> You'd think those guys in the camera would jump out and help her. Uh, yeah, but the they just stand there and let her suffer. The music coming back on is great. That's the only help they've got. And the uh, fifth nominee and final nominee. No, no, no. Uh, on oh, the page. oh, my God. There's oh. many. Oh, yeah. oh, this is unbelievable. Dorothy Lucy of Good Day Live interrupts 9-11's tribute for breaking J-Lo news. Oh, yeah. A lot of you have been responding... Um, 
Here's uh, Megan in Wisconsin. I still remember this day like it was yesterday. Everything is so clear. This day made me become what I am today, and I'm a proud member of the U.S. Army. Let me read some handheld uh, that I have here. Uh, everybody who lost their lives two years ago will forever be in my family's prayers. Today is bittersweet. It is also my husband and my fourth anniversary. Uh, oh my gosh, Steve, you mentioned wedding anniversary. Uh, th th this, this will sound very odd Fast. to mention yeah. this at this moment, but um, Ben and J-Lo have called off their wedding, which is something that any other day we would have led with. <laughs> they thought the media coverage was too much, and they called it off. I think they fired our ass off that show. That is, the, that that is just the best. Is That's <laughs> I don't want to interrupt your beautiful tribute, uh, Steve, but uh, J-Lo has just broken up with Ben Affleck. You mentioned he's a wedding. wacky, too, because yeah. he's... He says, I have some handheld here. Yeah. You know, he's just talking about the letters right, in his hand. Right. I think he's talking about his penis. <laughs> uh, six nominee, Howard Dean's disastrous Iowa speech. Not only are we going to New Hampshire, Tom Harkin, we're going to South Carolina and Oklahoma and Arizona and North Dakota and New Mexico. We're going to California and Texas and New York. And we're going to South Dakota and Oregon and Washington and Michigan. And then we're going to Washington, D.C. to take back the White House! Yeah! <laughs> yeah! Love that. Made of my mind, make a new start. We're going to California! With an aching in my heart. This summer I hear the drumming. <laughs> California! Where the girls are welcome to the hotel! California! <laughs> such a lovely place, such a lovely place, such a lovely place. Many a room at the hotel! California! Alright, so our next nominee is Joe Namath gets interviewed drunk on the sideline of the game. Joe, it's been a tough season for Jet fans. What does it mean to you now when the team is struggling? I want to kiss you. I couldn't care less about the team struggling. What we know is we can improve. We're looking to next season. We're looking to make a, a noise now, and I want to kiss you. Thanks, Joe. Okay. Yeah! Huge yeah, compliment. You know Joe Namath, part of the four-decade team. We'll see these guys in halftime. All right. Thank you, Susie. Joe's just a happy guy. Isn't he? Poor Bess is out there trying to have a few beers, probably. And yeah. Leave him alone with that stupid microphone. Don't come over there looking all sexy, shoving a phallic symbol in his face. <laughs> team is struggling. The team is struggling. I don't care I don't that the care. team is Kiss me. Kill me. The team is struggling. <laughs> All right, our next nominee is Fox News anchor Shepard Smith. He slips up when saying the word curb job. <laughs> J-Lo's new song, Jenny from the Block, all about Lopez roots, about how she's still a neighborhood gal at heart. But folks from that street in New York, the Bronx section, sound more likely to give her a curb job than a blow job or blo block party. The New York Post was <laughs> about that slip up there. I have no idea how that happened, but it won't happen again. Right. And that's your news. Finally, the, uh, the final nominee in this very long category, but exciting category, is the woman who was stomping grapes on television. And in the middle of stomping the grapes, she fell down. This is incredible, too. Well, if grape stomping's not your thing, you can come and spend the day listening to live music, eating international foods, having wine tours and tasting, vineyard tours, seminars, arts and crafts. It's a lot of fun, a whole day. Stop. Oh, 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 o
This is going to be fun. I'm opening the envelope. It's an incredibly... Hurry, hurry. All right, the winner is... Oh, I ripped the envelope so much I can... Paige Hopkins from Fox News. Oh. Paige Hopkins, of course, choked while delivering the news. This is called... Oh, wait a second. A recap. A lot of you have been responding... Um... No, wait a second. A recap. <laughs> oh. It's not a body. Hello, everybody. I'm Paige Hopkins. An object investigators thought could be the body of Lacey Peterson. It turns out to be an anchor. Divers pulled it out of the Berkeley <coughs> Marina today. <laughs> 27-year-old <Oops. coughs> pregnant woman. <laughs> I feel for her. I can't. This makes me want to... Oh, Howard, I am so excited. This is, I, I can't even believe this day. Thank you so much. First of all, congratulations, Paige. It's a big award because you had some tough competition. Yeah, especially oh, let me tell you, nominees. Tom Brokaw, Diane Keaton, uh, Howard Dean. And, and the one, the grape-stomping woman. Yeah, well, she really, I, I thought she was going to take it. I was really scared there for a minute. First of all, let me just say, uh, w before you give your acceptance speech, I... I that is a tough moment for any broadcaster. So what do you do? You're on the air. You, what was you it? Just you just started, right? Right. Well, it was, it, was a, it was actually a minute news cut, and I had just finished doing a two-hour show with my co-anchor, who bolted from the set after right. the show. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I started reading the news, and all of a sudden, I had eaten a peanut <laughs> during the break. That's what I figured. And the peanut was lodged in my throat. So I start, mm. I start signaling to the producer, like, cut, because there's video playing so the audience can't see me. So I keep si signaling, cut, cut. And they didn't. Isn't it amazing how you can work out these signals and nobody seems to respond right. to them? Yeah. Hello. <laughs> I'm choking. So, did you did you need the Heimlich maneuver? <laughs> I you know what I actually Heimlich myself. Many times I'll be on this show and, and it's a five hour show some days and I'm in the middle of it like two hours in I get really hungry my voice gets dry so I eat something and then the microphone comes back on and I'm like. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, what do you do? Uh, well, well, I've got Rob in here and Artie and Fred and everyone else, so I can kind of, like, throw it to them. Right. Or I just say, hey, I'm choking. Let's enjoy the moment. Right. You know, if it's a good sound, we'll we'll go with it. <laughs> and especially during the Lacey Pearson story, you know, something light and funny. I yeah. know. Is there incredible embarrassment when you do that? Um, yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, it was, it was definitely a low point. However, the silver lining is that I'm here today on right. the phone with you. And I would have to say... This is the high point of my career. <laughs> oh my Seriously. God. Oh, my I God. I am so, Howard, you are so great, and I am so proud to be here and to walk into work today being an FME winner. And to think that Shepard didn't get it, Britt didn't get it, I got it, the dark horse. Yeah, Shepard and Britt got very low uh, vote uh, count from the uh, audience. You got you got it. You wow. Got it well, I, I, think when, I think when I come up for, you know, contract renewal, I'm going to bring this to the table and <laughs> talk to Mr. Ailes about this. A good I'll tell you, all the Fox News checks... If you, if you don't mind, uh, no, not at all. Are very hot. They are. Yeah. Oh, you are so nice. You got a boyfriend? You are so nice. I'm actually married. Oh, that's a shame. Well, depending. You I cheat? Can, uh, Howard. Come on. You're so. It is so great to be here. I love talking to you. I can't even tell you. This is sort of a seminal moment in my career. If we knew you were married, we would have given this to Brit Yoon. <laughs> <laughs> all right, listen. Without further ado, yep. make your speech because I don't want to uh, rain on your parade. This is your moment. Well, you know what? I just want to say. Thank you to everybody. Thank you to my family who has supported me, to my husband who supported me and was really upset when I choked on air, and also, um, of course, my, my Lord and Savior. But I'd also like to say we're all winners here today. By Lord and Savior, you don't mean me, do you? Of course I mean you. Oh, thank you. I wish you'd eaten a peanut right before. <laughs> well, I want to choke now. I'm so touched. Well, you're a professional. Listen, in every professional career, there are moments where you do lose it. If it's live, you're going to have those problems. That's yeah, right. but look at how it turned out. I got this award. By the way, you know who else is a um, an anchor woman over there? Oh. A newsreader is uh, Donna Fiducia. Used to be our traffic oh, reporter. Yeah. Oh, that's Donna. That's right. Yeah, I she's she, great. She, I thought she was going to be drummed out of the business, but she she landed she a fast. No, she's great. We love her. Yeah, very nice girl. She's All terrific. Right. Hey, listen, congratulations again, Paige Hopkins, Thank on your FME you award. Thank you so much for giving me my greatest achievement so far. And yeah. Good luck. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Well, there you go. It's <laughs> exciting. A good signal for her. actually happy. She got her award. A good signal for her crew is maybe look if. I throw up, go to commercial.
Yeah, at what point do they acknowledge her? I mean, she was really They couldn't in tell bad something shape. was wrong? What did you say? I mean, she was really in bad shape, man. Right. She's like dying. Yeah. <laughs> they turn up the music. <laughs> you you, you turned out to be an anchor. <laughs> 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 You know, every once in a while, I ask myself, why do I have Gary on the show? He screws up constantly and doesn't really add anything to the mix. This has become a popular category well, on the FME. Hey, Robin, by the way, I'm holding the FME in my hand. I just noticed it's actually smaller than one of his caps. <laughs> I, do screw, I do screw up everything, but I think I do bring something to the show by screwing up everything. All right. Well, here it is. Best reason to keep Gary. Gary, of course, is going to win. We just got to figure out what is the best reason. <laughs> Gary, producer. Right. The first category... Oh, this, this category is when uh, we had the word descrambler on. Yeah. And I gave you the wrong letters. Yes. So you couldn't descramble. <laughs> yeah, we had a guy on who said, hey, give me a word and I'll descramble it. Yeah, you give him letters, he can figure out any word. So I said to Gary, go pick like a seven or eight letter word and go back in the office and scramble them up. I don't have time to do that. Because we'll keep both. And he goes back. And, and all... so you don't check, you just use Gary's work. And the guy's on the air, and the guy can't scramble the word. And I felt bad for him, because here's a guy who's really good at it. He won awards, he's been on TV shows. And the guy goes, I just can't descramble this word. I'm sorry, I'm stumped. And I go, oh, this really sucks. And then we realized Gary didn't put all the letters in. R-P-O-T-S-T-S-P-A. T-S-P-A. Right. Yeah, he stumped him already. <laughs> what happened? What well, really... was the letters? Maybe I can figure it out. You got it already? Sports star. What? Sports star. Sports star. Well, maybe you could make that out of that. It's passport. It's passport. Passport is right, Jack. No, no, it's not. That's eight letters. No, it's nine letters. Passport. That's right, but that's no good. You didn't oh, I didn't give the extra. S. No, I, uh... I didn't. No. No, I did. R-P-O-T-S. two T's. I did. I know I did. Look at this. This is Baba Booey put this together for me. He you gave me two teeth. Passport? Hey, hey, Gary, get in here. You are such a stupid idiot. He spelled it wrong. I knew it. I said, Gary, go scramble up some words. Oh, You're like a retard. Everything you touch, you're stupid. You gave the guy the wrong letters. No wonder he couldn't get it. No, you're right. That's it. I absolutely How is What is with you, man? Everything you touch is, is bad. That's right. Wow. How did you screw that up? Uh, it was in a rush. Oh, man. That felt really bad. You know, the guy couldn't get it and it looked so stupid. Like, why couldn't he descramble yeah, that? Yeah, why could Jackie descramble it and he couldn't? Yeah. Anyway, what's the second? Boy, oh, boy. <laughs> you know, I get angry with you all over again when I hear this category. I remember when uh, we were trying to get Mayor Dinkins on the show and you right. told me, uh, and I, I gave a quote to the press trying to get him on. I had informed Gary that in under any circumstances when the press calls, that he is not to speak to the press. Mm. He's supposed to say... What are you supposed to say? I don't know. Right. So after I gave him this whole long lecture about don't talk to the press, the next day he was on the phone to the press. They called and he was blabbering away. <laughs> he couldn't help himself. I don't want to read in any newspaper, according to Howard's producer, Gary Delabate, and what? then a quote. How do I stop you from doing that? I want to get Dinkins down here, and I thought this was a good opportunity. I don't talk to the press, and I thought this was a good chance. No, to no, 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 no. You broke and the you... more important rule. The more important the rule most is important Gary Delabate does not talk the to the press. The most important rule is to get good guests. Do would I have talked to, to this? Do, if I wanted to be this to be in the paper, would I have talked to the guy about it? Of course you wouldn't talk to the guy. You don't talk to anybody. Right. How come I'm able not to talk to anybody, but you're not? I usually don't. But you keep saying you'll do that, but you don't. You somehow get suckered by no, these guys I, every I, time. There was no suckering involved. I knew exactly what I was doing. Were, I'm telling you, I made a conscientious decision. It, was no, it wasn't a conscious, the guy, a conscious, not a conscious. No, I, conscientious. A conscious, <laughs> that wasn't conscientious. A, I made a conscious decision. I wasn't suckered. <laughs> the guy didn't fool me. If I, the guy fooled you. He did not fool me. All right, repeat after me. Yes. I, I will tell will tell all important calls all important calls that they have the wrong number. <laughs> the wrong number. In my spare time, in my spare time, I will concentrate. I will concentrate on learning to on learning to say no. Say no. All right. I will do my best. I will do my best. Not to drool on the receiver. Not to drool on the receiver. And while I'm on the phone, I will not pick fleas off of myself. Oh. <laughs> wow. That was a great one, too. Uh, but, but I think these are all good reasons. 
Oh, but uh, go ahead. What was the third one? Uh, this is still a great one, of course. Uh, remember when uh, you caught me glomming free stuff? Oh, that drove me crazy. You know, because Gary answers my phones, a lot of times people call up and want to send me stuff. Or sometimes they'll just say, they'll put it attention Gary, so Gary thinks it's for him. Yeah. And Gary's taking, like, all this free stuff. And then, you know, I'm the one who has to end up doing favors for people, and I owe people after he gloms all this free stuff. Plus, it really annoyed me that I never even saw the free stuff, that I could glom it. If anyone's going to be doing any glomming, it's me first. And Gary should get the leftovers. I don't want to talk to you but about why? it off the air. But why? Can I ask why? Because I'd rather talk to you about it on the well, air. But I don't why? have to explain myself to you. No, no. When you get a show and you have somebody working for you, you'll explain yourself to them every well, minute? Is this a show or is this work? This is work. Tell, this is work. Right now, we are show. doing That's right. I don't do it off the air, and that's none of your business why I don't. But you do a lot of other things with me off the air. Yeah. When, you, when you're unhappy, why don't we do those on the air? Uh, because I don't have to answer you. <laughs> I don't have to even give you a rationale. I don't owe it to you. You do nothing. But you are my boy. You're my slave so boy. You, so do you understand the confusion then? No. You don't understand the I'm confusion. I'm telling you what I want. I want you to write a list you don't every week. The, the, if you cannot write the list, then you can leave. You don't understand the gray area between the show and real life. None you for me. There is no well, gray area. For you, you're in charge. I am telling you what I want. Do you want me to tell someone else what I want? Or do you want me to tell you what I want? No, I'd like you to tell me. Okay. Here's what I want you to do. Uh, Repeat again if you don't understand it. <laughs> I will, will list, list my glommings my alphabetically each week. Alphabetically each week. I will try. I will try to go to less. To go to less. Nick games. Nick games. Than the Knicks. <laughs> than the Knicks. Oh yeah. Well, those are all good reasons to keep you. You know, Gary. You choose a winner. They can, but evidently our judges did because uh, I'm going to open the envelope and see what is the best reason to keep Gary. The descrambler incident. Oh, well, there it is. No, I, I don't go. Uh, judges, I suppose. You can't argue with that. I mean, the idea that the guy had a de he booked the guest, the de scrambler. He told me how great he was, and then Gary went back and de scrambled the uh, letters wrong. I think that is a pretty good. Destroyed the man. Yeah. Well, anyway, uh, by the way, Gary, congratulations on your uh, your win. Thank Another you. Another FME to you. Another FME, and I suppose you have a speech prepared. Yes, I do. All right. So I'll turn the microphone over to you, and if you run out of things to say, there's some more stuff. Okay. My God, am I fortunate that I can win awards on my Volsa show? Am I lucky, lucky, lucky? <laughs> I have less. Okay. Go ahead. Give your speech. I would like to thank. I would like to thank the greatest bosses ever, Howard and Robin. All right. The greatest writing team, Jackie and Fred. Of course, all the great interns, John Gorilla and Ganji. Right. My lovely wife, Mary. My agent, Don Buckwald. My publicist, Nan Leonard. My account, Nate Schreiber. And most of all, I'd like to thank God for giving me life and showing me the path to glory and righteousness. That is beautiful. Good for you. Nice speech. At least he was prepared. Good for you. Congratulations on your FME. It's a Thank moment you. of triumph. I'm, I'm, right sure. up there, I'm right up there with Henry Mancini. Right. <laughs> Just about 30 for you, I think. Yeah, already. I think he's got more than anyone else. Yeah. Sometimes I'll take two of you. <laughs> well, Gary, uh, once again, uh, Tata Tuthi, Rara Retard, whatever you want to call him, he has won. And, uh, and rightly so, he deserves it. We'll, um, we'll be back right after these words. All right, our next category I think you'll like. Um, many celebrities come on and talk about things of a sexual nature. They somehow get caught up in the magic of the show, and they reveal things that, uh, that are startling. Our uh, first nominee in this category is Milton Berle, the famous comedian. Milton was in here and uh, was talking about sleeping with Marilyn Monroe, which I found amazing. He actually slept with Marilyn Monroe, and we got into a, a heavy discussion about it. Here is Milton Berle producing. Marilyn Monroe walks in the room. And she disrobes. And she what? Disrobes. Takes off her clothes. Yeah. Are you like, oh my God? I, I mean, I'm finished. I'm done. I'm. I can't hold out a long time. Are you like? Can I are you like? Something? Are you like thinking of garbage? Are you thinking of no, fish? What are you thinking of? <laughs> All right, we're gonna get. Thank you. you thank you. Then shut up. Okay. And listen to the king. Go ahead. Let's take Marilyn. Please. She rest in peace. Yes. No, no. And. Uh, all I had to do, all anybody has to do, is to check if it's if it's a star, uh, right? As we said, F, F right? 
<laughs> Get that name out of your mind. Take her, just a plain person. And instead of saying Marilyn Monroe, say to yourself, like a cow. No, don't tell me what to okay. say. <laughs> instead of saying Marilyn Monroe, stick in your mind mentally, because everything is mental. Yes, true. The whole body works that right. way. Just call her another name. Esther, Sarah Monroe. And the minute that you say the first name is different than Monroe... You'll hold out. You, you, your, as you want to say, your penis or whatever oh. does, yeah. just yeah. goes whatever. into a... A funk. Right. right. Into a, another... <laughs> what and you're not... Because when you're hard, you're soft. When you're right. soft, you're hard. Huh? Well, let me tell you something. I know that every uh, guy who sleeps with a girl dreams of being with Marilyn. I mean, any guy who sleeps with a girl dreams of being with Marilyn Monroe. And, and many times will sit there with a uh, sprank and go, ooh, I'm imagining Marilyn Monroe. This one guy gets into bed with Marilyn Monroe. Who's he thinking about? Anybody else. There's no, there's no justice for men. Jesus. Because everything is about performance and holding out. Pressure. Chuck Negron. This guy got so much uh, trim when he was uh, on the road with Three Dog Night. He got so many women that he actually ran into penis problems. Chuck Negron, producer. It was the, you know, the 60s. And, uh, it was cool. We it was were, cool to be a rock star. The, the spokesman of the, you know, of the time. Yeah. Young, handsome, and horny. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable, man. Uh, um, it got so good or so bad <laughs> that uh, I, I finally started... Things were getting bigger, and they were they were sore. And I went to a doctor, and he oh, said, geez. "You have to stop doing this. Yeah. You are filling up with blood and is not leaving." Really? And so you were in it's a constant state of arousal. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was, it was, you were stuck. Yeah, I was stuck. At any rate, wait, 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 no, let me get the whole. No, no, yeah, go ahead. No, there yeah. wasn't a constant state of arousal. What happened was the blood was going in and not coming out, and and, and finally, what happened was it <laughs> it exploded. Oh, <laughs> wow. His penis actually blew up full of blood and exploded and, and spewed out blood. Because he was having so much sex, his penis literally broke. What an amazing revelation. Our next revelation comes from Alan Thick, television star, explaining how his sons saw Janet Jones naked. Alan Thick, producer. Wayne Gretzky was in oh, our wedding party. Wayne Gretzky uh, was on the yeah. show. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and his uh, wife's a piece got a of ass. Wife. Does he bring his wife over to swim? Um, Janet. Uh, yeah. As a matter of fact, they were they were uh, staying at my place the day he got traded. When he got traded to Los Angeles. Yes. Uh, they were staying at. Uh, they stayed over your house. Yeah, they were they were because Wayne wasn't living there. What's her time. name? Janet staying, Jones. Janet Jones. And yeah. she, oh man, and yeah. she's there with your wife. And no, no, this is before, before? this is, uh, yeah, this, remember, Janet this is Jones, years ago before I've met Gina. Janet Jones is staying over your house, and does she go swimming by the pool uh, and stuff? Worse than that. No. Yeah, I have a, I have a, uh, a jacuzzi. big jacuzzi upstairs in my bedroom with, That's what uh, I would have. with what appears to be a, a one-way piece of glass. You yes. Know, because on the outside it's oh. like mirrors. Oh. But all, uh, the, my, my sons were <laughs> playing basketball in the backyard uh, in the afternoon one day when Janet, thinking that this was a one-way oh. glass, oh. Uh, took a bath, and oh, my kids oh, weren't the same for about two years. Oh, oh man! No, they have had the they, greatest life. Does she have the happened. greatest body or what? Uh, it's it's fun. She's a good-looking woman. Alan and the boys all pressed up against the glass. <laughs> He's quite a tukey magnet, Alan. Think he uh, had a, quite a bachelor pad going for a while. Yeah, but yeah. then he married a Miss Universe or something. Yeah. Not a, not a bad thing to have. <laughs> Our next, uh, there's many uh, celebrities. This is a tough category. Um, Casey Kasem's daughter got on the phone with us and talked about lesbianism. <laughs> this was really great. Uh, Casey Kasem's daughter producing. Was he good in bed? He's the best lover I've ever had in my life. Yeah, well, you're probably not too shabby looking, so guys really come through for you. <laughs> I haven't had that many lovers, but he's... he's How many have you had? How many? Well, until him, I could count the lovers I had on one hand. And you never made it with a girl? <laughs> um, no comment. Oh, so you did. <laughs> Casey Kasem. <laughs> <laughs> Making it with a girl. No what happened? When did you try that? Oh, that was a long time ago. Oh, yeah? What, when you were, like, really young? Well, I thought I was gay for a while. Oh, did really? you? Really? <laughs> <laughs> <Game> period. <laughs> So what happened? You experimented with some girls? Well, you know, I had some bad experiences in my uh, past, and I thought, oh, God, I hate men. So I'm what, were you molested? Men, were you molested? Um, I'm, well, I don't know. Should I answer this question? Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. What happened? So, like, somebody did something to you against that you didn't want to do? No, it, it was, no, it's just okay. Anyway. Something weird happened with you and a guy. 
Yeah. And a group of guys. Uh huh. With a group of guys. No. No. I, I, was know. it a, like a love thing? Did you like get your heart broken a lot? No, I was six years old. Oh. So oh. Yeah. All right. So it's what happened to Robin. And Robin wrote it a whole book about it. Mom's boyfriend. Huh? Mom's boyfriend. Mom had a lot of boyfriends no, no, coming no. through. No, no. At six years Next old. Next door neighbor. All right. Next door neighbor. So some neighbor did something to you. Yeah. Wow. Ooh. What happened to the lesbians? I don't know. <laughs> Jerry wrote a note. It talks about lesbians. All of a sudden, lesbianism. we're in the middle of child abuse. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was getting set for some lesbianism. <laughs> and our, our uh, fifth nominee in this beautiful category, uh, Tiny Tim, who is always so open. Yes. And what did he reveal this time? Uh, he talked about his impotence, his own impotence, <laughs> which is very brave. Tiny Tim producing. You got married. How is the impotence problem? Well, I must say, it's very bad. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Well, I'll tell you this, uh, Mr. Chairman's Quivers, that in, and this is a statement of truth. You're the first to hear this. You've always been honest. Uh, well, I have a high source to answer to. Yes. Uh, as Hebrew National Ferrami says. Right. And, and definitely, I can tell you this, in a week and a half, with Miss Sue, and this is not... A, I want to get even situation. This is the way it really is. She has given me more love in a week and a half right. uh, than two wives in 13 years. Is that right? So you were talking about physical love. Yes, I, she was wonderful. There's nothing I can do. Basically, I, I, I was about 99.9% .9 impotent. Right. But somehow, something happened in the week and a half, uh, and then it all of a sudden stopped on September, September 3rd. Oh. So you're saying that your impotence is over with for a while. I think it's beginning again. Oh, it's beginning again, but you, you actually for a week and a half had uh, sexual relations. Well, only with her great attacking me. Wow. She attacked me so wonderfully. Oh, is that great. <laughs> and, and, and also, uh, and basically after that, it's returned to worse than ever. Oh. Wow. Well, this is a tough I category. Guess. Tiny Tim is an amazing oh, man. What an incredible wow. man. Incredible honesty. Uh, all right, let me uh, open up the envelope. Who's going to be the winner of this game? Excuse me, I'm, I'm having trouble with the envelope. <laughs> there are five very anxious nominees. <laughs> Milton Berle is, is on a ledge. Tiny Tim says, I talked about impotence. Come on. Casey Kasem just killed himself. <laughs> All right. Uh, of course, Tiny Tim, the greatest. Tiny Tim, uh, Tiny Tim producer, accepting now on the phone and also with our e-cameras aimed right on him. Is? Tiny Tim. Uh, hold on one second. Tiny, are you there? Yes. Ah, good. Now good I can morning. hear you. Good morning. Good morning, uh, Mr. Griffith, Mr. Stern. Thanks so much for this award. I really thank Jesus Christ for this award. I know it sounds crazy, but this award means just as much to me as the Academy Award or the Grammy Award. I mean, you've got really the, you got the number one rated show in the world. Thank you. You you have the number one box office smash in cable. Thank you. Uh, uh, and thanks for having me on. You're welcome. And so this is really more of an important award than people think. By the way, Tiny, uh, you want to thank you for it. Does Tiny have an Emmy or an Oscar? I tell you, in my only in dreams. <laughs> Tiny, right now Uncle Milty is protesting outside of our Los Angeles station. He is upset. He thinks he should have won, but you won. Tiny, how's things going with the impotence? Is it, are you, it, uh, you said it had gotten worse on that clip. Is it better? Uh, not really. Uh, the uh, Of course, Mr. Burrell doesn't have to worry. He has so many awards right. that, uh, you know, I'm glad to get this one great award. Uh, you know, um, uh, if it was engraved you know, from you, it would even have been better. But, <laughs> You're lucky you got not even anything to hold. Well, but it's a wonderful, wonderful award, and thanks again for the F Emmy Award. But going back to the question, yes, it is. It is. Uh, I, I don't know if it's worse than ever, but it still has its problems. But Do you have uh, some relief? Uh, well, she she has a wonderful touch. She does. Oh, good. So you are getting some sexuality. Well, uh, well maybe maybe once or twice a week. Uh, but really, you've got a wonderful wife who can do that for you. Oh, I mean, she's a saint of a saint of a wife. But the only thing is, I hope you're giving her something. Huh? I hope you're doing things to her. 
Oh, I can't do a thing to her. Uh, she doesn't mind. She just... You could use your hand on her, though. Well, she doesn't even want that. She's She just comes to me and attack. I, I hate to use the word attack, but right. that surprised me. Almost like uh, rapes you. Huh? Like... Well, it almost. And I'm so amazed because, <laughs> because uh, frankly, uh, you know, uh, really, she's given me, if she never loved me again, she's right. given me more than the other two wives. And, and it's amazing how in love she is with you. I mean, physically, she needs to do this to you. Aren't you happy that this finally happened to you? You had to wait late in life for it. I'm happy you have this love now, Tiny. Oh, Mr. Sermon Screw, thank you. You know, well, she is wonderful. I hope it lasts, you know, right now, uh, you know. Uh, I heard she was, con was she contemplating divorcing you? Oh, never. So right now, she's, she's, uh, we just celebrated a year right. on August 18th, but, you know, she seems to be uh, getting out of the house more these days. Oh, that's good. Uh, well, she has, she's going to meetings, and she's, uh, you know, going to alternate doctors. She thinks she has this uh, you know, well, uh, she she has that environmental disease. Right, she's right. afraid to leave the house because his environment is she's allergic to the environment. Yeah, but apparently he's starting to leave now, and I hope I'm not a big bore to her. Right? Oh, oh you're, you're afraid. If she gets out of the house, she'll lose interest in you. You're hoping almost that her disease would stay with her, so she wouldn't leave you. Oh, oh no, no, no! I would, I would, no! I'd rather have her leave me and and this disease go than to have her stay with me in agony. Right? Because uh, I've had a wonderful life, and I And if she wants to, uh, if that ever happens, I just get. A, my bags up and go back, uh, you know, to wherever the action is again in, in this business. New York, Rhode Island, whatever. Where are you now? In one of your hotels? Uh, no, you I'm in uh, my darling's home in Minneapolis. Oh, so your wife is there with you? She is sleeping in the basement. Oh, I see. In the basement. And where do you sleep? Upstairs? Uh, I sleep in the middle room, and she sometimes sleeps upstairs in the top room. Right. Uh, Never in the same room, though, with you? No. No, I always believe in, she always believes in sleeping alone. It's so uncomfortable, you know, especially in the morning. Uh, I, I, you know, I agree with Sharon Stone said in one of her articles yes. that uh, anyone who kisses her with bad breath breaks the romance. Right. So, in other words, uh, this keeps the magic going. Oh, uh, well, I, I don't when she walks into your room, it's totally unexpected, and then you know you're in to be uh, you're going to be attacked. And everybody's ready. And everyone's ready. <laughs> well, uh, she will knock at the door, and uh, but sometimes I really have to reach, you know, uh, for breath mints or a mouthwash <laughs> quickly. Yes, real, real quick. Right. Uh, I've learned to keep some breath savers near my bed. Right. Well, listen, you're always the romantic. We know that you sing so many beautiful romantic songs. Oh, and uh, <laughs> and uh, we've learned so much from you over the years, even about adult diapers. In fact, uh, you don't know this, oh, Tiny. Oh, that's right. You inspired something about two weeks ago. Oh. We were talking about you and this adult diapers, and we, it occurred to us that none of us had ever worn them. So uh, me, Jackie, and Mr. Gary got in a uh, diaper. I did, too. Robin got in a diaper. Oh. And I, uh, Gary soiled his diaper right on the air. Oh. And, and so loved did it. Mr. Jackie. And so did Mr. Jackie. Ms. 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 Quivers and myself could not. Uh, we, I, we had a shy bladder. Well, well, give Mr. Jackie my best, too. Yeah. Uh, well, well, I, I don't, yeah. <laughs> he gave I, us I his. Yeah, he gave us his best. <laughs> well, well, I don't try to do that. I know. I'm always clean because whenever nature calls, I always wash with soap and water so there's no brown or anything there. Oh. Right. How, however, yes. but I do wear that instead uh, instead of underwear. Because, now, what brand do you use? Yeah. Huh? What brand do you use again? Because we, what did we use? Well, I use the pens. That's what I think we used. Yeah, I, I, it's the only one. You know, I, I still wish they would make one that goes up to the belly with straps and not with Velcros because hmm. they don't last. But I wish they had the same hooks for the straps. No, I think we used something else. No, what we, did we use, Gary? We used the pens. We used the pens. But we must, not, we must have had a different kind because ours had straps, but then there were no sides to them. That's what Tiny's talking no about. No sides? Yeah. Right. The sides uh, like the, did it have four loopholes? Yes. Yes. Oh, uh, and you can put the straps in right. and, pu and pull them up. Right. right. Well, that's great. So they weren't shields. Right. They were straps. Right. Yeah, well, yeah, well, well I wish they would include extra straps because they get so crinkly. And I usually wear them uh, sometimes, maybe two times, but I we usually wear them one day and always. Well, we didn't have that problem. We weren't keeping them on that's that right. long. That's right. I think you're not supposed to wear them for more than a couple hours. Yeah, I even wear them to, uh, sometimes underneath my pajamas. Really? Uh, you know, <laughs> it, it, it keeps everything more sanitary. Right. And, uh -huh. uh, it does. Hard to believe she sleeps alone. Right. <laughs> <laughs> not only that, but I find. 
find it. You know, she even likes it. Uh, I know it's more appealing to her when I sleep with my pajamas on. Right, she likes it because she can seduce you, and there's something to remove. Oh, hell, yeah, well, she, 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 yeah, she's so wonderful. But right now, do you keep your pajamas on while she uh, seduces you, or do you take them off? Well, I I try to keep them on. It's, but, it's but, sexier. But, uh, well, yes, it, it, she it, could reach it, in right through the fly. Well, no, no, no. Uh, uh, I really like when she pats it on when, top. Oh. When she pats you over your pajamas. Right. Ah. And it depends. You know what? Uh, no. Yeah, uh, yeah it, it, it's a very sensual feeling. Really? You can get off doing that? I'm telling you, you're not impotent. Oh, no, no. Well, uh, it doesn't come right away. Then then I have to, you know, remove the articles when she when she really, really gets, gets into moving. it. Really gets into it. Yes. yes. Uh, but, but, the, but the thing is, uh, you know, she, uh, you know, um, uh, is wonderful. I, in fact, if she never gave me anything again for a year, she would have given me enough for a lifetime. Well, you're certainly uh, deserving of it. You've given the world of uh, that's great music, and why not uh, oh, have a little pleasure yourself? Oh, that's 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 well, uh, really, I tell you, I'm wondering if it's even right to do that. Uh, you yeah. know, right uh, to do what? To have a woman uh, please you in that manner? Oh, yeah, I'm really. You know, yes. Yeah, because I'm tiny wondering. Only because even in marriage, I'm wondering if it's if I'm not losing precious elements which were meant for oh, children. You're, you're into like withholding? No, he's into only having sex for children. Right, right. And yes, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if it's even right in marriage. Uh, it's a matter of a, a concern, but so far... Uh, Listen, you have to give in to some human needs, Tiny. Well, Don't feel guilty, please. Uh, Don't deny you, yourself that. But do that. you think, Tiny, that you lose something when you... Um Spill your seed, as they say? That's a great question, Miss Quiver. That is a Who would know that's a question? question. You mean that you lose your energy? Superb. Absolutely, positively, 100% right. Well, maybe that's um, why there's so many celibates. Uh, well, I, don't, I, th I think something is lost. The power of creation is lost, uh, especially if it ever happens before I go on a show. Ah. Uh, I, I lose the... You lose your energy. Uh, that's right. Yes. Uh, uh, only but when it's done for children, I find there's nothing wrong. I hear what you're saying. In other words... You could be launching uh, a population of China into a Kleenex, <laughs> and you're saying, hey, uh, what, what, does your wife bring a Kleenex into the room when she relieves uh, you? I hope. No. There's nothing uh, sanitary. No, but, but she is wonderful, but she runs right to wash her hands. I see. And then you go and shower? I oh, so, oh, yes, absolutely. Immediately, right. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, uh, I'm going to keep the areas clean, uh, but still, you know, it is. she is a wonderful wife. In fact, if you don't know my saying, I, I've been watching about 20 videos in the last week and a half. What really? Kind of videos? Uh, Pornography? Well, uh, I've been watching uh, The Quick and the Dead with Sharon Stone. Right. I've been watching, uh, you know, uh, uh, Tears in the Rain with Miss Stone. Uh, oh, you're, you're a big Sharon Stone fan. Oh, oh, yeah, I must have watched about six movies. Uh, and also one with Pedro oh, Schwarzenegger, uh, uh, Total Recall. Yes. yes. And I was watching another one. Uh, oh, 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 yes, Diabolique. You like that? Oh, well, she was so wonderful and beautiful. I think you're a Sharon Stone fan. Well, oh, she's wonderful. I think she's the most beautiful woman, you know, that I've seen on the screen. You wouldn't leave your wife for her, would you? Of course not, I, darling. I even tell her, darling, you're a saint of a wife. She, uh, you know, she... But your wife doesn't get jealous when you're up there watching Sharon Stone movie after Sharon Stone movie? No, uh, she's in the other room. Uh, uh, she's le learning some religious instruction. I see. Hmm. Uh, yeah, but the thing is, uh, then, of course, now I... I I watch Shirley Temple. Well, listen, uh, to just to mellow you out. Because uh, did you find you get worked up when you watch Sharon Stone? She's a sexy oh, woman. No, no, but I look at her and I dream of heaven. Right. Uh, and I, I'm, and I, when I see, oh, you know, what goes on with those terrible acts before marriage, I, I just wonder. Uh, Let me ask you something, yeah. Tony. Uh, if you really want to get off on Sharon Stone, get Basic Instinct and freeze frame oh, because uh, she shows her uh, her, uh, her private parts. Well, no, but I, I don't for that, uh, Mr. Stern. I just go for her. Face. I see. The uh, face. She has a beautiful face. Well, if you want to see some bush, you can. Uh... Uh, no, no, no. Uh, that doesn't interest me. Really? What does interest me is her beautiful face. It's like going to heaven. Right. And it's like a statue. Oh. Yes. It, 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 she, she, sometimes she brings me to tears. Really? Uh, usually I watch her. Uh, those movies are bad. Can the E-Crew <laughs> stay there while Tiny is brought to tears watching Sharon Stone? Yeah, watch him watch Sharon Stone. Oh, I saw Casino. Yes. Uh, in, uh, somewhere else. And, uh, I mean, it just brings me to tears that some woman could be so beautiful beautiful like that. Well, Tiny, certainly you've been busy, and uh, congratulations on your FME. And uh, your oh, marriage. Oh, thank you again. And your marriage, yes. Uh, thanks. If anyone deserves happiness, it's Tiny Tim. Yes. Oh, He's given the world so much happiness. Thank you. I can't he tell you. so much. 
You beat out so many fabulous celebrities in this category, uh, Casey Kasem's daughter and Milton Berle and all these uh, big stars, and yet uh, you owe Alan Thicke you beat out. You, be oh, you, be you beat them all. Well, and they're, they're, they're great, and, but they've had so many awards. Right. As I say, thank you, Christ, I'm so happy to get this great award for the number one, your number one show on it radio, is, your is, number one show, uh, the box office smash. Uh, you know, thank you. Uh, I, I was happy to be there. Thanks for Tiny having me. Tiny will be appearing in my film, as a matter of oh. fact. Very few people know that. I'm ready to announce that Tiny does a uh, cameo in the movie. I didn't know. Oh, yes. And thanks for having me on that movie, uh, Mr. Sarandon. Also, but this is just as good as an Academy Award. You uh, bet. You, you've got the hottest show in the world. Thank you, Tiny. Thank and good luck to you, and, and give my love to your wife. Oh, Mr. Sarah, thanks, Mr. Cooper, thank you, and a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Thank you. It's a great tiny Tim, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> who uh, now returns to his bedroom to watch Sharon Stone movies I and Shirley so. Temple and movies. Shirley Temple. Thanks for listening to the FMEs. The FMEs are a celebration of life, a concentration of talent, and a beautiful way to kill four days on the radio. On the home of the Howard Stern Show and the FME Awards, Howard 100 and Howard 101. Howard, yes. if loving you is wrong, I don't want to be right. There you go. <laughs> this has been a Howard Stern production. Of the Tapes. Fuck on that! It's history!